Greetings and salutations, fight fans. Jeffrey Wilson coming to you live and direct once again from the River Center right here in downtown Davenport, Iowa, as we get ready to kick off night number two of Case Aggression 33 Trifecta. And I'm telling you what, last night, even though it was a Thursday night, that had a Saturday night fight feel. These guys went in there and scrapped and put on incredible performances. Big shout out to Dominic the Heat Martin after catching some frequent flyer miles from his opponent, sunk in a ridiculous heel hook to pick up the W. And I'm telling you what, man, you don't always have to pick up the W to really win. Last night, uh, Marshall Kriminak, that kid showed so, showed so much heart and true grit, refusing to quit, but he didn't quite pick up the W against his opponent, Zachary Pridemore. But I'm telling you what, he gained a big fan in my broadcast partner last night, Little Evil Jens Pover. And I'm telling you, the fights are off the chain, and I'm looking to see more of it tonight. We got fan favorites, Pork Chop Jordan Trower stepping into the cage against Cody Barker. We got the ladies stepping in there, Claire Schneckcloth and Mackenzie Stiller. And we got a tremendous co-main and main event tonight. Jimmy Padilla going up against the Beast, the Beast, Brent Cooper, and in our main event, Mike Padilla, Plazilla going up against the exception, Sean West. Both cats with incredible highlight knockout reels, heavy, heavy hands. And calling the scraps with me tonight, he's no stranger to the cage aggression cage. He is the henchman, Jordan Henman. Jordan, welcome back, brother. We got our work cut out for us tonight. We got scraps to call, and it's about to go down. Give us your thoughts. Like you said, the last two fights, man, we have some big heavy hitters and some guys that are really looking for knockouts. Uh, the first one in the co-main event, Jimmy. Jimmy Padilla coming all the way from Las Vegas, Syndicate Martial Arts, training partners with Brandon Jenkins, who's no stranger to this cage as well, and he's taking on the Beast Brant Cooper, another hometown guy who's looking to give a big, big performance against a tough guy, making a long flight to take a long walk home after he gets his butt whipped. <laughs> and in the main event, we have Mike Plazola taking on a hometown guy, Sean the Exception West. Sean has a number of knockouts that are vicious, and, and Mike Plazola he also has, a, has one that's, that's probably up there in the top five of all knockouts in mixed martial arts and so these guys are not wrestling they're not going to be dancing they're going <laughs> to step in front of one another and they're going to throw bombs so somebody drops well it is about to go down ladies and gentlemen night number two is about to begin and i'm telling you what night number one set a pretty high bar and set the tone for what we've come to expect from cage aggression incredible finishes incredible matchups and again tonight is going to be no different so let's get on the good foot and do the bad thing let's toss it up to our ring announcer jason vargas and let's get night number two of cage aggression 33 the trifecta underway. Gentlemen, fight fans of all ages, this is the moment you've been waiting for as 7G Distributing Bud Light proudly presents Cage Aggression 33, the trifecta, our special mega three night event hosted by the River Center. My name is Jason, your official voice from inside the Kama Cage, and I'd like to welcome you back for night two of our special three-night event. Over 70 fighters from nine different states have come together here at the River Center for a historic, action-packed three nights of MMA. Last night was a night of promising debuts, triumphant returns, back and forth battles, and dramatic finishes. This is the trifecta, ladies and gentlemen. First, I'd like to give a special thanks to our event partners for helping to make this entire weekend possible. The River Center, official home of Cage Aggression MMA. 7G Distributing, Bud Light, thank them often and thank them responsibly. La Quinta Inns and Suites, Ducky's Formal Wear, Galesburg, The Damn View Inn, McCarl Family Racing, Yabba Dabba's House of Glass, Stand and Protect, Iowa Auto Club West, Elite Loyalty Management, Old Town Heating and Air, The Sneaker Vault, Squirrels Tree Care, Delft's Pro Gym, The Cigar Social, Banker's Life, Kaylee Stout, and Mitt Beast Boxing and MMA. Let's give all of our event partners a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Special thanks to our production team, Mindprint Productions, The Music Connection, and Say Uncle Photography. Much gratitude to all our fighters, coaches, and teams for their tireless commitment to be here tonight. And of course, big thanks to you, the fans. You know, we couldn't do any of this without you. And last but not least, Cage Aggression President Mike Goodwin for your unending dedication to the sport, its athletes, and the fans. All of tonight's bouts have been sanctioned by the Iowa Athletic Commission, Deputy Ben Wilson, 
Inspectors George Chamberlain and Benji Williams, cage side tonight, our grease man Kevin Night Night Anderson, our timekeeper Clint the Antagonist Anderson, our judges Alex Orozco, Ian Haas, and Matt White, our cage side physician for tonight, Dr. Metcalf, helping us keep track in between rounds, the lovely Serena, Dot, and Jessica, our pay-per-view commentary provided by Jason Burmis, Jeffrey Wilson, and Cage Aggression and LFA veteran, Jordan the Henchman Hinman. And when the action begins, our referees in charge, Josh Stewart, and the boss, Bruce Allen. Don't forget, we've still got our friends from the sneaker vault over in the corner. The best way for you to get a little piece of the action and help support the fighter you're here to see, go over and get our special custom event t-shirts and help support the fighter that you're here to see. Now, if you'll please rise and help me welcome Local 4 News, WHBF-TV host and former Miss Iowa, Michaela Hughes-Shaw for the playing of our national anthem. Let's hear it again, ladies and gentlemen, Michaela Hughes-Shaw. All right, River Center, we got a packed house tonight. I'm gonna need your help getting this next thing started. We're ready to kick this show off, but before we do, I need you to stomp your feet, clap your hands, scream at the top of your lungs, whatever you gotta do. Let's get loud, let's make some noise, let's let those fighters hear you back in the locker room. Let's let them know you're ready to go. Tadow, how do you like us now? We are in the mix, kicking off night number two. Cage aggression, the trifecta, as we are about to see Mark Anthony step into the cage to face off against Jameis Wilson. Boys, we are back in the saddle, night number two. Restrictions and mandates have lifted, the card is stacked, the action will be packed, and we're about ready to get on it. Mark Anthony coming out of Decatur, Illinois. Looks up to his brother, Brent Heathcock, who will be seeing fighting, uh, not tonight, tomorrow night, I believe. No, he's fighting tonight. Yes, sir. He's very confident. He feels like he's in the best shape he's ever been in his entire life. He feels like his kickboxing, but overall, he's a strong grappler. Looks up to Frankie, the answer, Edgar, as well as Connor McGregor. Somebody you're a big fan of, JB. How are these polls looking, my friend? Not a big fan of McGregor, but a big fan of the polls, and you can take part of that over at cagedaggression.tv. Right now, Mark Anthony is the slight favorite, coming at coming in at a little more than 54%. So if you're a Jameis Wilson guy, get over there right now. But Mark is rolling deep with his crew. Plenty of fighters that have stepped into this cage aggression cage before coming down that aisle. 
Yeah, you know, and the polls might sway towards Mark Anthony right now, but that could be because he has more fans chiming in. If they know anything about Jameis Wilson, he's going to have his hands full tonight. The guy's 0-1 is an amateur, but his first fight was an absolute war. Man, the guy's a little buzzsaw, and he's going to come out here, and he's going to look to, to finish Mark Anthony, I promise you that. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing what my little son, Jameis Wilson, is about to do. I love his last name. Yeah, it sounds pretty familiar, but... Um, <laughs> Looking forward to it as we are seriously kicking off night number two. Like, again, if you saw last night, they set the bar so high, man. Again, big shout-out to Dominic Martin for an impressive performance after snatching victory from the jaws of defeat against his opponent, Sinjin Ruby, being slammed a few times. It looked bad. And also, big shout-out, even though he didn't pick up the W, Marshall Kremenak, bro, you have nothing to be ashamed of. You gained so many fans and so many fans respect after your incredible, gritty performance last night against Zachary Pridemore. And like I said, we are looking forward to more bangers tonight. I actually had a conversation about that fight over dinner with Pat Militich, and he was just like, I couldn't believe he was getting out of those chokes and out of those positions. I was like, it was like the guy didn't have a neck. Right. You know, the chain jujitsu on his opponent, uh, Pridemore, was over the top. In the first round alone, he went for four different submissions. Three looked pretty tight, and he just got out of every single one of them. He got a, had a rear naked through that fight. Just a gritty, gritty performance here last night at Cajun Crash. Well, even the post-fight interview with Zachary, he was astounded himself at the just true tenacity and grit of Marshall Kremenek. And Seamus Wilson. The devil is here, boys. <laughs> this ain't Georgia, but this it's ain't Georgia. It's the Quad City that Jameis Wilson's about ready to step in the cage to do his work. Jameis is also no joke. Always watched the UFC and MMA as a kid, and after a year of college wrestling, decided to try jujitsu out and kickboxing, and the rest is history. He's excited for the stylistic matchup. Much respect for his opponent. Yeah, looking forward to this one, man. Looking forward to this one. Yeah, the guy went from watching UFC to uh, being coached by a UFC fighter, Eric Cope. Eric Cope. And uh, he's got a great camp behind him, and uh, I'm, I'm really excited to see what he's got to bring in here tonight. Well, and he's also a big fan of Juan Carlos Roman, who was a part of a Beautiful. viral highlight clip when uh, he did an amazing spinning heel kick on Michael Battleship, who will be jumping into the cage here tomorrow night to try to jump back into the win column. But Juan Roman is uh, somebody who's helping cultivate the career of Jameis Wilson as well. It's about to go down. The first fight of night number two of the trifecta. And I like how they got the little low weight guys in here first because they're going to come out, you know, like a hurricane trade and, and get busy right away. So I'm excited, like I said, to see this thing pop off. And it is about to do that very thing. Ladies and gentlemen, our first bout of the evening is scheduled for three three-minute rounds in the cage aggression amateur flyweight division powered by Mint Beast Boxing and MMA. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He stands five feet, six inches tall and weighed in at 126 pounds. He trains with the Strength Academy and is sponsored by the Gin Mill, Key2 Fitness, Elevations Barbershop, and Breed Clothing. Joining us from Decatur, Illinois, Mark the Butcher Anthony. And his opponent, fighting out of the blue corner. He stands five feet, two inches tall, and weighed in at 122 pounds. He trains with Regulators Fight Team and is sponsored by Midnight Promotions, Sandbox Crew, Hydrofab, Hodge Electric, and Rods Towing. Joining us from Cedar Rapids, Iowa, Jameis Wilson! JW, about ready to get in there. Neither of these boys have taken their eyes off each other, chomping at the bit to get a hold of one another. Here we go. Round one, red, round one blue. Spike. Touch it up. It's in the cage. Open it up. Jameis with a low leg kick. Defended takedown very well. Absolutely. And they're trading inside. As you said, Jordan, they coming out banging. Yeah, I knew it wasn't going to be long. Jameis with a little wrist control. Sneaks in the knee. Knee back from Mark Anthony. Looking for inside trip here off the cage. Oh, nice takedown for Wilson. Changes directions and puts him on his back right where he wants to be. Watch out for that. Yep. Yeah. Going for a high guard there. A little. Whoa. Tip the, tip the triangle. Jameis slips out of it, dropping some ones and twos on him. Little knee on belly. And he 
passes into side control very nicely. Pressure pass. Ooh, good elbow right there. Snuck that in quick. Uh, probably a hammer fist. Uh, elbows aren't allowed for amateurs. Not oh. to the head anyways. Body, body are allowed. Whoa, slipped into full guard there. Wilson in command and control here. Pull him out right now. Let's see what he's going for. Mark there. Anthony Bucks takes right. it back. That's never a good idea to give up your back. I know a lot of guys probably feel a little bit safer, but you're in much more danger as far as getting choked and uh, really getting flattened out. You can't see the punches coming. You can't really defend yourself well. But some guys get overwhelmed when they see those punches coming down at them. And, and Jameis Wilson is doing a great job. Yeah, he's his got legs. it flattened out. There he is. There he is. Both hooks in. I mean, he slid that first hook in almost effortlessly, snuck that second one. He's continuing to do the work right now. Now he's got his hips drove in. Man, this is a really bad position for Anthony. It's demoralizing, if nonetheless, if he spins another. Uh, oh, he's underneath. In there. Let's he's see if he can get that I can't tell if he's under the chin real deep. And I don't know if the hands are locked up either. Mark Anthony oh, right came there. Off it. Took another shot right there. Jameis Wilson with a nice performance here in the beginning moments of this first round. And that's the bad thing about being stuck underneath like that. When you get flattened out, you have to worry about the choke. And when you defend the choke, they let go and just, you know, rock you in the side of the head. And it's almost like you can just do that over Rolls and over, him over and to over full mount. Wow. Got about a minute left, a little less, in this round. Let's see what Jameis Wilson is going to be doing. He gets into the high mount right here. Mark Anthony holding him down, trying to keep keep uh, no distance right there. Doesn't want him to posture up. Nice little Bucks again, and, and look, he kept that one leg in very well. Right He's got now, a reverse triangle if he locks it up. Possible arm bar. He got a shoulder crank or something. Yes, he's, got, he's got some awkward, nasty in there. Very awkward. awkward. Awkward arm bar. You could almost say it's almost a reverse key lock type arm bar. He's going for the elbow and only the elbow. He's not trying to straighten it out at all. And it doesn't look like it's going to go anywhere for a submission right now, but it doesn't look comfortable either. Mark Anthony getting the top position there. We're closing seconds here in this first round. Too little, too late for that one, yep. but he, got, he definitely got himself out of a bad situation there at the end of the first round. And maybe a moral victory going into the second round, okay. saying, all right, you know, I took some damage on the ground. He didn't hurt me too bad. He popped right up. If you're his coaching corner right now for Mark Anthony, what do you tell him to change, George? Well, I'd like to see him uh, be a little more active from underneath in that mount situation. It'd be better if he didn't get there in the first place, but he had his knees up. There was no hip escape. There was no attacking of the hips. He was just kind of holding on and letting Jameis decide what, were the, what was going to happen within the fight. And uh, that's never really a good strategy. Yeah. And if I'm Jameis' coaches, I say, hey, take a, maybe a little bit more time. Try to go for that submission. But if it's not there... Get that ground and pound in. He yeah, did a really just, good job. Just be patient. You know, getting bucked off at, at the end wasn't a bad thing because of the time left on the clock. But if, you know, if he could have definitely stayed there and finished the round out there, I mean, that would be a huge, huge victory on his part, even though he did win the round uh, decisively. Yeah, Anthony over there getting some tutelage from somebody who's going to be fighting tonight, Brett Eadcock. And you can almost see the confidence in Jameis Wilson after that first round. Well, and you get those first round jitters out of the way. Here we go, starting round two. Ooh, Ooh, big body off a big yeah. caught Jameis caught that bad boy, took little, him down. Well drag of the pipe, and here we are on the Drag of the pipe. Yeah. Nice tip attempt, but yeah, James, Jameis is going for those hooks here. And now he's got back. one arm under. And he's packed. locking it in. It's, I'm not sure if he's he's getting he's Mike right, Mark Anthony's doing a decent job right now of fighting that off, but now up. Uh, James needs right it. Yeah, he's a little too high. He's going to get shook off here. If he could get his head down below. Uh, Better go. position there. Better position. Man, if Mark Anthony could have stayed on his feet, he had him shook off. He is under there, though. Yeah, he's James under that neck. Yeah, he's now he's right there. There he is. That's the tap. He tapped out. Jameis Wilson with a rear naked choke in the opening seconds of the second round. He must have been cranking deep on that choke because when Mark Anthony was on his feet, he was almost out of danger. Jameis was high on his back and he was starting to shake him off. And then once he went down to that knee, man, it was all over after that. He started to look a little too high, but then he sunk his hips in, dropped uh, dropped uh, Mark Anthony down, and sunk in that rear naked choke to pick up the W. What I loved about Jameis Wilson's performance in that is he didn't give him any distance any time in the fight. You know, Mark Mark Anthony came out in that second round. He gave him that leg kick. He immediately grabbed that leg kick, charged in, closed the distance, and really gave him almost no room to work in this fight. And that's the bad thing about not setting up your strikes. You know, a jab or a one-two before that leg kick probably could have prevented that kick from being caught. And yeah. down we talk about so that easily. all the time. We talked about it a lot last night with a couple of performers that didn't quite set up strikes. 
Jameis Wilson, like you said, a little buzzsaw coming in there. Good victory. Good job, Mr. Wilson. Hey, Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wills. I've never heard that before in my uh, life growing not. up. Ladies and gentlemen, your referee, Josh Stewart, has called a stop to this contest at 41 seconds into round two, declaring your winner by submission due to rear naked choke, Jameis Wilson. Come on over, Jameis. All right, we're here with your winner tonight, whatever side you want. We're here with your winner tonight, Jameis Wilson. Jameis, man, first of all, congratulations. I know being first fight of the night, you always want to come out, set the tempo, and walk out with the win. How's it feel, sir? Man, it feels great getting the first victory in here. That's an amateur MMA fighter and just kicking the night two off for cage aggression is awesome. Well, we've been, definitely been looking forward to having you back. What'd you work on coming into this fight? Do you have any particular game plan? Not really. I just have been working my ass off the past few months since last fight, and I just finally got to come in here and showcase, and it was a good opponent, and just I found the spot and I took it. Well, the hard work definitely showed. Looks like it paid off here tonight. Hey, what'd we forget or anything that you want to add to this before I let you start the celebration? First and foremost, I want to thank everyone that came out tonight. Especially my fans out there. I know there's some over here. My dad, everybody, my coaches, and all my sponsors. I just want to thank you guys and can't wait to see you guys back here again. Well, we're looking forward to it too. Let's hear it one more time, ladies and gentlemen. Jameis Wilson. Second round submission. Nothing to be ashamed of, Mark Anthony. Go back, go back to the drawing board. Fix what needs to be fixed and get back to this cage, man. Your future is bright as we step, step into this second fight of the evening. Brandon Hoagland and Cameron Cook. We got Brandon Hoagland stepping into the cage right now. Fighting at a Skunk River Dojo. American pit fighters out of Burlington, Iowa. You know a little something about that area, don't you there? Yeah, I, th I think I know those guys. <laughs> Always wanted to get into it, and he started training, and he fell in love with it. He thinks it should be a good matchup. He's seen him fight, and he feels that he has good striking, so he's at least like respecting his stand-up game. Feels that his length and his movement will be a difference maker. Looks up to Mac, Max Holloway and Nate Diaz. Those are his idols. He's been training for five years and fighting for four years. Getting ready to step in there and put on a heck of a show on the second night of Cajun Draft. We got Gresham, the trifecta. And we've got Hoagland actually coming in as the underdog. 38%, hiked up to 40. Someone's over there at CageAggression.tv. Right now, <laughs> I love it. Cameron Cook, the dominator here at about 60%, and he's the favorite. We'll see what happens. Yeah, exactly. uh, I can tell you right now that's probably a little mismatch as far as fan-wise again because uh, I've seen, um, you know, Cook fight before. He fought a guy that had no training. Uh, just a wrestler and he got beat and uh i know brandon hoagland i trained with him this kid is uh he, he's very 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 crafty on his feet uh first showing up he fought Brent heathcock and was a little flat wasn't quite ready to go when he came but i bet he's made the adjustments tonight and i bet he's gonna come out here and he's gonna put on a good, a good show well absolutely there's no such thing as failures no such thing as defeats just opportunities to learn like i said go back to the drawing board change what needs to be changed adapt and overcome as cameron cook Makes his way into the cage out of Impact MMA. He thinks it's a solid matchup. He feels that his length is going to be an advantage for him. And he feels he has speed. It's going to be a firefight. His length, does he know that Hoagland is six foot three? I was just going to say, Hoagland's a long, <laughs> tall drink of water, as my auntie used to say. Uh, I'm wondering if he's talking about this length of running or what length we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I don't here. know. I don't know. We're going to see as he's escorted to the cage with his entourage. 
Somebody in his entourage rocking some gold there. I'm not sure what that is. I believe that's, uh, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that might be Cody Baker who's going to be fighting Jordan Trower oh, this that, evening. Okay, that he's is got who the, that He's is. got the mitts on, so I would, I'm pretty sure that's who it is. That's who I may be like. wrong. I, I can't I wait for him fight. rocking that belt yesterday. He's coming in with a little bit of drip. Trying to put a little intimidation in Jordan Triers, which is an exercise of futility, as the pork chop fears no one. Bang, bang. I don't think I've never seen uh, Jordan Smiles not just smiling. For yeah, yeah. I, I don't know how you can intimidate a guy that uh, Stay smiling. Li literally has no frown upon him whatsoever. The pork chop, we'll be seeing him in just a little bit here, but right now it's Brandon Hoagland and Cameron Cook. Cameron about ready to step into the cage as his opponent patiently awaits his entrance into oh, the cage. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, our next bout of the evening is scheduled for three three-minute rounds in the Cage Aggression Amateur Bantamweight Division, powered by Banker's Life, Kaylee Stout. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He stands six feet, two inches tall, and weighed in at 135 pounds. He trains with the Skunk River Grappling Dojo and is sponsored by Coral Reef Pet Store and Embellishment and Designs. Joining us from Fort Madison, Iowa, Brandon Hoagland. And his opponent, fighting out of the blue corner. He stands five feet, nine inches tall, and weighed in at 138 pounds. He trains with Impact MMA. Joining us from Lincoln, Illinois, Cameron Cook. Looking forward to this one. Physically rather evenly matched up. We'll see how it goes down. And the distance has been somewhat close. Cameron Cook at 47%. Brandon Holden at 53. Yeah, there we go. Looks like some people got on there and uh, made some adjustments. It's interesting, Cameron Cook would say his length would be the advantage when, like I said, Brandon's clearly longer than him, but it's all right. Like I said, my, my, my most link he was talking about. Yeah, right, talking about right. a different length. Maybe shoe size, who knows? <laughs> you know what they say about guys with big shoes? Hey, now, we big got kids socks, out here. Bro, obviously, he was, guys, obviously he was talking about the hairstyle. Yeah. Like two, three inches on the top. Ooh, Ooh big right! Big combo. Good level change, came over the top with his right hook. Cameron coming in banging, nice low leg kick there from Brandon. Cook wings, one misses, readjust. Cook is leading with that left leg. Ooh, spin kick. A little short. Quite have the length on that one. Side leg kick by Hope. Oh! Ooh, oh, oh he right on the way. Yeah, he got. Hoagland needs to actually let go of the head right now. If Cameron Cook can lock his hands behind his head, he's got a uh, he's got a nice Von Flew choke he can finish the fight with. You don't see those very often, but they're very you impressive should. when you see them. You should because it's automatic. I mean, ooh, is he got, I can't tell. Going for a, he's got nothing right now. He's basically got one arm under his uh, neck. Really, no uh, no danger, no danger for a choke here. What do you feel about the capoeira in MMA? Every once in a while, him and it, you know, it, it does a good job. It's flashy, but when you miss, you get caught. <laughs> Payback time. The thing is, is you gotta get enough momentum to get around back to your feet. It's kind of like a, a really hard missed inside leg kick where you spin all the way around so you're not out of position. But uh, I mean, it was a good attempt. Just uh, like we said, it came up short. Well, his take down there is, is he got? Is he? He's under there. Cook's under there with that. No, he's not quite under the chin. His hands aren't locked. He's got one arm under the chin. He's yeah. bringing that other and hand. And through that. Through it's that. just going to be hard to finish in this position. He, Brandon Hoagland's at half guard, gives a thumbs up. Um, Cook's got to be careful by not burning his arms out. He's Always. either try to shrimp, to re-guard, to try to you know, lock the choke in better, out. Or, or just let her go. And now Hoagland in a position with about 40 seconds to go on top. Let's see if he can steal this round by doing some damage. It'd be nice to see him tur turn his hips away from the cage to put Cook's head against the cage so he can't try to can't use his feet to cage walk like he's trying. But uh, other than that, landed in a good position, avoided the choke, and now he's got an opportunity to do some damage on top. Hopefully try to get some separation and maybe rain some blows down here in the last 20 seconds. 20 seconds to steal this round. I'd say it's a close round. Right now I'm leaning towards Cook, but if Brandon Holden get a little, there we Ooh. go, some offense like that changes my mind. Another yeah. couple of those. And 
10 seconds here, you got to get your hand. You got to posture up. Yeah, you got to posture up and strike. Boom. Good, way, good way to, yeah, good way to end the round. Yep. So there you go. I would say that's a Brandon Hogan round. 10-9, really stole in the last 40 seconds. And I would say, if I were Cameron Cook's corner, let's be easy with the flashy stuff. Yeah. You obviously have a little bit of an advantage with uh, but not only the, it, it seems maybe the striking, you know, we've seen some inside uh, leg kicks from Brandon Hogan. Doesn't look that comfortable, but on the ground as well. But he's got to know, like you said, pull those arms before you blow them out. Yeah. You're not going to get that choke. I mean, as a guy that doesn't fight MMA, Jordan, well, what's usually the length? before those arms get blown out. Is it 30 seconds? Is it just the way the guy's it neck depends, feels? It, it how thick you are, right? It, well, it depends on, you know, like how hard are you squeezing. Sometimes you can use it for control, you know? It's like a, 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 a bait and catch sort of thing where you, you they think you're trying, but then you really sink it in. Or sometimes, you know, you're really squeezing, but you got about 20 seconds of all out max energy that you can give at one time before you kind of start to, you right. know, come on the downside of your strength and power. That lack of gas and yeah. stuff by you in the arse. And how long does it take for recovery on that? Say you blow your arms out at the, le the last minute of the first round. Depends on the conditioning. I know they used to have this sports science show. Uh, Randy Contour Fight actually, science. yeah, got stronger as he held it, he was like up to a minute and was getting stronger what? as the yeah as the time went on. Right, right. right. You know, Captain America himself. But uh, everybody's body's different, obviously, and conditioning definitely plays a role in all that. And Cook snuck a right hand in there. Looking very, very comfortable on the feet. Definitely staying in, in uh, Hoagland's face. Well, Hoagland being the longer guy also isn't getting those kicks. You know, Cook's getting Ooh. out. Big, big, big shot. Him. Left, Left him. Right, right. Hoagland trying to recover. Yeah, that was a bad shot there. That was a nice shot that dropped Hoagland. Got an opportunity to recovery. To yeah. Now, if I'm, if I'm Cook's corner, I say, hey, get a knee in there and then get out. You won the trick. Oh, there's, 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 there's that, Darcy. He's got the choke in. Uh, I think he might have jumped the gun a little too early. Or probably should have backed off of the Oh, he's, he's got, got the body in. triangle. He's really, really, this is a great question. Is he going to blow his arms out? Or is he going to get the sub? It's tough with the arm in. Like yeah, that. the, that's what I was getting ready to comment on. The arm in is going to be the hard part about it. And if he would have just, bat, see, and he's already let it go. If he'd have backed off him while he was on the cage and had him hurt, I think he would have had a bigger uh, chance of maybe finishing the fight there. I, I agree. Mean, he's obviously landing the strikes well. And, uh... He's wanting to finish the fight. That's the difference between amateurs and pros, though, you know? And he's got the body trying to control and position a little bit, but looking for that choke without the arm. Can't quite get under there. I'd like to see Hoagland use that right arm, maybe frame off of his throat, and put pressure into Cook's throat and make him a little nervous about the choke that's happening to him. Well, well here we are again, right? There's about a minute and 15 in the round. Hoagland is on top. If he can somehow get his head out of there like he just did. If he can do some big strikes. That's what he's going to need to do because the knockdown is huge on the scorecard right now. And he's going to have to do a whole lot of catching up there. there is one, shot. two, three. Dropping the ones and twos. Seven shots. Eight from yeah. hammer fist. Too bad he can't drop elbows, man, because yeah. that would have been nasty. Yeah, that's a game changer when it goes to the pros levels, man. The elbows really make a whole difference in striking. But some good hammer fist land. There you go. Both fighters back to their feet in the center of the cage. Aggression cage for fight number two. Yes, with almost 35 seconds left in this second round. Oh, I'd like to see Hoagland Ooh. throw a, a high left kick. That, that right arm of Cook's is pretty low. Very low. Going for those one-hitter quitters, man. like to see him set these up a little better. And he's been hitting those inside leg kicks. It'd be nice to see him look low and just throw one high. I'd love to see Hoagland do those inside leg kicks all day. He's, he does, he's the one with the leg. Nice to the body. See, he would have ducked right into it. If he would have came higher with that kick, it would have came over the top of the glove and put him on his butt. Ten seconds. I think Hoagland still needs some oh, to steal that round. down at the end of the round. Exactly, and that seals it Man, for he kind of gave that one to him. Yeah, not much defense on that one. You know, we're going in there even right now. One round apiece, in my opinion. Who wants it more? We're in the final round. Hey, not only who wants it more, that gas tank, baby, that conditioning. We're seeing uh, Cameron Cook get to his feet a little slow. Hoagland looks a little bit winded, mouth open right now. Cook may be the fresher fighter, but that could just be his cardio. His arms could be completely blown yeah. after several attempts at those chokes. Yeah, he had a little camp out there for a hot second as that round ended. So, I mean, both fighters feeling, feeling the effects, but we'll see has it, what it takes in this, as far as the gas tank. We move into this third round. 
back and forth scrap, though. I mean, this is a good test for each gentleman here. Um, both about evenly matched as far as the fight goes, but it's just like one guy takes a, takes control and then the other guy turns it around and it's just a back and forth. So uh, we'll see how this third round plays out. We just, saw, and flow. we just saw that knockdown by Cameron Cook. And, and we really do think things could have gone different if he didn't go for that show. Yeah, no, if you'd exhibited a little more patience, I think he probably may could have finished the fight right there on the feet. Cameron Cook sticking out his tongue, ah, saying, Cameron, let's let, work. Let's do it. That's what we do here, Case Aggression. It's on and popping. Yeah, because Cameron Cook with that hair, he's about 6'2". Oh, they're inside leg <laughs> That's that He's way. closing the distance that way. That's right. Good inside leg kick, too, by Cameron Cook. Look, and you see the inside of uh, uh, Cameron Cook's right leg. He's got two bruises by the cap already. Oh. Spin kick short, recovers. I don't know if those are previous bruises, but the inside to his right leg has two big purple bruises, and there's one even on the inside of his left leg, too. See him? Like, oh, good right. Yes, I do. Oh, I'm sorry, you have correct. Big right. Hogan's got to let his hands go. He likes to throw one punch at a time. He's got to put them together. With no real setups, I know. Yeah, just a jab, jab. Ooh. Oh, trying to do some Showtime Pettis. Showtime. Ooh. Big winging right. That would have been a good slip, too, to land. Home. But sprawl, sprawl, sprawl. He's got to get wow. his hips back. He's got to get, yeah, he's got to get some sprawl going on. He's let him take him down almost with way too much ease here. Especially with the link of the Hogan, man. That, that leverage is a huge, everybody thinks the short guys are the better wrestlers. Well, they're more compact and more powerful, but I'm telling you what, you get a long guy to get his hips into you from the top, there is so much leverage coming off that that it is almost impossible to drive through. John Hogan trying to control the head, possibly looking for a triangle right now. Definitely trying He's got to a lot of up. work to do to get that He's as fish underneath. He's fishing, but Cook needs to just throw that right arm high, smash that leg down, and pass all the way out to the right side. He just needs a circle, but if he hangs out here, he's going to find himself in some trouble. Ooh. One minute, 20 seconds left. One minute, 15 left. My bad. Hammer fist from the side again. Yeah, he needs to defend this triangle better, man. If Hogan gets that right leg out, it's going to be over. And it looks like he's slipping it out right now, guys. Oh, but he oh, up but, over. Yeah, but Hogan needs to keep turning with him. He needs to kind of get back underneath that leg and scoot his hips around. Really interesting round with cooking. one minute to go. Armbar possibility. Oh, really, really nice, nicely anybody's fight. defended from Cameron Cook. Cameron Cook. Very close, close matchup here. Wrapping up the Kimura as a defense. Let's see if he tries to go for it. Saw a nice key lock. Oh, good takedown. Ooh, got the hooks in. Looking for the body triangle. Has the body triangle as he's slamming away right now. Still locked in. Oh, and Hogan's got a reverse position. Hogan really has to get in there, posture up, and land some big shots if he wants to take this round right now. Which he may do. Still 15 seconds to go. Very close fight. Very close. Oh, oh, good right left. Trying oh to steal goodness. the round is Brandon. He should have stayed up on that instead of diving back down, getting tied up. Ten seconds. His, his coat. Oh, One yeah, his, more, two, three. There four. you go. Trying to, he may have stolen this round. I wouldn't want to be a judge. Close not, one. And the polls have it dead even. Yeah, 50, I'm seeing 50. That. Wow. I was going to say that's going to be hard for the judges to uh, discriminate anything different other than 50 cents right now. That was such a back and forth fight. I would hate really? to be in their position. That third round is really tough to score. Um, again, the knockdown, probably the biggest strike and the biggest moment of this fight, but it certainly doesn't tell the whole fight. It was a back and forth scrap all the way. I think Hogan's going to do a good job in those last seconds of trying to steal the round. Let's see if those are the difference makers for the judges. Don't be surprised if we had the split decision. Uh, oh, yeah, it'll be split. If anything, it'll be split. There's no unanimous here. I just don't know how, what the judge saw, which one saw what. Be a tough one. As we often talk about, I was talking about the champ, you know, Jen last night, said it many times, just don't let it go to the judges. Yeah, that's, that's the hardest thing. Yeah. Put no shot, so there's just no ambiguity. Good fight, man. Good fight. Fight number two. Night number two as we kick this off. Boss aggression, the trifecta out this song, dude. And we're watching some of the replays here on the feet. There's a right from Cook. Yeah, Cook was using good head movement, man. He was slipping them single jabs and then coming back in with a cross hook or, you know, uh, straight, straight, straight. He just, he was really just evading that one single strike that Hoagland was throwing and then getting back in there with his return strikes. I think that was the difference in the fight as far as the, the stand-up game.
Well, and I'm sitting here from the outside looking in, not a fighter myself, but I would have loved to have seen Brandon use that length. He, he does have the length. He, he a little bit more to his advantage. He wasn't putting anything after the jab. It was just single jab, single jab, single jab. But he was jab. bringing them low leg kicks, as we've seen, like you said, from the right leg of Cameron Cook. Cameron trying to curry a little favor with the crowd here. I don't know if that does anything with the judges, but... Possible fight of the night, you know, attempt or whatever. I mean, it was a good three-round war. It was. It definitely was. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to your judges' scorecard for our decision. All three judges scored this contest 29-28, declaring your winner by unanimous decision, Cameron Cook! I gotta admit, I'm kind of surprised we didn't have one judge go the other way. I, I mean, it was, it, it definitely wouldn't have shocked me if it had. It was uh, unanimous. I was not expecting that. But what do I know? All right, first of all, congratulations on the tough win, Cameron. I gotta ask you, Brandon's a tall kid, man. How, how hard was it dealing with that length here in the cage tonight? Uh, you know, I'm used to length. My gym members, they're, they're all taller than me, so you know. It was a little hard working past his hands and his, his long legs, man. I, there's nothing I can really do, but I did what I could. I counted what I could, and I did what I could to work. Well, you definitely put in the work. Looked like you were working on a couple submissions. A few of them looked real tight, man. Did, were, did you ever get discouraged not locking any of them in? Man, he was wearing me out. It was hard to lock him in. He's so much longer than me. But when I got him there, I was trying. And he's got a lot of heart, man. He fought and fought and fought. And we went three rounds. We went the distance. We, we had a war. Well, look, I noticed you mentioning something to the camera right after the fight. What was that that you were mentioning? Uh, I'm here, and I'm here to stay. I'm coming for anybody. 135, 145, nobody's safe. I'm coming for you guys. Anyone in particular your sights are set on? Uh, nobody in particular, but, like, I, yeah, whoever, whoever wants to get in front of me, I'm a freight train coming. Well, look, I wanted to check with you. Anything that we missed or anything that you want to add before you get to the celebration? Uh, yeah, I want to shout out my uh, sponsors, uh, h &S Flooring and uh, Buffalo Construction. And uh, I want to shout out one of my homies that passed here recently, Will Cook. You know, he's been gone. You know, it's hard without him, but uh, we're doing what we can. Thanks for looking out for me, big boy. Well, look, Cameron, we're definitely looking forward to see what the future brings for you. Until then, soak it in, enjoy the win. Let's hear it one more time, ladies and gentlemen, your winner, Cameron Cook. Pack it, fire it up, come along. Take it hits from the ish ish. Bryn Heathcock, someone who was just trying to school his boy, sitting on the learning tree, Brandon Hoagland. His coach is about ready to step into the cage with Liam Morris. Gonna be a banger right here. Brent Heathcock does nothing but putting on incredible shows and incredible performances as he makes his way into the cage and crush cage, fighting at a Midwest Combat Club bar, West Martial Arts, Decatur, Illinois. Got into fighting, we've heard this story so many times, just to stay out of trouble. He feels he dominates in all aspects. The he feels that his opponent will look to shoot after I land some shots, then I will sprawl and finish the fight. He feels that his stand-up, his cardio, his mindset, and his heart will be the difference maker. Looks up to the Diaz brothers, George St. Pierre, as well as the spider, Anderson Silva. I just like this kid an awful lot, man. Brent's been around a long time. He's fought some of the, the best of the best that Cage Aggression has to offer as far as amateurs. He's been from 25 to 35. Uh, he may even have fought at 45, but he's willing to travel. He'll come to your backyard. He'll come to your hometown. He'll come to his hometown. He don't care, man. He's about that life. He's about that action. And I just I enjoy uh, watching this kid evolve every time. And I, I follow him on the interwebs, man. He, he stays busy, man. His last fight here in the Cage of Gresham, he's gone on to pick up some Ws elsewhere. And you see the gentleman who just didn't quite make it against James Wilson, Mark Anthony, escorting Brent to the cage. And we talked about, man, it's a solo effort once you step into the cage, but it's a team effort when you're training your family, your tribe, that helps you prepare for battle. How them poles looking, JB? Well, right now, we actually have a Bryn Heathcock coming in as the big underdog. Interesting. 32%, and Liam Morris, 67 and change. You want to change that, you go to cagegression.tv and hit that poll section and tell us who you think is going to win this fight. Bryn steps into the field of battle right here as he awaits his opponent, Liam Morris, who is fighting out of Soft Valley Jiu-Jitsu, Sterling, Illinois. Started with basics. 
fell in love with the competition. Feels this is the perfect matchup for him, and he feels that his cardio and his ability to mix it up will be the difference maker. Looks up to Michael Chandler, as well as the current UFC lightweight champion, Charles Oliveira. This is the jam right here. This is the walkout music. I'm digging this. He won me over as I started to hear this. Can't go wrong with a little bit of Zeppelin. I, I mean, you guys might hate me, but Led Zeppelin sucks. <laughs> you speak now, poison with two tongues, my friend. Now, now, don't get me wrong. Excellent musicians maybe have a couple songs that I can get down to, but you got to be from that time to enjoy Led Zeppelin. Respectfully, 100% disagree <laughs> with the henchman. Don't talk me out, champ. I, I'll tell you something else. The Beatles suck, too. Oh, no! So, uh, See, I'm I more of a who guy. Yeah. Uh, but I'll take the ah! <laughs> all day of the week. We digress, ladies and gentlemen. Luckily, music has nothing to do with mixed martial arts, so. It does kind of help you out. Doesn't fire, doesn't it fire you out when you come out to a nice, strong, freaking walkout song? Dude, yeah, man. Some, some guys, some guys get down like that. Uh, Maybe this kid don't care what he said. Pick me the stupidest song you have, and, and that's <laughs> what. <laughs> Listen, I'm waiting for some dude to come out via Barry Manilow, man, oh, man yeah. and just dude, handle the business. It was a few fights ago, a few cards ago. Someone came out to Bill Withers. Oh, yes, my it was God. great. Hey, I know, um, I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Bryn Heathcock and Liam Morris about ready to step into the cage and put it down for this jam-packed house right here at the River Center and everyone watching around the globe on pay-per-view, cageaggression.tv. Thank you guys for, of course, as many options of viewing. I'm glad you guys took the time to come here and check us out as we are at night number two of a three-night banger. Little smile right there on the face of Liam Morris as he's about to enter the cage. I've always had mad respect for Brent Heathcock as well. I have not seen Liam Moore. I know he's been on the card before, but Brent is, is he's a go-getter, man, and we're about to see how it plays out tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, our third bout of the evening is scheduled for three three-minute rounds in the Cage Digression Amateur Flyweight Division, powered by the Cigar Social. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He stands five feet, nine inches tall, and weighed in at 129 pounds. He trains at Far West Martial Arts and is sponsored by Yabba Dabba's House of Glass, McCarl Family Racing, 217 Flavor, Tacos El Pesa, Elite Loyalty Management, Reed Racing, and Mayhew's Market. Joining us from Decatur, Illinois, Bryn the Jedi Heathcock. And his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. He stands five feet, eight inches tall, and weighed in at 122 pounds. He trains at Sauk Valley Jiu-Jitsu, Nick Meyer, and is sponsored by Odin Decal and The Cooler. Joining us from Rock Falls, Illinois, Liam Morris. Here it is. Liam Morris, Brent Heathcock, go down. How that pole's looking? Tighten up at all? Not much. Bryn Heathcock still the best underdog, about 35%. Liam Morris almost at 65%. Here we go. Bryn with that clear length advantage, reach advantage, see if you can take advantage. See Bryn switching stances already. I mean, that's what I like about this kid. He stays moving, he stays busy the whole time. He can go orthodox, he can go south ball. He'll kick, he'll punch. Yes. He'll wrestle if he has to. I mean, that's not his go-to, but look, Ooh, it's just a kick. nice head kick. Whoa, oh, big head Short right uppercut. Hand. Short big uppercut. Right hand from Liam Morris. And Brendan recovers well. Shakes his head. He's like, yeah, let's go. But you are correct, sir. Heathcock is very, uh, Heathcock is very predictably unpredictable. Switching stances, switching levels, keeps you guessing. Well, that was a hard head kick. Yeah, he threw a nice up high, up high head kick. Uh, I thought that was a left hand. No, no, well, no, no, no the, not that struck. Basically, uh, Heathcock came in with the head kick. And, oh, okay. And it was they got blocked, countered, yeah. yeah and, I mean, and they got countered. Let me ask you something, Jordan. You get kicked in the head, and your hand is there to block it with something like that. How much of that gets through? Uh, I mean, it, it just really depends, like, how big the shock was. Uh, you know, your hand to your head is a little bit better than your hand away from your head. Uh, 
So, I mean, and all guys are different. I mean, some guys can take a good punch. Some guys can't. Yeah, true that. And where There's, it hits, too. Like, if it kind of hits you behind the ear, equilibrium kind of go. you know. It just all depends. There's so many variables in this sport. This is, this is the greatest true sport that. in the world. I don't yes. think people understand. You ain't never told a lie, bro. It's so true. They just don't get it. So many possibilities. The probability of, you know, something happening is just astronomical. It's crazy. He got very loose and fluid with his stances. Morris he's looking, trying to do a, yeah. yeah you yeah, see that? He's yeah. trying to do a little bounce off the cage. Is that legal? Is, yep. Absolutely. Okay. I mean, obviously with like a showtime kick or whatever, but I, I don't know how different that is from like grabbing onto the cage to advance position. Yeah, as long as you don't uh, put your fingers or toes through the cage, you're good to go. Yeah, okay. you're running up it with your toes. Yeah, yeah. linked into that. Nin ninja sprinting, you know, Naruto <laughs> style. Ninja sprinting. Ninja Gaiden off the wall. Oh, you dusting off the nugget there, Ninja Gaiden. Yeah. Ooh, looping. Yeah. One of the things I have not seen Liam Morris do successfully is set anything up. He's just winging him. That's right. And, you know, his big strike was a counter strike. His hands are high. You know, he needs to find a way in there, whether it's a low leg kick, a couple of feints, a jab. Ooh, Ooh big, big right shot. Coming in. Yeah, Bryn needs to hit an angle coming in. He's coming straight in and getting caught with that counter. Well, and, and Bryn's taking definitely advantage of his length. Uh, Liam Morris is firing those shots, and Bryn's just not there. Good good pump jab, lands the second one. I mean, Bryn's doing all the right things. He just got to get his head off center a little bit, and uh, maybe he won't get caught with some of those counter strikes. And I would say if Liam wants to be more successful on those counter strikes, he needs to straighten out his punches and try to go for a one-two and not just a wing. Oh, uh, he nice caught a left. left right there from Heathcock, good. and Heathcock wobbled him. Got him shook a little bit. Liam seems to be still at Ooh, that, that one two oh, right there right, at the end. That, that locks it for me. I mean, that's tough because, look, we had the, we had the uh, strike that took Heathcock down, but Heathcock was much more dominant on yeah, the Yeah, he was pressuring that. forward, and he landed some good strikes of his own. And uh, the s significant strike-wise, I think Heathcock landed more, but uh, Liam definitely had the, the one shot that put him down just briefly. He popped right back up to his butt, so no damage was really yeah, done on that. Absolutely. Looked, looked worse than it was, I believe. Yeah, and recovered and came back strong toward the end of that round. I told you, man, Bryn's a tough kid, man. I love I love this kid so much. Without a doubt, without a doubt. It's always a pleasure watching him fight, Look, he's, his fight. He's already up off his stool, man. He's, he's a go-getter, man. He's a go-getter. Like watching I said, some even of the replay right now, there's that head kick. Yeah, it landed on the shoulder yep. is what it was. Mm -hmm. Is that what it was? Yep, yep, yep. It just caught the shoulder. But see, nice, nice faint. He's got Liam ducking and tucking and uh, what? just swinging wild, man. Well, and utilizing, like I said, his length advantage. Liam's throwing shots and, and Bren's just not there. Here we go, getting ready to start round two. Bren Heathcock, Liam Morris. Fighters fight. Let's see if Liam Morris adjusts it all. Bryn Heathcock doing a lot of the same thing. One, two right in there and out. Liam doing a good job of defending when Bryn does come in for his shots. Yeah, he runs that guard pretty high. Uh, he gets his head tucked down behind his mitts, and um, he, he avoids some strikes, but the jabs of Bryn are adding up, and uh, it's only a, a matter of time before something sneaky gets through again, like uh, that hook in the first round. And Bryn, we talk we'll about set. this all the time, man, especially with champ Pat Miller, just setting. Bryn just did a nice little inside leg kick to set up some other combinations, and we just don't see that enough. A lot of good setups as some of these fighters execute some of their offense. Well, he's had 22 amateur fights, man. He's had a long time in the sport, so yeah. he's probably picked up some tricks along the way. This is not his first rodeo at all. Right. Left, right from Heathcock gets through. Backs Liam up for a moment. No dice. No dice. And Nobody again, home. it's one strike. Yeah. You know? Liam Morris has got to find a way. And if you notice, Bryn, man, he just hit two feints. He hit a shoulder tuck and then a, a fake jab, and then he was able to land a jab right after that. Oh, oh, that's it, is out. it is about to go. Oh, I don't want to speak to him. Yeah, but he's, he's going to be finished. Back to his feet. Yeah, he's, oh, he's, he's got to stop that. Yeah, he's got to stop that. It is over referee Bruce Allen calling a stop. As an fight. amateur, I'm surprised Bruce didn't stop that on that first knockdown. He definitely got away and missed a very big damage by Bryn. Oh, man, Testament what a to Liam knockout. After that first drop, he got right back to his feet. Bryn jumped on him. Because Bryn did the 
he stayed on, you know, he didn't jump on him right away. And then when he seen Bruce wasn't gonna call the fight, man, he missed a couple really bad hammer fists that would have messed him up. And you see Liam Morris over there still dropping still, to the ground. Still a little wobbly. What a fight. This was an amazing end to a oh, absolute war between these and two guys. And I believe guys. it was a straight left into a right hook that initially took him, took him down for that first shot before it didn't get called, possibly could have. And then, you know, he just went to work. Well, I yeah. yeah. not that Jordan here is an amazing crash kid, but he called it. He said it was just a matter of time, and it definitely seemed like that. Liam wasn't setting his stuff up, and he started looping his shots, and, and Brent, being the seasoned veteran that he is, seized upon that. And there it is right there. We're watching it again. Look, and here he is rolling back up, and he's going to take another couple strikes right here. There's a right right there that gets through another right. And then, uh, boom. There you go. Cancel yeah. Christmas. I really like to see that first knockdown again. I thought he set that up very well. Oh, and it turned him, you know, it turned his body 180, man. Spun him around. And Ladies and gentlemen, around. your referee, Bruce Allen, has called a stop to this contest at 1 minute 30 seconds into round two, declaring your winner by knockout. Win the Jedi Heathcock! All right, come on over, Bryn. Bryn, first of all, man, congratulations on the win. You've been doing your thing here at Caged, Caged Aggression for quite some time now, man. Talk to us about the win and what this one tonight means to you. Man, that, uh, that's a lot. Uh, Drum back to 25, uh, just switch it up. Uh, I've been at 35 for a while, so let the boss know he said that'll work. And uh, shout out to Liam, uh, by far one of the toughest dudes I fought. Uh, first person to drop me. Uh, you hit hard, man. Uh, I just got back up, got back in focus, uh, got my legs under me, and uh, he just caught me with the right punch at the right time. I had to bite down on the mouthpiece and get through it. Yep, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. I think there were a lot of people that, that was surprised by that, at least on your end of things. We know to expect nothing but the best from Liam every time he's in. But I'll tell you, Bryn, why don't you, we're going to try and work on bringing this up on the screen. Why don't you walk us through the last couple moments of that fight and how you set up that finish? Yes, sir. Uh, I just, uh, I seen him, you know, he was ducking. He was throwing big shots, but he was ducking, so I figured I'd come with the overhand. If he don't duck, he's coming to the uppercut when he ducks. Uh, he didn't duck that time, the overhand hit him. Uh, I thought he was out at first and he got back up, uh, tough kid. And like I said, I just start picking my shots from there. Uh, I like to open up and let him go. Uh, yeah, like I said, just precision. Precision bricklayer is what somebody called me one time. That's exactly where you like to be, right there in the pocket, huh? So let us know what's around the corner for you. Uh, whatever, man. Uh, when I'm able to uh, make a jump and uh, get out to the West Coast and be out there full time, I'll be uh, making my switch to the pro ranks. But as of right now, I'm going to stick around the Amis a little bit, get some more experience. Uh, Moss man knows I'm ready for whatever, you know, 25, 35, it is whatever. Well, look, we'll enjoy it all until that time comes and you go pro. But until then, man, enjoy the rest of the night. Enjoy the weekend. Let's hear it one more time, ladies and gentlemen, for your winner, Bryn, the Jedi Heathcock. It's time to chop that pork, baby. It's pork chop getting ready to make his way into the cage. Jordan Trowers, a fan favorite. The president of the Jordan F Trowers fan club is right here, Jason Burmis, as Cody Baker makes his way into the cage. First, Cody Baker fighting out of Impact MMA Peoria, Illinois, wrestled in high school and continued into MMA. He feels his confident. He wants to stay away from his wrestling. Longer, taller, and faster, he said. Looks up to Matt Hughes and Anderson Silva. He fed, says he's been through the ups and downs of life, and this is his strong suit, getting into MMA. He might be taller and longer, but I don't know if he's faster than Jordan Trowers. I mean, that guy is a ball of fire. He's a phenom. For a heavyweight, he is the most athletic guy I have seen in my life. He's the absolute. I follow him on the book face. The guy does handstands and walks back on his with, hands. Uh, the first time I saw that, I was it was his last fight, and I'm backstage, and I'm watching this guy doing handstand push-ups with no one holding him. For a heavyweight to do that, folks, yeah. is Next unbelievable. Yeah. You know, 
He's walking in here with a belt from another organization, but this is Jordan Trower's house. Yep. And uh, Cody Baker, Jordan Trower's might as well be the main event for this guy. I am <laughs> super pumped. And if you're voting over in CageDegression.tv land, Jordan Trowers right now is the favorite, but only at about 57% and change. And Cody Baker is closing in at 42 and change. Interesting. Well, and again, this is Cage Aggression. Not to knock his hustle, this gentleman's hustle, Corey Baker, Cody Baker, and I'm looking forward to seeing him get down. I'm thinking he's called in these fights before, and not to knock on the organization he came from, but you know he is definitely stepping into the cage with a phenom in Jordan Trowers. Yeah, and Cody Baker's a big boy. I mean, these are heavyweights we're talking about where one punch can change the entire night, and so it's very interesting to see what he's going to bring to the table tonight. But he does that, like you know, like we talked about, he's got his hands full. Jordan Trowers fighting out of here, Davenport, Iowa. He found MMAG in early 2016, and he loves it. He's a ranked, he recognizes his opponent is a ranked opponent, but he has a high expectation because that his grappling is going to be the difference maker. Looks up to Daniel Cormier, Kevin Randleman, and RIP, and Eldred Nunn, and Inter, Inter, sorry, Israel Asanya, Izzy. He loves Zumba and dancing. There's no lie about that. He's about to bring all of that energy into the cage. Well, he just smiling. danced his way right down yeah. with Eldred Nunn. He comes He's out to the percolator, man. Jake Malik, oh, Brandon Jenkins it. being escorted by the crew. And a really great crew. You know, I've run into a lot of these guys in downtown Davenport, and they're always so humble, they're always so friendly, they can't wait to chat. You know, they're really just regular people like you and I. Uh, but people that dream to have the eye of the tiger and feel like they need to get into a cage to punch, punch people in the face. I've never had that. Jordan Trowers has that, yes. and I can't wait to see it. Right Cody, now, it's Cody, Cody Baker. Baker. Looking, looking very relaxed and loose in the cage as he awaits his opponent. Obviously, he is taller, but I'm telling you what, man, you've never seen a big man move like you see I'm Jordan Trowers, you. bro. I'm telling you. And eventually, Trowers does want to drop down to 205. But right now, I think that these kind of battles are really good for him. But but you got you to gotta think about something here. Look at DC, Daniel Cormier, excellent heavyweight, pretty much undefeated his entire heavyweight career. Anytime he dropped to 205, John Jones would have his, you know, his have number. His number. Every, every time. Every who time. ragdolls Dan Henderson at 205? True. Yeah, I mean, when Dan Cormier made his entrance but into 205. In, in Hendo's defense, he is 185 pounds. True, yeah. He, yeah. Uh, yeah, but no one treats Hendo like yeah, that. Yeah, you're, you're correct. Yeah. I mean, Here he look, goes. I remember the days of Dan Cormier's strike force, and it was no joke. He was the dark horse as an alternate in the tourney and made a big splash in the sport. Ladies and gentlemen, our next bout of the evening is scheduled for three three-minute rounds in the Cage Degression Amateur Heavyweight Division, powered by Delfts Pro Gym. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He stands six feet, one inch tall and weighed in at 264 pounds. He trains with Impact MMA and is sponsored by Bloom Hemp. Vital Performance, Yabba Dabba's House of Glass, and Whiteout Promotions. Joining us from Peoria, Illinois, Cody Baker! And his opponent, fighting out of the blue corner. He stands five feet, six inches tall, and weighed in at 244 pounds. He trains at Summit Training Center and MMAG and is sponsored by Murphy's Chiropractic and Keep the Receipt Apparel. Joining us from Davenport, Iowa, Jordan Trower! Jordan Trowers is so cool, he had his opponent dancing to his ring entrance music. Here we go, Jordan still smiling. We'll see if his opponent, Cody Baker, can wipe that smile off his face. Here we go. Close according to the polls, 44% for Baker, 55 for Trowers. Here we go. Definitely need to respect Baker's power, what he brings to the table. Nice inside leg kick from Baker. And I mean, when you look at these guys size by, side by side, you're like, wow, Cody Baker is so much bigger. Then you look at the lower half of Jordan Trowers. And you see what his legs look like. 
They are massive. A couple of troop trunks, but this is where Jordan Travers wants to be. He wants to have the bigger guy pushed up against the cage, start to wear on him a little bit, see if he can't isolate a leg and get him to the ground. Cody Baker again definitely has some length on him. We'll see if he'll be able to use that to his advantage. But Trower shoots on that leg. Going he's underneath leg. it. Oh, got he's got him uncomfortable. Got the single. Oh, oh man, he's shot up his way down. Giving Cody Baker no distance on that cage. Without a doubt. Baker at least Ooh, good knee nice on knee. the inside by Baker. And he does a good job at least getting one underhook back. Absolutely. That's going to back Travers out. Back to the center of the cage. That knee might have got to him. It may have a little bit. Name up position. Ooh. Oh, oh big swinging right leg kick, which missed. He's yeah. way too high. Probably is way too high. That used I, to fighting guys this height. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I know we may have underestimated Cody Baker a little bit. Nice right hand. Ooh, right by Trowers. He is athletic for a big man as well. That was a beautiful high kick that just came over the head of Jordan Trowers. Absolutely. Well, again, he does hold a belt in another organization. They don't give those away. No, nope, right. they don't. Cody Baker, both hands in front. Leading with that left hand, or left leg, I'm sorry. Jordan guessing here is which way he's gonna go. I'd like to see him quit chewing on his mouth guard, though. Keeps popping it in and out, man. Yes, he get, does, that is dangerous. Yeah, you get caught with your with your mouth open, that's a yeah. broken jaw yeah. easily. Yeah. Oh, see, Ooh, nice just, left hand from, Cody, or from uh, Jordan. Yeah, that's a way to get your mandible deconstructed there. Yes, sir. make all sorts of low profile mouth guards baker you should probably look into that big guy nice inside leg kick from baker about 30 seconds to go in the round it's really anybody's round at this moment nice outside leg kick from jordan Bowers may have been done a little bit more work on his feet to put against the cage but the striking although limited has really been cody baker with that knee it has been so far you know, who wants this round? There's 15 seconds left. Down to 10. Someone has to do something. Yeah, there's only three of them. You can't, you know, time is a big commodity in MMA. You only got three rounds. You got to stay busy. Especially an amateur level, three-minute rounds. Not a whole lot of time. Seems like forever in there, but they go quick. Both fighters clearly respect each other's power and prowess here. They're very selective on how they implement their offense. Well, I think that Cody Baker realized he doesn't want this guy to close the distance and put him against the cage, and Jordan Trowers realized he doesn't want to let Cody Baker strike with him. You know, I think yeah, that knee did out. get to him, you know, and obviously that head kick, although it missed, had he landed, it could have been lights out for anybody. These are heavyweights. Yeah. Make no mistake about it. And if I'm Trowers' corner, I'm telling him to calm down a little bit, close that distance, put him up against the cage, and see if you can get that takedown. Work from there. If I'm Cody Baker, I'm telling him, look, you got to let your hands go a little more. Try some low kicks. See if that opens anything up for you. Yeah, right. and keeping the kicks below the waist uh, prevents Trowers from possibly catching one and Get getting, and, yeah, and getting to his back. The calf kick is really where it's at in mixed martial arts now anyway. So. Yeah, you see that so much now. More well, more. it's just so devastating. It man. is. A if man those, can't stand, you can't fight. That's right. A few of those racked up, and it can change the whole night. Jordan smiling. I love this guy. Bowers goes for that shot. Cody Baker sprawls well, gets back Nice up. sprawl. Nice yeah, job for hits. Cody defending that. I mean, he definitely is an athletic, bigger guy. I he mean, definitely I'm pretty is. impressed with There's his, that leg kick. With I his like movement that. and his hips. Inside leg kick, the way to go. Cody clearly realized, like you just said, JB. Oh, there goes to the head. Oh, there yeah. it is. Bowers oh, him down. He's all over him. He's unloading. Right hands. Cody, Cody back, back, to, his back feet. to his feet. Yes. Nice scramble there. Cody knows, man. He does not want to see the ground with Jordan. Well, that's the thing. Look at even Jordan right there trying to grab that low kick. But as soon as he went high with that kick, Jordan just pushed him right over, ran into him. Just right hand for Cody. Cody's doing a good job of keeping Jordan at the end of his punches, utilizing that length advantage. Well, and he's fainting a lot, too. He's got a lot of stuff going on with his hands. He's fainting with his legs. That keeps the fighter guessing. See, he kind of throws a hand out there. Yeah, man. Some people think it's wasted movement, but he can no. easily put a paw out to the side and then throw a hook off that. 
Crowder is trying to get in there. Careful with that. He doesn't want to get too close. Yeah, if he'd have caught him with that straight right, that would have been bad. We still, you know, one minute, 30 seconds of this second round. You know, I think that's really dangerous for Jordan to lunge in that way. You know, he ate. Ooh. I think he's doing well to, to counter and go in for the shot. He's looking at those low kicks. I, I'd like to see him try to get a couple fence, maybe a straight into a takedown. Yeah, he's definitely got to put some punches together to, to get something up in uh, Baker's face to get him off the legs, quit thinking about the legs. You know, he's close enough right now where he could probably paw that right hand out a little bit and at least get a reaction there just like is. he did right there. Uh -oh. But Cody Baker does a good job of scrambling as soon Cody as he hits is, the mat. He is clearly strong. Yeah, as soon as he hits the mat. A lot of respect Back to his feet these two real guys. quick. And when, but Jordan gets him out, man. He's, he, he stays on him and he jumps on him. But Cody's clearly strong and not quite. Ooh. 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 Big combination from Jordan. Jordan Trower is not afraid to step in there with the bigger guy and throw. And that's the move. He's going to have to step in and start dropping the ones and twos because from outside, he's not going to be able to do it. Well, I'll tell you right now, if you can keep it pressed against the cage, and I'm kind of upset he didn't. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm there, surprised he's letting seconds. him off the hook so he's at least making work. Yeah, if I'm Trowers just corner, I'm, whoa, saying, whoa. I'm saying that's a no-go. We need you to press that yeah, up, press him against that make cage. him move you off the cage. Absolutely. And Especially in these close rounds, right? Ooh, slap that kick! Take down attempt. Nice defense from jo uh, from Cody. You know, I, I'd have this at one round apiece. I would probably have the first round for Baker, the second round for Trowers. Again, anybody's fight. If I'm in Baker's corner, I'm saying to him, listen, we got to start putting together some more combinations. Let's not get so wild with the feet. I like the low kicks. Let's stay away from the head kick unless it's absolutely there. And if I'm Trowers' corner, I'm saying, once you have one of those legs and have him pressed up against the cage, you stick like glue yep. and you get it done. Yeah, that's, don't let him off the hook. That's why it's just not checkers. It's it, <laughs> You don't necessarily have to be doing something to be doing something. Just leaning on a guy and making him physically move you off of them is doing something. It's, yeah. it's wearing him down. It's tiring him out. And then Trowers is just giving him a freebie off the cage. He's done it like a couple times in the last round. Yeah. Human chest, baby. Human chest. And we just watched that head kick from Baker, which was not only blocked by Trowers, but he was able to throw him to the ground and get some good strikes off as he rushed him. Well, that last kick, it seemed like Cody was throwing it just as Jordan was going for the takedown. So, fun fight. <laughs> Third yes, round, cagedaggression.tv. Hug it out. There, there, there you go. <laughs> Gotta love it. Ooh, straight right from Baker Lance. Jordan definitely has gained some respect from Cody's power here. And honestly, I ain't mad at Cody's hands, man. He's doing some work with them bad boys. Now go fainting, fainting the leg kicks there. Ooh, left Big sneaks left. in. That shook him? Nah, shook him. Travers didn't love it, but it didn't hurt him too bad. Surprised him a little bit. He's trying to match. He's, he's trying to strike him. I don't think that's the mood for Travers. Oh, there you go. Right. Oh, I think he was frustrated, like you said. That's all he's been doing. He's been lunging in with those big punches. I like him closing the distance here. Let's get that scoop. Let's let's not give up on it. Let's get him to the ground and see where we can work. Yeah, he needs to try to stay on that single. Switching to a double would be hard, especially with a big body on top of you like Cody Baker. I mean, that's just an enormous guy. That's and a big boy leaning on you right there, man. And he's tall, and he has a wide stance for a big man as well. Thank you, Jordan. Charles One minute, 45 yeah, seconds Got to get that foot off the mat. If he can pull it out. You see if he can steal this round, get that takedown, and try to capitalize on a takedown. Well, I still think whoever wins this round probably takes this fight. So this is it. 90 seconds to go. Who wants it more in the cage aggression cage? Jordan Trowers, Cody Baker. You know, normally that's that's not a very good takedown defense, but he's so much bigger than Trowers that his torso covers like Trowers' whole yeah, body. His body. Yeah, yeah. so and he's I mean, carrying that's, that weight that's right a now. Lot of, yeah, and but normally like you're loading up on a guy's shoulders when you bend over on top of him like that. What's need, the move here, Jordan? I was gonna say. You need to either get get their head all the way down or you need to get them all the way up. One yeah. minute left in this round here, in the final round. 
like you said, JB, whoever takes this one takes, in my opinion, whoever takes this round takes the fight. What it looks like to me, Baker being patient, inside kick by uh, Jordan Trowers. Another inside leg kick to Trowers. He's trying to do those to go for that takedown once again. Either that or he might throw it up high. We'll see. That's when you want to throw those high kicks. You want to land some good inside low leg kicks or outside low leg kicks. Look low, Less go high. Less 30 seconds, ladies and gentlemen. You got to sell it, though. You Cody Baker's sell it. corner going wild right now, telling him he has to do something if he wants to win this fight. I don't know, man. I don't, yeah. 15 seconds. Trowers closed the distance, pushes him up against the cage. Four seconds to go. Sprayed, with, sprayed with a little man sweat over here. Good effort by both of them. Clearly sportsmanship, which we love to see. God, I wish it was a five rounder. Yeah. <laughs> I wish it was a five rounder. Yeah, that third round, I mean, there was only really one good strike maybe landed between the two of them. Other than that, it was Towers basically. You know, pressed up against him on the cage. And, yeah, and again, it's one of the things, you, who knows what the judges are looking at. Small leg kicks. Yes, they like, actually, you know, affect Cody Baker. They didn't really change his stance. He's trying to do he those to set up something. Not damaging, anyway. No. But again, who knows what the judges are looking at. Ooh, nice left. left. It's not true. He missed with the counter, right? Yep. And that was just right there at the end of the round. I mean, yes. that's probably the, the significant part of the round was... Maybe what the judges yeah. remember. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see what we have on scorecards. Very interesting. I, I think uh, I think Port Chop fell short on this one. I, yeah, I, I think, think, one I, I think the striking yeah. game yeah. possibly be. Yeah. I think I think uh, Cody pieced him up, pointed him up with the striking game. Because those takedown attempts and even the takedowns that Jordan had, he didn't quite capitalize. No, like, no. Baker was right back to his feet as soon yeah. as he hit the mat. Absolutely. And, you know, he was throwing strikes just when we got him over, but how effective were they? You know, Cody Baker had great scrambles. <laughs> Jordan's dancing. <laughs> Love that guy. Now they're both dancing. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we go to our judges' scorecard for our decision. All three judges scored this contest 29-28, declaring your winner by unanimous decision, Jordan Trowers! All right, I'm right behind you, Jordan. First of all, man, congratulations on the win. And look, I don't think there's anyone in this building that disagrees with me right now. I could watch you do that all night from walkout to finish, all night, man. Hey, where does all that fun energy and spirit come from? Well, that fun energy is sponsored by Murphy's Chiropractic. Please go ahead and make an appointment, and you're gonna be good to go, baby. Let's go. Hey, I noticed during the bout there were a few times there was some back and forth as far as the conversation went. What was some of that that you guys were uh, talking about in there? Uh, we just wanted to keep it fun for the crowd, you know, we want to take it to the limit, and we just want to keep uh, the crowd engaged in this matchup, yeah. Well, I definitely think you did a good job at that. Jordan, I'm going to give the mic to you here. Let us know anything on your mind, anyone you want to thank, anything I might have left out. Okay, I just want to shout out to my other sponsor, Keep the Receded Peril, Keenley Johnson. He's in the building. And like I said, Murphy's Chiropractic, please schedule an appointment. Shout out to everybody coming for supporting the fighters and continue to have fun tonight. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for the funnest man in MMA, Jordan Trowers. Congrats to Jordan Trowers picking up the W, unanimous decision over a very game. Cody Baker, nothing to be ashamed of, my friend. That was an incredible effort as we have the ladies, if I can, if I'm allowed to say that term, the ladies stepping into the cage, Claire Schneckloff How and Mackenzie Stiller. I know, go ahead and cancel me, that's all right. Claire Schneckloff, a big fan favorite. We've seen her many times. I've yet to see Mackenzie Stiller step in the cage, but Claire is always game when she steps into the cage, aggression cage. She's looking for, as she calls it, a filthy good time, always. 
Well, first and foremost, let me say, Jeff, I didn't know I was calling fights with such a bigot that uh, you, yeah. that you would dare <laughs> cancel Jeff Wilson. to actually say that it's ladies night here at Cage Digression as Claire Schneckloff is getting ready to step into the cage. And I interviewed Claire yesterday. She's super excited for this fight. Can't wait to get it done. It just has a great attitude towards combat sports in general. Well, I asked her today how she was feeling, and I don't know how exactly I can phrase this, and I hope she's not mad at me. She was saying there was a bit of a leaky glutamus maximus today. She's suffering from a little bit of something, something, but I know she's going to fight through whatever she has going on to do her best to put on her A-game against a McKenzie Stiller as we are moments away from watching the lady step into the cage. Claire, it, it, again, she's always learning, man, always developing, always hanging out with cats who are pushing her and keeping her being the best Claire she can be. And we're going to see what version of Claire steps in here today. I'll tell you what, the uh, the leakiness is common with a weight cut, uh, with rehydration. I, You may have uh, some experience in that matter. I, I, I do. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's not flattering at all, but yes. <laughs> the leaky butt talks. But that's all right. She's fought through it, persevered, adapted, overcoming, and she is about ready. She's waiting for her opponent, Mackenzie Stiller. Claire Schneckloth, of course, fighting out of Elridge here and there. Just woke up one day. Claire saying she just woke up one day to start, start training. Looking forward to her matchup. She said, we will be friends for a long time now, just like her other opponents. And that's a weird thing about Claire, man. She really does go out of her way to make friends with her opponents. Strengths in her MMA, very humble pie. She said she doesn't have any. That's not true. She's in love with Corey Noble, another one of her opponents that she's obviously become good friends with. Favorite part is the friends that she makes out of the girls that abuse me here. All right, as Mackenzie Stiller makes her way into the cage fighting at a one-touch fight team, Twin Lakes, her mom put her into uh, judo when she was a young age and piqued her interest later on in life. And she's just grateful that she gets to start pursuing her dreams and goals in life. That's very commendable. Her strength she feels are her grappling, been grappling for about 14 years and she's not worried about anything she says looks up to her coaches and kayla harrison since this all started because since she was in judo so that's apparently somebody going back to the judo days interesting stories regarding her mma career she started judo eight years old started jiu-jitsu at 13 years old and started wrestling in high school so claire has her work cut out for her this evening yeah because grappling is not claire's strong suit she's much more of a striker and uh, I'm, I'm interested to see how she's able to deal with a, a, a grappler. Well, let's see if uh, McKenzie exploits that in Claire's game. And who knows, maybe Claire's kind of trying to lock down her wrestling game. We'll see. Ladies and gentlemen, our next bout of the evening is scheduled for three three-minute rounds in the cage aggression amateur women's flyweight division, powered by Squirrels Tree Care. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. She stands five feet, six inches tall and weighed in at 122 pounds. She trains at Summit Training Center, MMAG in Penas, and is sponsored by Yabba Dabba's House of Glass, Nelson Chiropractic, and The Poor House. Joining us from Davenport, Iowa, Claire Bear Schnecklaw. And her opponent, fighting out of the blue corner. She stands five feet, two inches tall, and weighed in at 122 pounds. She trains with One Touch Fight Team and Academy and is sponsored by Belcor Electric, Wisconsin Mobile Detailing, Stolly USA, Race Sport Lighting, Angel Fence, and Kunkel Connective Tissue Specialist and Acupuncture. Joining us from Twin Lakes, Wisconsin, Mackenzie Stiller! This is one of those things where styles make fights right here. You know, Claire the striker, clearly the link advantage, linked advantage, and then you have Mackenzie, a little shorter, a little stockier, but wrestling in jiu-jitsu all day. Let's see how it plays out. How's that, how's that uh, poll looking, JB? We got Claire Schneckloff at 26% and change, and Mackenzie Stiller coming in at the heavy favorite at 75 plus percent and immediately Mackenzie going in there trying to take her down told me in a uh, interview yesterday that she was definitely going to look to utilize her jujitsu good trade of knees by both girls what she want to do here Jordan uh, create that separation yeah. so we don't go to the ground or yeah she's gonna have to try to bump and rip that arm out of there and get it get away from Mackenzie 
but she did a good job of defending the takedown right off the get-go. Not too bad, absolutely. Both of them, they're exchanging knees here in the center of the cage. But we're talking about it. If this girl is, like, serious in judo, the longer you're locked up, the more trouble you're in. Well, it, it, with that judo game, you're looking for that, that nice hip toss, that Ronda Rousey. Yeah. And there was and a nice... Kimblet threw a nice little hip toss. Yeah. yeah. And a nice outside trip. Absolutely. And right now, we got Mackenzie Stiller on top. You could see her. She was setting it up the whole time to push it in Poland. She was just seeing how Claire was reacting. Yep. And, yep. and with no separation, I mean, she was playing right into her game. And she's actually trying to get back into guard right there. Trying to get that leg out. Claire's doing a good job of keeping it locked down. Not in letting her advance position. Now, she's you know. Slide through the mouth. Got it. Yep. She's got both out. Now she's just going through the right Flair in the straight defense mode here. No hip explosion at all. Yeah, but McKenzie, she needs to settle down here and pick her shot. She's just flailing. Ooh. I don't know. Referee's sitting there. These are all undefeated. Oh, got the that's net. bad. Under the chin. Claire in bad shape. Yeah. Tap out in the very first round. McKenzie Stiller making short work of a game. Claire Schneckloth. Opening moment of the first round. Like we said, it seemed like it was going to be no bueno. If anything went to the ground, Claire's advantage was going to be on the feet. I don't think I've ever seen a girl with a USA wrestling tattoo. I've seen plenty of guys, but that might be the first girl I've seen with one. I would uh, agree with you there. Not on the Led Zeppelin, but on the tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> Never agree with a Led Zeppelin, my friend. Congratulations to Mackenzie Stiller. Grand opening, grand closing, ladies and gentlemen. Watching her do the finishing work right here. Rolls her over under that neck, and it's short work once she locks that choke in. Well, even before that, when she had Claire mounted, it's, Claire was just in straight defense mode. There was no attempt at, like, hip explosion, and, trying to get her off her. And that's what those punches do. I mean, even if they're not creating any sort of damage, it gets the it gets the focus on the defense, and then you forget about everything else. You roll to your belly to try to do something, and then you get caught in transition, and, you know, that's the night. Claire find a new best friend. Yeah. She always does. A filthy good time was had by all. Yes. I love Claire's energy. Ladies and gentlemen, your referee, Josh Stewart, has called a stop to this contest at 1 minute, 43 seconds into round one, declaring your winner by submission due to rear naked choke, Mackenzie Stiller! All right, Mackenzie, congratulations on the win. Hey, talk to us how it feels coming out, getting the big win tonight, especially in, uh, I believe, your Cajun Aggression debut, right? Yes, yes. I feel great. I was uh, confident, extremely beyond prepared, thanks to my coaches, teammates. Thank my mom. I would not be here without her. And I just want to thank all my sponsors and, Halo and Richard from Halo Exterior. Thank you, guys. Well, real quick, before I let you get to the celebration, was there anything that caught you by surprise about this fight? Um, no, I just came with the game plan my coaches gave me, and I am really confident in their skills, and I think I showed what I'm made of tonight. Well, you definitely uh, represented for one touch here tonight. We're looking forward to seeing what comes next, but is there anything you want to add to this? Yeah. Well, look, Mackenzie, you enjoy the celebration tonight. Congratulations once again on the win. Let's hear it loud for your winner, ladies and gentlemen, Mackenzie Stiller. Our next bout of the evening, Sam Norris. Going up against Nora Bellini. Noah Bellini and Sam Morris. Nor I can talk, I swear. Sam Norris is making his way to the cage. Regular fight team, Stone City, Iowa. Wrestling and watching UFC with his dad is how he got started. It's an interesting matchup, he says. He decided to close the distance and use the clinch where Eric has taught me. Assuming Eric Coke. Yes, that would be Eric Coke. And I'm going to just start calling this guy, Sam, don't call me Chuck Norris. Yeah. I think that's the way to go. Uh, came out to a baller song, but I'm looking at him and he looks like he might not have even been born when this song came out. I mean, that's, that's the bottom line. This is classic rock at this point. 
Yeah, Phil, watch, watch way the better than Led Zeppelin. <laughs> Phil, his wrestling and good timing will be the difference makers. All of his beautiful teammates and coaches are the things, are the people he looks up to. Interesting stories about his career. His first two fights he took with a broken nose and a dislocated shoulder. So I'm no stranger to adversity. Wow, without struggle, there is no progress, brother, and apparently he is no stranger to it. Congratulations to Snoop Dogg to buying back Death Row Records. Yeah. Sam Norris makes his way into the cage, the correction cage. Ready to go. Got that game face on as Noah Bellini makes his way down the aisle to get ready to get on the good foot and do the bad thing as he's coming out of Soft Valley Jiu-Jitsu. Rock falls. He's interested for this fight. Feels that his strengths are everything. I love that. No shortage of confidence there. Looks up to Austin Hubbard and Nick Meyer. As we get ready to kick this one off, how's that pole looking, JB? Noah Bellini coming in at the slight favorite, about 60%. But Sam Norris rising up just a little under 40%. And again, if I had to choose, Sam Norris had the better walkout music. <laughs> if only that was the determining factor, right? You know, at the beginning, at the beginning of this song, it was like a, a mild instrumental, I swear. Yeah, he was coming out to Ready or Not by the Fugees. Oh, uh, we'll I, be mad at that. Oh, I, was, I thought we was about to have a face-off of, <laughs> of interest music yeah, right yeah, there. That would have been a tough one, right? Uh, Fuja La La. Yeah. <laughs> Find me in my Mitsubishi eating sushi uh. pump and Fugees. Noel Bellini looking pretty confident. Getting ready to get in there. Without a doubt. Coming out with his crew. Interesting, got a Muay Thai kickboxing shirt on, and uh, Sam Norris's uh, strength was, I believe, clinch work. So we'll see how that fight works. Fire with fire, yeah, baby. You know, collision of styles. We'll see how it plays out. As this is the not our last fight, but our last fight before our quick little intermission. Those at home, if you want to uh, do whatever you got to do during a little break there, that will happen here at the end of this fight. And we will be back for the mother load, the heavy load of the rest of the car. Not that the first part hasn't been heavy load, but we're getting into the thick of it here after the intermission. But first, we got to do Sam Norris and Noah Bellini in the Cage Aggression Cage. Night number two of Cage Aggression 33 Trifecta. Sitting here hanging out with my boys, JB, Jason Burmans, as well as the henchman, Jordan Henderson. Yeah, wouldn't that be interesting if fights were all about the polls were all like if they won the fights based off the walkout music, that'd yeah. be fun. I mean, right now you are seeing a lot of different mixes of pay-per-views. You're actually seeing rap battles and oh, yeah, fights. Yeah, yeah. You're seeing <laughs> boxing with MMA. And even in big organizations like one, you're seeing Muay Thai kickboxing fights and straight MMA bouts. So combat sports has really evolved so much Absolutely. since the introduction of the Ultimate Fighting Championship. You are so correct, And bro. the mainlining of MMA. Ladies and gentlemen, our next bout of the evening is scheduled for three three-minute rounds in the Cage Aggression Amateur Featherweight Division, powered by the Sneaker Vault. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He stands five feet, nine inches tall, and weighed in at 145 pounds. He trains with Regulators Fight Team and is sponsored by LME Entertainment. Joining us from Monticello, Iowa, Sam Norris! And his opponent, fighting out of the blue corner. He stands an even six feet tall and weighed in at 145 pounds. He trains with Sock Valley Jiu-Jitsu, Nick Meyer, and is sponsored by The Cooler, Sonny's Professional Window Cleaning, Rituals, Chiropractic and Wellness, CD's Lawn Care, and Beach Gal Travels. Joining us from Rock Falls, Illinois, Noah Bellini! Here it is, ladies and gentlemen, Sam Norris, Noah Bellini. Got ready to put it down right here. This is gonna be a scrap. I do believe you are correct, sir. Not one red, you ready? Not one blue, you ready? Let's fight! Oh. Oh. oh, big straight kick yeah. to the mush. Good. A nice straight kick to the mush of Sam Morris. Norris got him up against the cage right now. Oh, he just ate it. He did. And you know what? He closed the distance really well. Let's see how he works right now. You watch uh, Noel Bellini getting his arms underneath. 
clinching those, uh, trying to get those together, trying to turn it around. And not quite there yet, but it looks like he might be successful. Norris doing a good job keeping up against the cage. Nice oh, catch and there it is. Bellini. He turns it out. Ooh. Oh, and then back around. Ooh, switching stance, trying good to get knee. that toss. There's that first uh, Muay Thai. And now he's kind of clinching on the head, trying to bring it down. Arms locked. Really awkward. Ooh, wow. man, what a nice shot. uppercut. Nice little plum move there. Yeah. How do you feel about the plum clip, Jordan? I know it's a very controversial issue. Some people say it's the clinch you want to go with. Other Ooh, people say, left. hey, we don't like interlocking the uh, fingers that way. What are your opinions? Uh, it just depends. I mean, some guys deal with the clinch in a poor way. They don't know how to quite get away from it or separate from it. So if you can if you can find it stylistically wise in your favor, use it. Otherwise, I feel like there's too many ways to counter it or be taken down because um, your hands are too busy up top. Well, and I mean, we're going back a ways, but I tell you what, when Anderson Silva implemented the plum with Rick Franklin to capture the, oh. or the title back in the day. I thought you were going to talk about Vandalay Silva. Oh, well, well, him too, him too, but I mean, he's the king of the plum. It's like Van, uh, Anderson had Rick trapped, like he just couldn't do anything. I mean, he, he put his nose from the middle of his face to his, yeah. out by his ear, you it's, know. It's, it's crooked to this day. Yeah, flattened it, so. Um, but here we are, Sam Norris, Noah Bellini. We got Sam with Noah up against the cage here. We got about one minute left here in this first round. How's that? Uh, how's it tighten it up there, JB? We got Noah Bellini a little bit more than 60%, and Sam Norris just under 40%. Really, anybody's round still right now. Not a ton of action. Nice knee to the chest, too. Nice knee for Bellini. Bellini, Ooh. a big front kick again. So maybe the clinch Sam Norris was talking about was uh, more wrestling based than. Noah's uh, obviously more kickboxing Muay Thai style. Ooh, Ooh nice right left back. hand from Bellini. And he landed. Oh, piecing him up here in the center of the cage. Bellini Just a good combination. Combo. Nice perseverance from Sam Norris. Fighting through those combinations laid on him by Noah Bellini. Noah Bellini under the neck, got a lot of control. Not looking for a choke or anything like that, trying to make him uncomfortable right now. Looks like he's going to try to turn around and get on his back. Try to throw that knee into the body, not quite successful. You like those. You like those, I Davey. love those side body knees. I, I think that they're way underneath yeah, the MMA. Absolutely. And I think they open up so much more. And it can be it can be very devastating, man. You pop a rib, break a rib, oh, knock yeah. the wind out of you. Can't really oh, good right. He's oh. stuck him with that right. Whoa, end of the first round. That's a pretty dominant round for Noah Bellini. Sam Norris, you know, had him dressed up against yeah! the cage, trying to make him feel uncomfortable a couple of times. Bellini was able to find his way out of there and be successful with the striking. Norris, obviously very gritty and a, and a heart of a champion, just continued coming back for more punishment throughout the first round. Started off with an A to kick to the face. He, he took the he took the sandwich, kept on chucking, and uh, but found himself on the end of a few more, you know, pretty Except bad strikes right throughout the first round. Just. There's a right left that gets through and, right there. I mean, Noah Bellini, Bellini hitting with probably over 10 significant strikes in that first round. And here's an uppercut gets through. Left, right, kind of misses. Right now, Eric Polk in the corner of uh, Norris. Basically telling me he's a little bit more head movement. And he's looking for some inside uppercuts in the clinch, which is probably a good idea. You know, again, Norris has had up against the cage a couple times. He's got to get his strikes in. At least, you know, a little dirty box and maybe try to work the body a little bit before diving at the legs. Uh, Absolutely. Just just try to wear him down something. You know, sneak a body shot in, take the wind out of him. Norris jumping out quick again. Nice high kick there, block from... Whoa. Norris goes Brock's for the shot leading. on the leg. He's underneath, he's got him up against the cage again. Bellini doing a good job, balancing on that one foot. What's your view on that? When somebody's on one foot, you obviously want to get your other leg under you. Yeah. Yeah, to defend that takedown, he's got to get that foot to the ground. But, uh, you know, if, if Sam's not looking to do anything such as foot, like dragging the pipe or switching to a double or anything like that, you're really in no danger. you got the cage behind you that he's pushing you into, so you're kind of supported pretty well. how things shake out here with about two minutes left here in this second round. Sam Norris, Noah Bellini. Very tightly, toughly contested matchup so far. Say that five times fast. Bellini turns him around with sheer strength right there. Right, and, and, he hit him, and, he, and he hit him with a good knee. 
He first poked him with a knee and then landed a couple more, and now he's on top. I don't know if Bellini heard him with that short left before they hit the ground, but we'll see. I think North Sam Norris is just very, very frustrated. He's doing all this work, and eventually Bellini's getting the better of him. Norris tough as nails, though. Yeah. Oh, oh, he caught one on the way inside. Brings him right back to his feet. And he's obviously not going to stop. Yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. Th this is his game plan. He's going to stick to it. Yeah. I don't think he's... Uh, He's planning on switching it all. You know, if this goes the way the other ones have, you've got about 10 or 20 seconds before Bellini gets a reversal, creates some distance, and starts striking again. And right there's the reversal. Let's see if he, <laughs> let's see if he creates the distance. Nope, it gets on top. Right, go for the takedown. And Bellini just used a wizard there to get Sam Norris to the ground. I mean, Bellini's obviously a bigger, stronger, uh, and that's, the, that's kind of the key to, to what's going on here. Sam can't get in there to get the takedowns. He got a big, strong kid that's defending yeah. him, and then Shout it out. he's beating him up on the way uh, into the into the hip or into the clinch. About 45 seconds to go. Sam still has one uh, leg left, uh, locked in guard. Stands right up. Norris gets to his feet. Can't tell me uh, Norris is cut or that's just a little mouse under his right hand. Just a little there. mouse. He's not cut. Wings a huge right hand to Bellini. Right Goes Goes nowhere. Oh, yeah. whoa! Nice take. Down, missed that big kick at Bellini. Again, no setup. Sam has no, he had no real setup for a lot of those strikes, but he's in the dominant position right now. That just lowered his level and uh, gambled on that, and it paid off. There's about 10 seconds left. If Sam Norris wants this round, he's got to create some space and land some big shots. Doesn't look like it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think the takedown was enough to get him that Absolutely round. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But was it quite a 10 8 that we always look for? Well, I'm just saying this that that was probably the most su success he's had Absolutely. going in, getting that clinch and going for the takedown. That's the first time he's ended up on top, first time he's ended up in guard. Uh, obviously, didn't have a lot of time to do anything with that. You know, if I'm Bellini's corner, I'm telling him to do more of the same. Be patient when he rushes you, create the distance. You're going to turn him around and get the strikes. And if I'm Eric Polk talking to my fighter right now, I'm saying, listen, you need to finish. Go for broke, you, absolutely. You gotta go for broke, you gotta figure this out. Let's not go for a one, one and wing it. You got a little success right there, taking him down. But once you get that success, you have to let everything go. Yeah, he's lovely, definitely gotta find a way to finish the fight. The lovely Serena K letting us know that it's round three coming up. He just told him that. Eric Koch literally just said, go for broke this round, you need this. I mean, that, Great okay. minds think alike. Yeah, okay. I mean that's. A, I mean these fighters are so lucky to have some of these learning trees to sit under. And Eric Koch, I mean it's, it's just awesome to see, man. Yeah, if Noah Bellini sticks to the stuff he has in the first two rounds, uh, could be smooth sailing. Yes, we'll sir. see. This is a fight. It is. Referee trying to direct Norris to his correct side of the cage. Here we go. As we begin the next round here, I'd like to see another. Sam brushes him again. Whoa, these guys coming out. And there's another one. Oh, right there. Wow. wow. And now Bellini it. right on top. Very bad spot for Norris. We're back to where we ended here in that second round. Oh, and he might get, he's looking to get on full, full top. Not quite there. Looks like he's pushing him out. See, I'd like to see a knee right there. He's got, yeah. he's got a little. Oh, full guard. Full. Uh, that, possible. One hole. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was going to say, right. he could have threw a mounted triangle. See if he's going to try to work an arm bar, maybe rain down some ones and twos, see what he can do with this position. Isolating that arm a little bit. Possible key lock attempt coming up. Still looking at that arm, trying to isolate it. Gonna switch grips here. Yep, he's gonna try to work underneath and he's gonna look for that Americana key lock, depending on what you want to call he definitely it. Definitely got it. It's hard with the hand with the arm behind the head though. Oh, he's definitely he's still, got he's still not giving up on and, it and right now. No, but he's but see Sam's oh, there it is, there it is. Ooh, watch that shoulder, baby. That could pop right out. Yeah, it's just hard with the, with his arm stuck behind uh, Sam Morris's head. If he could get that for him, it doesn't quite the, get that leverage, yeah. right? Yeah. Ooh, nice tip of the hip escape there. Sam Morris doing everything he can to try to buck up right now. No, Bellini literally going nowhere. Staying high. Smothering him. Not letting him have any distance. Doing a good job of controlling that position. Clearly the stronger fighter. Keeping 
Uh, well, Bellini Sam just somewhat immobilized. You don't used a lot of power on that. Got up over over to his Ooh, side right now. A... Now it's over to his back. Giving him his back. Trying to get in a body triangle right now and lock his feet together. He's got it. Nope, it's loose. No, no it's, it's goes together. He locked no, it right it's in turning there. Turning in. This is Noah's time right here, man. I'm sorry, this is Sam's time to try to turn inwards. Yeah, he's got a full the guard there and start raining down some blows, man. And now he's on top. Definitely has to try to find, find a finish here. Got to get that separation, man. Do something to try to steal this round. Well, Sam Norris needs a finish. He needs, yeah, to find a way, he needs to find a way to posture up and finish Noel Bellini if he wants this win. And that's what he just did. He got a good shot in there. Noel Bellini immediately, immediately pulls him down, doesn't give him any space. And he pops up again. Oh, Ooh, he's got to be careful. He's got to be careful with there. Yes, without a doubt. That might have been an illegal shot. Didn't look intense. Oh, is he going to work an arm triangle here? Oh, he's getting leg, it leg in. 20 seconds left. No, not going to quite get it. No, it's out. It's out. Not quite get it. Nobly doing a lot of work from his back here. Doing his best to negate any kind of offense from Sam Norris. Good fight from these boys, man. Yeah, that was Scrappers, a fun one. Scrappers, without a doubt. Started off with a bang. Seriously, coming out with that straight kick to the, In the mouth. Push it, mouth. I remember when I, I hadn't seen it for so long, and it happened like back to back. Who was it? Leona Machida did it to. Supposedly, like uh, a Steven Seagal taught him, and then uh, B. Tor Belfort yeah. did it to, um, I think it was Rain. Ah, I don't even know. I'm off. But I, I, I seen it actually implemented, and it works. Yeah, Noah Bellini's was more of a push kick to the face yeah, as true. opposed to like an uh, upward okay. teeth. Yeah, 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 like yeah. an upward teeth. Oh, if you're wondering who uh, uh, Vitor did that to with that front kick, and he got it done to him by, yeah, uh, by Anderson, Anderson Silva, 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 right? And then <laughs> he's right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Yeah. And then I wonder who Vitor, uh, not Vitor, but uh, he chilled, Machida did that too. Doesn't matter. But it happened in such a short period of time, it's like, wow, it's effective. Uh, yeah. Well, it's hard to it's hard to block that unless you change like a cross block. I mean, the most guys duck their hands behind their head, and then up the middle is always open. You know, that foot just kind of slips right in past the guard, right on the chin, it's the butt. I love it. Right now, the coaches after the fight are actually showing Noah Bellini where he went wrong going for that Americana. I mean, that's what it's all about, man. They're not mincing any words. They're saying, hey, great job. But, you know, when you're in there, this is where you went wrong. I love watching stuff like that. I love being this close to watch stuff like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yeah. Serious. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to your judges scorecard for our decision. All three judges scored this contest 30-27, declaring your winner by unanimous decision, Noah Bellini. Come on over, Noah. Hey, first of all, Congratulations on the win. You know, it's never an easy fight when Sam Norris steps in the cage with you. Talk to us about the win real quick. Uh, it was a good fight. Uh, we took it more places than I have in uh, my past fights, considering I basically almost stayed on the feet the whole time. Uh, I was excited I had an opponent that was ready to come forward and put on a fight and a show. Definitely made it more fun. Um, I definitely ate way too much after weigh-ins, though. Uh, I'm not going to throw up yet, but I think 55 might be a move until I start getting paid. That's for damn sure. Oh, look, I did have one more question to you. You always come in super prepared, very calm, steely nerve. Did anything catch you by surprise tonight? Uh, no, not really. I figured he was going to come in and try to take me down the way he did. Um, he did a pretty good job of getting into my legs, but... Um, I played a pretty 
boring defense game, I guess, but you know, it works. So um, next time I'm gonna work at being a little more offensive from my defense. Um, but I don't know, we got the job done, so that's all I'm worried about. Was there anything that you want to add or anyone that you want to thank before I let you get to the locker room? Uh, I'd like to thank my family, friends, uh, my coaches, uh, Salt Valley Jiu-Jitsu, my coach's family, um, all my sponsors, uh, Rituals, CDs, Lawn Care, Hooties, The Cooler, uh, Sunny's Professional Window Cleaning, uh, Smelter, Insurance. There might be one or two I'm missing. I'm pretty fucking tired, but... Uh, thank you guys. I appreciate it. Thank you, Noah. Let's hear it one more time, ladies and gentlemen, for your winner tonight, Noah Bellini. We're going to take a quick 10-minute intermission. When we come back, we'll have the main portion of tonight's card, including all of our championship bouts and all of our professional bouts. That's coming up right after this 10-minute intermission. Wow, gentlemen, what an incredible way to get this first half of the second night kicked off. I mean, we started out with Jameis Wilson with an incredible second round submission. We've just seen scraps after scrap. Brent Heathcock, a nice, incredible KO in the first round. Jordan Trowers putting on an incredible show. You're always a big fan of him, and I am as well. Claire Schneckloth, unfortunately, coming up short against Mackenzie Stiller. Sam Norris taking up, taking the elegance of Bellini. We're just getting started, boys. What has stood out to you guys here in the first half of the show tonight? Well, those are the battles. Jordan Trower's dance moves. How could they not? There's just so much <laughs> energy when that guy steps into the cage. His opponent couldn't help but dance. That's what before I'm they called it. You know, it kind of surprised me that wasn't a split decision. I thought that we might have actually had a split decision somewhere else uh, on the card as well. We've seen some good finishes. Definitely looking forward to the second half of this card, especially Plazola and West, as well as Cooper and Padilla. Let's get the fireworks going. Yeah, obviously uh, the first uh, half of the fights, uh, the big knockout by Brent Heathcock. I mean, he just kind of put on a striking clinic against his opponent and they added up and he was able to, you know, turn him around, put him down, not once, but twice. Literally turn him around, and turn him around first with the right, yep. second time with the, the left. left. Yep, it was, it was a great first uh, half of the fights and I'm very excited. Like uh, Burma said, mission the last two fights, the co-main and the main. Uh, we got some heavy hitters, some, some tough scrappers, hometown guys, out of town guys, and that's what we like to see here in the Quad City. Without a shadow of a doubt. And as we move into the second half, we got Dakota Richards coming up against Jake Malik. He's the Cage aggression right now, the cage heavyweight or light heavyweight champion. He's the number one light heavyweight in Iowa, going up against the number one amateur middleweight in Iowa. So they're trying to consolidate, you know, who's the number one in different weight classes. But and then we got Steven Sheridan coming up against Jose Leon. And I'm really, I mean, I'm looking forward to all the rest of this. But Jimmy Padilla, Brant Cooper, the beast. Brant is, I've called a numerous, numerous, numerous of his fights, and he's he's a monster coming off some very impressive victories. And Mike uh, Plazila uh, going up against the exception. This is going to be a banger. That last one, that. That main event, I'm telling you, these guys have knockout reels, highlight reels online that you can check out. Some of the most crazy stuff I've ever seen. That's, in my opinion, it's not going to the judges. And that's here in Iowa. We're talking about, you know, some of the best knockouts coming worldwide from, from here in Iowa. And I love it. Uh, I'm pumped for the second half. I'm excited to be here with you guys. And uh, I can't wait to get this next thing kicked off. Ladies and gentlemen, for everybody who's tuned in, CageAggression.tv, if you didn't catch the first night, you're catching it tonight. Third night's gonna be as equally as epic. It's always hard. It's always hard to think about the next night when the night before. Know. You know what I'm saying? Like last night was awesome. This night's starting to be awesome. I mean, it's just gonna continue it stays to build from awesome here. So it is cage aggression MMA, ladies and gentlemen. Buckle up, stay tuned. We ain't going nowhere. This is just night number two. The party is just just getting started, and uh, the second half of the second night is gonna be equally as epic as the rest of the weekend we got going so far. Stay tuned, man. It's all coming up. Hey everybody, Jason Burmis here, and I am standing next to Mackenzie Stiller. She will be facing off against Claire Schnenkloff. Tell us how this fight's going to go, Mackenzie. 
um, basically going in there, training what I've been doing, and uh, been grappling for about 14 years now, so I'm very confident. So you're confident in that ground game. What if it's in the stand-up? Are we taking her down? Uh, I mean, the I'm going to try, but either way, I'm confident. How was the camp for this one? Easy for me. I, I walk around five pounds heavier than my weight. So, Mackenzie, we're wishing you luck. Would you like to say anything else to the fans before night two of the trifecta tomorrow? I'm going to put on the show. All right. Thank you so much, Mackenzie. We are with Claire Schlankloff. I'm probably butchering that. Claire. No, you got it pretty good. Good job. All right. Versus Mackenzie Stiller. Mm -hmm. Tell us how it's going to go tomorrow night. Uh, she's an awesome girl. It's going to be really fun. I always have a good time. How'd the camp go for this one? I'm starving to death right now. Is the weight cut the hardest part of this thing? Um, yes, it is. Yeah, I love to eat. I love to be chubby. So, um, I'm, I'm definitely going to eat a lot of food tonight and uh, get my health, my, my mojo back. So what are we looking to do? Stand up, take it to the ground, anywhere it goes. Are we getting her out of there early? What's the game plan going in? Uh, to tango and have fun at the after party afterwards. Um, I don't. I don't really. It'll be. It'll be fun. Well, Claire, we look forward to it. We wish you the best of luck. Anything else for the fans? Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for still watching after I have lost so many fights. I really appreciate you because I still love it just as much. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. For the main event of the second night of the Trivecta. I am with Mike Lazola. He'll be facing Sean Wright at 155. Mike, how'd the weight cut go? Man, it sucks always, but uh, I got there. You know, I made weight. I'm a professional, and I like to carry myself as a... And how about this camp? How did that go for you? It was a good camp, man. Uh, trained hard, made weight, feel great. All right, you're in there in the main event. Any predictions for us at all? Um, I'm just going to go out there and look for the win anyway and get it. What do you think about your opponent, Sean Wright? Uh, he's tough, man. He's a, he's a pretty good striker. Uh, you know, he's been around a long time. He's got good power in his hands. Uh, should be a good fight. All right. We wish you the best luck. Anything else you want to say to the fans? Okay, tune in tomorrow. Uh, should be a good show. Uh, appreciate all the support. And uh, check us out. All right. Thank you so much. We are in the second night of the trifecta. Standing next to me is Sean West. The main event of the evening, he'll be fighting Mike Plazola at 155. Number one, Sean, how'd the camp go? Uh, good, man. Every camp goes good. Goes good. I mean, sometimes you get your curve off in there, but uh, you got to adapt and figure it out something. Okay. Now, how do you feel about being in the main event for the second night of the trifecta, a three-night big event here in Iowa? Uh, you know, kind of, kind of used to the main event spot. You know, I mean, I've been doing it for a little while, high level fights like that, and, uh, and then you know, this is my house, so, so I'm coming. All right, tell us about your opponent. What's he gonna come out and try to do, and how are you gonna negate? Uh, and he's a hell of a fighter, German like myself. Um, so you know, uh, what's Mike Tyson say? Everybody's got a plan to get punched in the face. So, so I, I, I what I pride myself on doing is adapting. So we don't make plans; we just adapt. So then no calls, you're not taking this out in the first round with a KO, submission, nothing? If you look at my record, my, my that's usually what happens. But it is, you know, I'm here to fight and have fun and, and put, it, put, on a, uh, put on a show. But, uh, you know, like I said, if you look at the resume, that's usually what happens. But, uh, but we'll see. It's just a good fight. All right, Sean, we wish you the best of luck. Anything else you want to say to the fans? No, no, no. I'm excited for you guys because uh, I know what I come to do every time I, I step in that ring and every time I step in that cage. So I, I hope to see you guys soon. All right, thank you so much. All right, folks, welcome back to the main portion of tonight's card where we're gonna feature all of our title fights and all of our professional fights. But first, just a couple quick reminders. Number one, don't forget the best way to show support for your fighter that you're here to watch, head on over to our friends over at the Sneaker Vault. Get yourself a special event t-shirt. Tell them who's fighter, who you're here to see. You'll get their name on the back. They'll get a portion of the proceeds, and you'll get a small piece of history. That's right back there in the corner, courtesy of our friends from the Sneaker Vault and Old Town Heating and Air. Don't forget as well, once the lights go out here tonight, meet us over at the Dam View Inn for the official Cage Digression 33 Trifecta Awards presentation and after party. That's all going down after the show at the Dam View Inn. And if you're planning on being here tomorrow night, Hang on to that ticket stub. It's going to be worth an extra $5 off your ticket for tomorrow night's show, which you won't want to miss.
we are. Kai Kalsur, ready to face off against Jerry Ariola. Back from the intermission, kicking off the second phase of tonight's card as Kai makes his way to the cage. Fighting at a chosen few gym out of Madison. Looks for fun is how he got into MMA. He feels it's gonna be a fun fight tonight. What do you feel his strengths are in the MMA? Not being on the bottom. There's nothing wrong with that. Well, I'll tell you what, his nickname, Kai slash KY Jelly, is pretty hilarious. <laughs> As all of his teammates, not all, but several of them are walking in with the Kai KY Jelly shirts. Gotta stay I might up. have to get one of those myself. Gotta stay lubed up. Does it come in a hoodie? Ooh, wow. Get some, <laughs> get some early shots in. Little Nelly. And Kai looking extremely calm right now. Yeah, looking forward to this. this the first half's been absolutely amazing, as always. But here we, I mean, we're going to have Jake Malik here coming up against Dakota Richards. We got number one light heavyweight against the number one amateur middleweight. We got Brand Cooper going against Jimmy Padilla. And of course, our main event, Plazilla, Mike Plazola, going up against the exception, Sean West. I'm a big fan of Kai's mullet game coming into the cage here. Uh oh. Once again, some strong entrance music as Jerry Ariola makes his way to the cage out of One Touch Fight Team, Oak Lawn, Illinois. Met a ginger named Brett Brindle. I don't know if I can say that word. I don't know if I thought that was offensive, but whatever. Met a ginger named Brett Well, Brindle. you are a bigot, Jeff, so just well, keep yeah, going. We established that earlier. Yeah, might as well keep it consistent. <laughs> Thoughts on the matchup? He doesn't want to think about the training. It doesn't have to think. The training is done. Just get to go out there and do his thing. Because of his mentality, his experience is going to be the difference maker. Looks at the GSP and some of his entering interesting facts about his MMA career is that he's undefeated. Nothing wrong with that. Stepping into the cage. I wonder how much pressure that puts on you, man, trying to protect that undefeated record. Well, I feel there's just such a different mentality going in there with no losses, especially when you got a few scraps under your belt. The confidence is high, and it gets higher and higher and higher. And we've seen so many times in mixed martial arts, when a fighter takes that first loss, it's really a fork in the road. It you know, really there, is. there are some fighters that take that loss, they take it to heart, they learn from it, and they might, like Boss Rudin said, I will never lose again. Now, there are <laughs> other people out there that are at the top of the mountain, have it lost, take that first loss, and it's just downhill from there. So it's one of those things can affect you so high level mentally. Mentally, yes. I, I had the pleasure of interviewing Ed Suarez, the head of LFA, when we talked about Anderson Silva's first loss against Chris Weidman. He felt mentally he was indestructible because he was just destroying people. And then after taking that loss, putting his hands down and doing whatever he did to get him knocked out, he kept doing it again, so maybe he didn't learn from it. But, you know, Anderson Silva is Anderson Silva. Silva came back, you know, he had some really fun scraps. Uh, you know, the Michael Bisping scrap is a great oh, one. Oh, fun. You know, Daniel he, Cormier. He fought Daniel Cormier, you know. A, a lot of people forget in that fight, he almost knocked Daniel Cormier out yeah. in the third round. I know, I know. Ladies and gentlemen, our next bout of the evening is scheduled for five three-minute rounds for the Cage Aggression Amateur Welterweight Championship. Powered by Old Town Heating and Air. Introducing first. Fighting out of the red corner. He stands five feet, 10 inches tall and weighed in at 170 pounds. He trains with the Chosen Few Gym and is sponsored by UW Provision, Keyman Lawn Care and Total Athletic Performance. Joining us from Madison, Wisconsin, K.Y. Jelly Cal Shore. And his opponent, fighting out of the blue corner. He stands an even six feet tall and weighed in at 171 pounds. He trains with the One Touch Fight Team and Academy and is sponsored by FindYourPerfectHouse.com and Bracken Box. Joining us from McHenry, Illinois, Jerry Ariola. Jerry Ariola going up against Kai, KY Jelly. Kai Sure here in a moment. 
I'm a big fan of Kai's KY, whatever. He's rocking that mullet, dude. Got that Theo Vaughn rocking. But he got that Kentucky waterfall. A little business <laughs> up front. Party in the back. <laughs> yes, sir. As they open up here in the center of the cage. Gary Ariola opening up in the front leg kick there. Look, these are thick boys here. Yeah, some thickens. Goes for the high kick. Nice right hand there from Jerry. Yeah, Jerry seems to have muscles on top of muscles. He's shredded. Oh, easy, bud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 Jerry Ariola. And passes right into side control. But Wizard... Do Woo! Wow, look at that scramble. Kai, Kai wow. get the wizard in there, man. Right back in a top position teabagging my man Jerry. Uh, hey, this is not Halo, they're original. There's no teabagging going on. Right. These are the fighters. <laughs> I'm sorry, get a little more respect, Jeff. My apologies. What was that terrible web series? Where, they, where basically they would take the Halo things and that's all you would see is oh. the red, red versus blue. Yeah, red versus blue. Red versus blue. Terrible. How, de how dare they dis uh, grace Master Chief like that. <laughs> <laughs> but big, powerful takedown and then a heck of a reversal by Kai in there. Absolutely. Right here in a pop side position, moving into guard here. Full guard. You know, that was movement by Jerry Arolia from the bat from the bottom. I like that. Yeah. I felt like uh, Kai actually had a open uh, knee to the side, didn't take it. And uh, Jerry looking at that arm right now. Yeah, he's definitely going right here. Looks like it. He's got a hold of it. Ooh, Ooh wow. and he's, he's really pulling it. High trying to defend against That's it. That's what he had to do. That's what he had to do. Jerry had to let up off it. Jerry had a quick knee on his chest in that scramble. Kai getting to his feet right now. Oh, big shot drags him back to the ground. Had that arm trapped the entire time. Trying to get those hooks in. Looking for a choke, but the arm is in. Back up again. Back to their feet. Hands are locked around his waist. Oh, oh and nice Kai out. out there. Explosive movement gets Kai out of that position. Without a doubt. I am pressed up against the cage here. Jerry dropping some serious elbows to the spinal, to the backle area. Hopefully not to the spine, because that's an illegal strike. A hundred percent illegal. <laughs> <laughs> Two inches on each side of it. By, that is right. By definition. Last call, Kai, last call. He's looking at that arm again. I don't know if he has anything with it. I can't. It's in an awkward spot right it, now. No, he, can, he can get a neck crank out of this. Is that what he's looking for right now? Yeah, but he's got this angle. If he's over the top of the head and under the arm, if he turns to his right, it's more it, it's kind of like a neck crank shoulder lock. End of the first round. Tight one there, man. What are you guys thinking? I'm giving it to Jerry. I think Jerry won that one 10-9. Uh, slightly better offensively. He had that nice submission attempt. Kai did get out of it, but really didn't land too many big shots and didn't put uh, Jerry in too many bad positions. What's our poll looking like on this one, JB? We got Jerry at almost 59%, uh, Kai just over 41%, so Jerry the favorite so far. I'm more, I'm more impressed by this kid's beach bucket being used as a fight tub. <laughs> Without a doubt, you got the talking truck oh, yeah, on it. There's you a got the bulldozer, fire. bud. There you go. You got to keep that childhood whimsy, man. Keep that whimsy about you. Maybe he's building sound castles after the show. You I, don't know. He's I, on a flight to I, Miami. I ain't mad at him. I ain't mad at him. <laughs> but, yeah, just a great back and forth round. Uh, you know, Jerry Ariola with that huge takedown that was defended nicely by Kai, Kyle Schur, and... Uh, then, you know, you had Kai on top, and then Jerry hit a nice Kimura and turned it into a sweep and was on top, and then Kai got back on top. It was just a back-and-forth round, man. Bad scramble. Here we go. We start round two. Big Bruce Allen corner resuming of the action. Looks like they're both qualified to be in this title fight, nonetheless. Yeah, without a doubt. Right hand by Kai. Squaring off right here in the center of the cage. Ooh, Ooh, nice kick from kick. Blocked a little Another bit. Another off the top off of the head. Yeah. Those will still shake you, though. Yeah, he's lucky he was off the front forehead instead of, the, like, kind of by the ear area. Those are the ones that leave you wobbly leg like a deer on ice. Like stanky leg, yeah. Nice take down there from Kai. Look, I like the way he's kicking off the cage. He defended it the first time. He kicked off the mat on the cage and was able to get his hips back over, but Kai able to uh, go ahead and get his hips isolated and 
worked him to the ground. Good work. Well, let's see if Kai can get some offense off here. Every he's, time he's he got go, the ground. with that isolation of the arm there, very awkward position. I'm sure he's... Look. Ooh, wow, that neck crank like you're talking about. Yeah, and he's going to use it to sweep or something. If he keeps turning his hips out, he should be okay here. And this has really been the problem every time. He needs to switch to it like a rear wow. naked choke or that something. that is interesting. Every time Klauser gets on top, he ends up in an awkward position. And, you know, this is this doesn't look like it's going to be a finish for Jerry Ariel, but he certainly... He could be working for something we don't see yet. I mean... If anything, he's got to capitalize on a position. Whoa, Hopefully. wow. This is this is extremely awkward. It's very uncomfortable, obviously, for Kai. And it's just and he's not letting it go either. He's rolled him to the center of the cage, off of the uh, off the cage itself. Kai, Kai, what, what can he? Okay, no, he, Kai did the right thing. You see him start to kick his feet and, and get those hooks untangled, and now he's back to his feet and out of danger. And a good shot on the way out by Jerry Ariola, man. Going for that shot again. Good nice hips. sprawl from Ariola. Interesting that Kai wants to go back to the ground with him. As long as he keeps his, if he needs to posture up as soon as he gets him into a, a position where he can do some work. He just keeps getting caught in that uh, over-under situation that's... Exactly, he hasn't been able to get any of the work in, whether it be striking or setting up for a submission. No, he gets him to the ground and then he's kind of stalemated uh, by Jerry. Is Kai my man rocking Magnum condom shorts? <laughs> I believe he is. He is the KY Jelly, by the way. <laughs> so those, those are the ones I buy. I don't know what you guys are. Nope, nope, I'm not that guy. And I'm not going to say I'm that guy on the air. <laughs> oh, I buy them. I just don't use them. <laughs> Maybe for some water balloons later, right? <laughs> oh, we have a good time here. Okay, we put but one yeah. in, in a wagon once when we were kids, and it filled up the whole... Uh, Red Rider, I'm telling you. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> There's about 10 seconds left here in this second round. And, and once again, you know, Ariola was getting off some short uh, hands off. Kai just doesn't seem to be able to get any offense when he's got him on the ground. He's not capitalized on those positions. And this is a five-rounder. We have moved into the five-round. See, for me, it would be extremely difficult to give that round to Kai because although he did, you know, have some success with the takedowns, he was constantly being put in bad positions by Jerry Ariola. He was being turned around. Ariola looked for that arm for a little while. And, and really, I haven't seen much offense get through from Kai. Uh, other than the two takedowns, I mean, I think he did enough to win the round based off the two takedowns. Because as you did mention, Jerry had him in a precarious position, but nothing that was uh, really dangerous. And Kai was able to finish the fight on top, and he got out of those positions. So it's a... Uh, uh, Do you think a, it's a 1-1? I would, I would, that's what I would say, yeah. At this point, it would have to be. What's our poll looking like, Jimmy? We got Jerry Ariola at 63% and change with Kai coming in at 36, almost 37%. Third round about to go down. Mr. Magnum, KY, getting ready to get out there on this third round. Ooh, oh, wow. right, left hits him. him. Good, Good nice news on the inside. Knees. Man, Kai not giving up here. on those takedowns, man. Going full force with the wrestling. Scrambling, going for Kai's back here, and he think he's, well, he's about to have it. He's got one of his arms locked with his yes. leg. He's trapped that arm. That's big for Jerry. If he can get under the neck, which he was trying to do. Yeah, he's got, got to bust. here. Yes, big time. And that's the thing. Even though Jerry is doing, you know, some work on the ground, Kai is just so active and so good at getting out of these bad positions. Well, they both are. They're both doing a great job scrambling, man. I'm impressed by the conditioning of both of these guys because Jerry's a, a big guy and Kai's no little guy by any means. They both have quite a bit of muscle on them and they're still able to put up a high performance, uh, you know, almost halfway into the third round. Absolutely. I mean, all these incredible awkward positions here. Got a north-south. Yeah, I think he's gonna start trying to poke the body of Jer Yep. There you go. Just try to sap some energy out of this big ox. Back to that north-south here. Yeah, you know, when you're that heavily muscled, you think that that's the route you'd want to take. But like you said, these guys' gas tank has really shown that they have it. He's not trying some unorthodox movements here. And that's what's, you don't find that here in cage aggression, man. Cats aren't coming in here half cocked, poorly trained. No, that's what I told Mike Goodwin. Uh, I had a conversation with him, uh, I, I believe it was last week, 
and he asked about it, a kid from my gym and why he didn't debut for Caged Aggression. I said, look, man, these amateurs are professionals. Like, if you don't have Seriously. normal amateurs, like, That's how guys are here. shook when yeah. they come to your show and they realize what it's about. Like, yeah. they are, it, it, it's a mental game for them. And he's like, you know, that's a good point. And, uh, I never thought about it like that. I was like, yeah, so the kid he's talking about is a kid named Cameron Reigns, who's uh, undefeated right now, 3-0. Uh, very tough kid, so I'll be looking to get him in here soon. Well, you I mean, guys even, will be impressed with him. I even promise. night one last night, we had guys come in here. This is my first fight. It's my debut fight. They looked like they were polished, man. I mean, obviously, some work to do, but they looked amazing yeah. as amateurs in their first Ooh, fight. Catching a couple shots from Jerry right now. And that's a testament to how much the sport's evolved in 20 years. Yeah, you know. Dude, in the game since potty train. That's what I'm telling you. These kids are coming out of the womb with blue belts, man. Yeah, they're, they're, I mean, that's, what they're, that's what they're doing, man. You got, you got men training their children to be world champions already. Jerry working the body right now, Seriously making it uncomfortable for Kai. Yeah, and that's going to add up. Absolutely. Kai Only back about to his feet. 15 seconds left in the fight. Third round, though. We got this is a five rounder, bro. Oh, and he locks up an inverted oh, triangle five here. Five rounder. Sorry. 10 minutes, 10 seconds. He's got left. an inverted triangle oh, here. Oh, wow. Yes, he does. Uh, he he it off the, yeah, he needs to get it Not locked in time. a little bit better. Not Arch on his time. back, but. Wow, he is doing the business. Inverted triangle choke there, dropping some bees on the rib cage. Jerry's looking good here, man. Kai's got some work to do here in these next couple rounds. And championship rounds coming up, boys, four and five. Uh, Going to be a testament of will here with more of attrition. Will and conditioning. What separates the wheat from the chaff here in these championship rounds. And we're watching Jerry do some work right here, getting the body shots in. And now we're seeing the shots from Kai. A lot of ground scrambles in this fight. And there's some more of that work sneaking him under the armpit, into the chin. What's up, man? Friday night, watching the fights with my boys. Yeah, and what a fight to come back from the intermission on. I mean, we've had nine minutes of continuous action. There hasn't been a break in the action since the bell rang this in the first round. This is what we've come to expect here. Cage aggression will never let you down. Mike Goodwin is a beast when it comes to matchmaking. Never gonna give you up. <laughs> Rick rolling, baby. We will Rick roll your ass around <laughs> here. But you have you seen the 4K Ooh, rematch and a good level of Rick roll. Nice left hand slip from Kai. Takedown attempt, going for that single leg. And he hooks up an inverted triangle again. Right where we left off, without it. Literally right where we just left off in the end of He's the third round. He's got a chance round. to finish it here. He's got a lot of time left. He's got that triangle to get the legs locked in. I don't know if he's using that to just control position right now, but he's definitely got it, it locked like in there. It looks like position control right now. Yeah, he needs to arch his back here. Trapped, that but might now be he is it. trying to arch it, he's and he is pulling it. back. It's tough to see whether or not this is going to be it. Referee Bruce tough Allen in there to check. Tough angle. Let him know he's okay. Bruce said okay. I can't quite see that. And it looks high on his face, yeah, too. Yeah, I was going to say, I can't see that side of Kai's head if it's not cutting off. The other side of the crowd, it's not going to do anything. Yeah, as long as it's not crossed over. Still a terrible position. For yeah, I, I, I bet it's not far. Very uncomfortable. <laughs> Absolutely not. I'd like to see Jerry maybe start punch the body or something of Kai just to kind of... Just you know, right there. Yeah, wide just hammer open. Hammer fist the ribs. Yeah. And that, you know, that sort of unorthodox stuff is, is things that will win you a fight. In this this whole run. fight's been just straight unorthodox. The positions, the positions we've seen these guys in are so unorthodox and so completely awkward. Wow. Oh, he's out. His head slipped through. Yep, the triangle broke. I mean, both guys have hearts of champions. This is a hell of a... Uh, you know, I go without saying, you know. anybody who steps into the cage aggression cage, you should know that more than anybody, bro. Ooh, that one snuck under. Wow, Big hammer fist some the hammer. Side. Big hammer fist. They're the elbows. Which we're in the pros. We can do that. Isolated. He is delivering some shots. Allen keeping a look on it, taking a look, making sure these 
They're not Ryan, being to get the W right here. They're not being intelligently defended right here. Bruce Allen taking a look at the action right here. Who still hasn't given a warning to fight back. That may be coming soon. That's he it. stops it. Yes. Referee Bruce Allen calls a stop to the bout with 18 seconds left in the fourth round. And, uh, and Kai is right, right, protesting, and right, Rightfully so. He knows he wasn't in any danger. But at an amateur level, uh, accumulating that many strikes is not safe for him. Well, you know, we talked about this last that's night. That's what a, we have to worry about. It was a very similar about. situation. Chance Inspo was talking about it's not about if they're doing damage. If they're not being intelligently defended, referee has an obligation for the, for the fighter's health. Yes, yes. It's no different than the boxing glove. Like, the boxing glove, they let them take that beating over and over and over again. And you see the extensive damage that boxing has done to multiple boxers yeah, throughout the history. Yes. You know, so... Uh, nothing for this kid to be ashamed of or be upset about. He just, he was stuck in a bad spot and the punches were adding up. I mean, that's all there was and, to it. And the referee did his job. I mean, let's be honest, you know, no matter how bad those shots hurt him, there was about 25 of them unanswered. That were unanswered. unanswered. Yeah. And that's, that's, right. that's what we have to look at. Fuck <laughs> yeah. Congratulations to Jerry Ariola with a very hard fought victory against a very tough in game. Ty Cowboy. Good job. That's a tough game. to be disappointed about. We've got a strap being laid on him. Yeah, nothing for Kai to really hang his head on about. I mean, I, I, I guarantee he'll be, bound, he'll be bouncing back uh, without a doubt. Just fine. Shout out to Mike Goodwin looking clean as the Board of Health tonight. And I'll tell you what, most guys have been very uncomfortable with Ty's grounding. Yeah, yeah. It just so happened that Jerry had an answer for most everything. He was willing to be in the awkward spots. Exactly. That pressure, awkward spots. that pressure was ferocious, and not many guys are going to be able to deal with that quite like Jerry Ariola did. That, yeah, it was very impressive, without a doubt. Ladies and gentlemen, your referee, Bruce Allen, has called a stop to this contest at two minutes, 40 seconds into round four, declaring your winner by TKO and new cage aggression amateur welterweight champion, Jerry Ariola. Congratulations on the big win. You know, it wasn't too awful long ago you were making your cage aggression debut. Now here you are wearing that strap, man. Tell us how that feels. Man, I thought by winning this belt, it means something. And honestly, I don't even care about the belt, man. I just like fighting. That's all I'm here to do. Fight getting better. Well, you definitely do a great job at that. And uh, you know, you couldn't have had a tougher opponent tonight than Kai Kyle Shore. How much were you able to stick to the game plan? Man, there was no game plan. It was just, I feel good everywhere. I don't care where the fight went. You know, if we want to go all five rounds, I'll go all five rounds, you know? Well, look, this thing's yours now. Let us and the rest of the fans know what's next for Jerry. Another fight for here, baby. You already know. All right, well, look, I know you got some celebrating to do, but before I let you get to it, is there anyone you want to thank or anything else that you want to mention? Halo Exteriors, one of my main sponsors, Bracken Box, Jab Development, FindYourPerfectHouse.com, and my coaches right here, friends in the back, and everybody that came out to support me. Thank you. Couldn't do this stuff without you guys. Well, look, you get better every time you come out. We're definitely looking forward to the next one. Enjoy the win, Jerry. Let's hear it for your new cage aggression amateur welterweight champion, Jerry Ariola. It is about to go down here, ladies and gentlemen. The number one ranked light heavyweight champ. The light heavyweight champ for Cage Aggression and the ranked number one light heavyweight in Iowa is going up against the number one ranked number one amateur middleweight in Iowa, Dakota Richards and Jake Malik, as Dakota Richards makes his way into the Cage Aggression cage. Fighting out of Waller, Watertown, I'm sorry, uh, South Dakota. 
his dad and his wrestling coach has got him into MMA. Thoughts on his opponent? He's tough. He's undefeated for a reason. I'm ready for his striking in this wrestling. It's going to be a lot of fun to mix it up with someone tough like Malik. That's always good to have respect for your opponent, I must say. His feels his strengths are his boxing, his wrestling, and a couple of submissions that he has. Looks up to Rampage Jackson, John Fitch, Matt Hughes, Cowboy Cerrone. It's about to go down, ladies and gentlemen. Somebody's O has got to go. Yeah, Both no, five and zero. No losses taken by either opponent. Somebody's and, going home with the blues. Yeah, and you know, this guy, Dakota Richards, coming in saying it's going to be fun to mix it up with a guy like Jake Mellick. Uh, <laughs> bless his heart, because uh, right. I've seen Jake fight, and uh, nothing looks fun about being on the receiving end of that pressure and that performance that he brings in here time and time again. Yeah, it's, uh, Jake is absolutely no joke. But stylistically wise, it sounds like uh, Dakota Richards brings the same game plan that Jake does. You know, and, you know, boxing anybody, and wrestling. Kill or be killed is what these cats step in here with. Vermis, what are we looking like as far as our uh, our good polling game? Well, we were dead even a moment ago, but Dakota Richards actually edging out the hometown favorite, Jake Malek. Uh, 52 and change to 47 and change, but barely there. Get your votes in right now at cageaddression.tv. Jordan Trowers right behind <laughs> Jake Malek. Right up in the game, dude. Jake Mallet coming out of MMAG Summit training here in Bettendorf, Iowa. Got into MMA because of wrestling. It's gonna be an exciting fight, he says. It's in a matter of who's going to break first. He's feeling his ground and pound and his grappling are gonna be the game chance for him. Looks up to my boy, one of my favorite fighters, man, Ruthless Robbie Lawler. It's gonna be an interesting one here. Like you said, somebody's O has got to go. Coming out to my man Dominic the Heat Martin with his impressive performance last night, picking up the W after a few rough moments in that first round, slipped in that heel hook and brought the W home. Coming off of, I mean, such a testament to his integrity, his tenacity, I mean, serious back injuries, dude. This kid was facing some serious injury, pulled out the W after being tossed around ragdoll style by his opponent, and like I said, slipped in that heel hook and brought the W home as he escorts his teammate, Jake Millick to the ring as he gets ready to square off against Dakota Richards. Mr. Hinton, can you speak a little bit to the double-edged sword of being an undefeated fighter? Because on one end, you feel almost invincible. I can't lose. But obviously, in the sport of mixed martial arts, almost nobody goes without an O. So does that leave you more open to other Ladies things? Ladies and gentlemen, we'll our second. next bout of the evening is scheduled for five three-minute rounds for the Cage Aggression Amateur Middleweight Championship, powered by Elite Loyalty Management. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He stands five feet, eight inches tall, and weighed in at 184 pounds. He trains at Faferlix Martial Arts, joining us from Watertown, South Dakota, Dakota Richards. And his opponent, Fighting out of the blue corner, he stands an even six feet tall and weighed in at 195 pounds. He trains at Marty's Martial Arts and MMAG and is sponsored by Total Rejuvenation, Quad City Irish, and Nicole's Creations. Joining us from Davenport, Iowa, he's your current Cage Aggression Amateur Light Heavyweight Champion, Jake Miller. About to go down, Dick Malik, Dakota Richards. High stakes here, it's for the strap. And also, like you said, somebody's O's got to go. Yeah, and getting back to that Burmis, uh, like you were saying, you hit the nail on the head. Like, sure, you, you've beaten a whole bunch of people you haven't lost yet, but uh, as far as the ego goes, the psyche, the mental game, I mean, that can be tough on guys, you know, the fear of losing. Absolutely, and sometimes it also leaves you a little too open to other styles, you know. You've got a bunch of knockouts, you're facing a wrestler, you still feel invincible. That guy steps in, he has a different tool set, and he just kind of runs right through you. So this is a really interesting fight. Looking forward to it. I mean, and like you said, we've seen it, man. Undefeated records can get some... Oh, nice. 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 Front nice. Kick. Front kick pushes Jake. him down. Oh. Stepping into him, dropping some ones and twos on him. You can see the mean look on his face after those strikes. Yeah. Dakota did not like bit. that. Dakota did not like that. Let's go, Jake. 
Dakota walking him down, though. It's crazy. Like, I've grappled with Melick, and uh, just his top game is insane. The, the control that he has uh, is very beautiful. He does some nice Ooh, things. Nice it's a it's it's a a shot. Dropped him with the right. Oh, he might have this one early. He's trying. He's flattening him out. He's got to be careful with the, right. the punches in the back of the head. Yes, he does. He's going to the body. I yeah, like this that. This is an amateur fight. You are correct. Jake. Get that back control. Hooks the leg. He's got to walk with that big, big left, left hand. Landed. That smarted. And wow. That, and that one landed with his head against and the mat with nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. And, this, and this is where he won the, the Ooh, light heavy, the armpit. And this is where he won the light heavyweight title. He fought a teammate of mine who hadn't fought in quite some time and who's an a outstanding grappler as well. But Jake was able to get him to the ground to reverse his position and then was able to take his back and just control him from the top and the back mount and just really just beat him. Of the right over and over Doing and over a great again. job of creating that, that separation here, dropping some shots here on Dakota. Dakota's got to get out of there, man. Big Another right the gets top. through. Jake with just under a minute to work on top. Dakota looking for that neck and trying to reverse he's his side, get, get he's up. He's going to get Von Flute here if you don't be careful. If Jake can pass here, he's got a head and arm. There it is. Up, gets the side control. Almost Dakota almost let go of the head. head. Side control here. 30 seconds left here in this first round. I'd like to see him try to step over the arm for a crucifix. It kind of looked, yeah, like, he he was looking, to. You looked like he was about to isolate it right there. Oh, there you go. Another big shot. Those don't feel pleasant. Jake dropping some bombs here. This looks like a 10 8 route to me. He was dominant on the start to finish. If we're going to see had a couple knockdowns. I, I want to argue with that. You know, if you're going to give one, I think I just saw one. I mean, that was ab absolute dominance. That is round number one coming to an end here. Jake Malik coming out strong. Melik, how do you pronounce that? I'm sorry, I don't want to. Melik. Melik. I don't want him to beat me up afterwards because I messed up his name. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Richard jumped right back up. Didn't look too discouraged. Let's see what his cornermen have to tell him. I would say, hey, let's keep the distance on this guy. Let's not get too wild. Um, let's try to stay out of bad positions. And if we are going to get taken down, let's do it against the cage and try to do that cage walk up, my friend. Get it back to standing. Yeah, being stuck out in the open mat wasn't a good uh, thing for, for Dakota Richards. Uh, not not anything too damaging, but, man, he, he, he ate Ooh, some good yeah, he shots. Ate that one. He that, ate that, that one. That was, that was the most damaging punch. And the stuff from the from the top game, it looked like he ate pretty well that was, and was able to recover. Punching. For, uh, right there at the end of the round fairly quickly. Shout out. Yeah, that one, he really ate that one. That initial blow. Here we go, round two. Jake Malik and Dakota Richards. Somebody's O's got to go. Somebody's gonna be, we're gonna, have to we're gonna find a new number here. one middleweight maybe tonight or somebody's gonna stay in the same position. We'll see. Maybe we, uh, have we got a little tape game coming up. Maybe Get the scissors a, in there quick. Yes, we, have a, we, we have a draw. We saw that last night. Somebody came to the ring. Somebody came to the cage with too much tape on their feet. No, tape on them. I mean, they wrapped yeah. their entire yeah. ankles. That's a no <laughs> moss in this It was damn near a cast. It took a while to cut them in. That's, that knows how thick it was. And there we go. We've got that adjusted. Bruce tucking in the remnants, and we are ready to go for round two. Ooh. Referee Bruce Allen doing an incredible job as always. And we start round number two. Dick Malik. Dick Malik, sorry. Dakota <laughs> Richard. I, I just want to call him Malik. I get huh? it. My boy Justin Holstein in the back. He was, I would say Alec, and I would say Alex. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Alec, Alex, Alexander, yeah. whatever. <laughs> I think I could help with this whole ham hand situation. <laughs> Ooh, Ooh, good nice body shot. kick. I knew it was Alec Lorenz, but sometimes when you say it, this is like Alec. But... Leg kick from Richards. Double up on that leg kick. Richards having a lot more success in this round. Ooh, swinging with that left. Whoa! Oh, oh, right oh, Richards was a, eats that one. Oh, my a, goodness. Pack some TNT crack, in that bad that boy. Cracking sound. Richards it. ate it. 
He was setting up for something there. Head kick just misses it. Melick, another head kick attempt right there Flipped from Richards. Out. Richards gets one in on the body. Both fighters clearly respecting each other's power here in the center of the cage. Around a minute and a half left in this round. Richards with a body kick, having a lot more success finding the distance and getting out. I think it's what he has to do here. Well, right now, Malik's pushing him up against the cage. Yeah, it looks like he's setting up for another big right over the top. Good leg kick from Malik. Nice leg kick, yes. Soften that bad boy up. That, that leg kick, a little shy, kind of rolls off. Malik's still pushing forward. Yeah, Jake's got to be careful. He threw a, a, a jab lead hook, and that right hand came all the way down by his hip. Counter left. Do that. Yeah, yeah counter, counter left by Rich. Counter will sleep you. Whoa, spun him around on that one. Ooh, that one right there. That got to him. It, it, it seemed like it hit him on the hip. Didn't get him quite on yeah, the body. Yeah. Didn't get him quite on the leg. But it let him know it could get there. we got to defend against that bad boy. Seconds to go on the round. Melon with the jab gets through. Much closer round this time. Without a doubt. Guys are a little bit more gun shy here in the second round. Like kick from Richard. Ooh, yes. the, the feel out process. Jake, you got seconds to win this round. Let's go. Ooh, now he gets through Roxham. Oh, oh, wait. Roxham is well. Ten seconds. You know, that probably no, gives Melon the round. That right there, that's a, that's a big strike, backed him up, didn't put him on the ground, but obviously the most effective strike in the entire round, and that one punch is why I'm saying Jake Mellon takes that second round. Do you I agree or disagree? It. Well, I mean, he was on the offense the whole time, too. He was pushing the pace. He's dictating where the fight takes place and kept coming forward, kept throwing big, hard punches, and then connected with some good ones there at the end. That seemed to come off the top of the head a little bit, but even those, like you were talking about earlier, back of the ear, it'll mess your equilibrium up and oh, yeah. have you doing the stanky leg. Still trying to administer a little bit of assistance to the tape on the glove of Richards. Referee Bruce Allen with some cis screws, cutting some stuff up over there. And if I'm Richards' corner, I'm saying, listen, you had a lot more success in the second round. We need to do more of that. Try to circle around the cage more. You don't want to get backed up as much as you have, and you've got to get a little more offense in. Follow up that leg kick with a one-two, something like that, and get in there and go. It is go time, ladies and gentlemen. Once you step into the cage, it is go time. We've got Josh Neal over here trying to argue with me about who's winning this fight. El Tigre! <laughs> El Tigre! <laughs> <laughs> what, did, what did he have it at? Did he have it he's one got one? It, yeah, he's got it 1-1. One, one. You know, again, I think it was that one shot that put Melik over the top. But like you said, he was also on the offense most of the time. That's why I give it 2-0 to Melik, because the first round, absolute domination. Second round, controlled the pace, dictated the fight. Nice counter. Second round, again, much better for Richards, but none of those strikes pushed him back. Right. Like Melik's one strike that I thought that was the most dominant strike. Right. I didn't think anything really hurt him. No. And, and the other thing is that... Um, Richards hadn't put, put anything but one strike together. Right. You know, he's not coming in with a one-two leg kick. A leg kick, one-two over the and, top. And they both landed a couple uh, leg kicks. Melick maybe had a, a couple more. So, I mean, I just think Melick's in complete control of this fight at the moment. I agree. Scramble. Especially right now, on top. Absolutely. Scramble lands Melick in the guard. Trying to get the knee now inside position. Yeah, here. he's got a bump knee choke right here. He can finish the fight. Nope, oh, he's off it. He's lucky Richard can't him off the head. I mean, that's such a dangerous position. It's wild Ooh. that the guys hang on to that head when the guard is passed. You've got to let that go. You have to know right away that that's got to be let go. About one minute, 40 seconds here in round number three. Jake Mellick, Dakota Richards here, scrapping. Looking for a head and arm check, possibly. He's trying to shove that far side elbow up. Ooh, yeah. Elbow into the body right there from the side. And again, I would love to see Mel just reach that knee up and just get one of the body, man. One of the, it's right there. It's a little high right just now to be able to yeah, do just it. Poke it in there. Yeah. Or well, right now, take that knee and try to step onto his shoulder. 
get that uh get that left arm more free if you watch the fight against me and jeremy anderson i did that too i was on top of like a half guard i just smacked him i think that's so underutilized it, man. it is because if you catch them at the right time while they're breathing I mean, you're disrupting everything that they got going. They can't breathe, and if, can't if you fight. go back to, you know, the beginning of the John Jones dominance, that was one of the biggest moves he ever did was get into that crucifix. I mean, when Matt Hamill won that fight, yeah. Yeah, his yeah. ribs broke. Yeah. He had nowhere to go. That was his only L, but yeah, that was... Well, I don't Ooh. call that an L. No, I know. But technically, <laughs> you know, on paper. Well, that's, yes, the joke L, right? Yeah. <laughs> the pseudo L. He can even posture up, put some pressure on his back, and land some knees to the body here. Yeah, exactly. It's wide open right Under there. Under 30 okay, seconds wide left. Open. He's going to get a hook in here at least. Dakota defends by giving up his Ooh. Top position. Jake raining him down. Does he have enough time? 15 seconds left. Flat is about 10 seconds to go. One, two, three, Ooh, four, wow. five, six, oh, seven. Oh, wow. Eight, Referees. Nine, ten, right there. Four, 13, 13. That was the bell. That was the bell. Bell? Bruce, Bruce Allen looking at it. Okay. Bruce, Bruce Allen saying Bruce, it was because of the bell. Yeah, Bruce looked like he was confused. If that went five like, more Whoa. seconds, that would have been grand opening, grand closing right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. It's even two more seconds. It looked yeah. like he was getting ready to, to pull the right plug there. on that one. Well, I'm so very anxious to see how this next round here starts out because Jake is really starting to find his groove here. And we'll see if Dakota has anything for him. So far, no answer. Not like a trying, I just don't think he has uh, the skill set to deal with Jake's pressure. Well, and as we get into now, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, to deal with Jake's pressure, and that's what it is. The kid's always coming forward, and he's going to punch you, he's going to kick you, or he's going to beat you up on the ground. He's going to do what he's got to do. And we are now moving into these championship rounds, so here we are separating the wheat from the chaff. Because... And we're watching some of that work right now in yes. the last 10 seconds, and it was so close. Bruce Allen taking a huge look right there, and the bell saves him. Zach Morris Zach, in the I was building. Getting ready to say. <laughs> say Ace, Ace, what up, Screech? Hey, hey. <laughs> R.I.P. Screech, man. Yeah. Guy died in prison or something, didn't you? No, no, he died no. of quick acting cancer. Oh, yeah. This is last year, maybe maybe a year and a half ago. My buddy actually filmed his last celebrity boxing match. Uh, just was that when he beat up Horshack? No. <laughs> Um, it was actually, you know, you know, it was the donut guy that got the bagel guy that went famous. He was actually supposed to be in the celebrity boxing match. That's and hilarious. the bagel guy backed out, Screech stepped in, and it was just a cluster mess. I bet. I can only imagine. As we bring in round number four here. Big Dick Mellick. Attempt by Richards, but again, he's, he's swinging it air. He's not getting close. He's not setting those shots up. Here's a leg kick. Chicken me like chicken, chucking me like one, ain't putting out nothing but air. Yeah. Put out that my yanky run, yanky rim that night. Oh, sorry, a little back loop bump and speak. Yeah, a little humor here in case you crash it. Ooh, Ooh right nice big right hand. Another kick from Mellick down below. Yeah, I'd like to see those leg kicks a little bit lower. I'm sure that thigh's pretty bruised up. Oh, that was a telegraph yeah. shot there. Another shot, that one hits the knee. Here's those championship rounds, though, man. This is the testament to who's got the gas tank. Yeah, the fight can be won in these, in these next two minutes. Man, fatigue makes cowards out of men, and we're not seeing it so far. These guys both seem to be... Oh, there goes the mouthpiece. We're going to get that right back in for him. Bruce Allen saw that on top of it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. And, and you know what? He's, he's having that mouthpiece come out again. He's playing down on the wrong he's, way. He's, he's, I was going to mention it earlier in the first round. He was uh, he was playing with it like the like the guy was earlier. Ready to get his jaw broke. Like Cody Baker was earlier. Yeah. yeah. And the thing is, I, I I get why they do it because those big bulky mouth guards are uncomfortable. It's hard to breathe. But they make they make minimalist mouth guards that are just as good that you can talk. Good as leg kick. Ken said as that big. last night, bro. I mean, Ken made that comment last uh, night. Someone was doing with a hand on his mouth. Or the yeah. Thing out of his mouth. He's like, dude, there are minimalist mouthpieces out there. And they're fantastic. I got two of them. I mean, sure fit. You know, as Check a guy that's one. never stepped in the cage and had to put on that bulky mouth guard, but watching it, you know, obviously the lips come out. Uh huh. 
when you first do that, is it tougher to breathe? Is it tougher to adjust? Well, it's taking up your mouth space, too. It's like, uh, so before when my nose was really broken, man, I couldn't breathe out of my nose. I had to breathe out of my mouth. So, like, that big mouth oh, yeah. piece, you know, it's taken up. It's just uncomfortable. Cumbersome, yeah. Yeah. It's messing with your, your psyche, your mentality, and everything. You can't breathe. That freaks you out. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. If you're not able to get oxygen, that's something that freaks you out, whether you're in the cage or not, man. Well, not just, being able to breathe is something that puts that you That obnoxious, panic. you know, giant thing in your mouth is just something to take your focus off the fire. Yeah. Better <laughs> time. Man can't breathe. You know, that was more of an even round, never went yeah. down to the ground. Yeah. Um, maybe you could give that to Dakota Richards. I think that's a stretch. He, lo I, he looked a little bit fresher as far as action-wise. Uh, it looked like Malik was just looking to be busy. Like, he didn't throw as much as he did, I guess, the first three three rounds. I, it seems like after those first three rounds of really putting it out there, the way conservative on that last yeah. that round right there, ready, ready to really put it down in this fifth and final round. It could be just trying, knowing that he got the first three rounds, could just be trying to skate right? through. Absolutely. He might be gassed, he might be hurt, you know, we don't know. And that's well, the I beautiful thing about fighting is you just don't know. Bare, I think bare minimum right now, if you look at the scorecards, you got three to one Melek. Yeah. Bare minimum, but that first round very well could have been yeah, a 10-8 on one or two scorecards. Correct. So again, if I'm in that corner of Richards, it's you need the finish. You've got to get the submission. You've got to get the KO. Now's the time to work. And he looks pretty fresh still. I mean, fifth and final round. They definitely look fresh. I don't see a lot of labored breathing, and clearly conditioning is not an issue right now. Leg kick for here from Melek as he opened up this fifth round. Return by Richards. Return, absolutely. Double by Richards. Ooh, a little Looks stutter high kick. Yeah, a little stutter step switch kick. Side kick there, yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Melek looking really, really smooth right now. Very loose, good head movement. Trying to pull out the fancy stuff here. Yeah, this fifth round, he looks basically like he did the first three. Right. Oh, a there's a left. Very nice. Got through. Looking very confident right now. Another leg kick. And, and I said before, you know, it's on Richards right now to bring the fight to him and win this fight because he needs a finish. Yeah, it's his to lose right now, man. Yeah, he needs to put a combo together. Ooh, good Ooh, fight gets kick. through. Another left. Ooh. Backs him up against the cage. Richards recovers. Back to the center of the cage. Another left raises. Body shot from Richards. Ooh. Left hand from Richards sneaks through. Yeah, he needs to put the pressure on. He needs to back Jacob. Yeah, this is this is his time to put it on. He's got a minute and 30 seconds left. Inside leg kick right there from Richard. Takes a leg kick. Yep. Ooh, Ooh, front kick. To the gut. Follows up with another one. Malik only almost uh, projecting that one with his facial features, though. Almost had that. I'm throwing the, the kick in your face <laughs> look. Do something about it. Yeah, Richard's calling corner, calling for him to forward, forward, forward. They need, him. They need him to get moving. Yeah, outside leg again from Malik. Under one minute. Richard's not doing enough here, man, in this final round. Another front kick from Malik, keeping him in distance. I could be wrong, man. And, and that's the thing with Malik, you know, he has mixed it up. He's got the leg kick, he's got the front kick, he's got the one, two. You know, he's got the straight and the hook. Um, you know, very few times are you seeing him just kind of toss one out unless it's a feint. Not thought there like that. That's a feint, another feint. There's a feint of a leg kick, not really there. Richardson gets through with another strike. There's a body strike. Yeah, Richard's just not doing enough to mitigate the damage that Jake's done so far in this fight. Jake's Especially in this fifth and final round with 15 seconds left to go. Melek's doing a good job of threatening with all sorts of things. Like Burmas was just mentioning, the feints, man. You don't know if those strikes are coming or not. So by him doing that, picking his foot up, picking his hand up, dropping his hand, switching his head, all of that. You don't know what's coming off of that. Being predictably unpredictable as that calls an end to the fifth and final round. Dakota Richards and Jake Melek. It goes to the judges, ladies and gentlemen.
How did that uh, pole tighten up over the course of the fight there, Jamie? You know, it was close all the way through, but Jake Mellon edging it out with uh, 53% and change. I would say the fans got that one right. I would be very, very shocked if anybody had it even close. Um, you know, I think that's four or five rounds yeah. to none. Jake Mellick in a dominating performance. With a very strong following here in his local hometown crowd, Jake Mellick possibly picking up the W, but we will see. We never know what these judges are looking at. As we say all the time, don't let it go to the judges because you never know what they smoke at time. You never know what they're seeing, I'm sorry. As we keep it moving right here, Dakota Richards, Jake Malik, we're about to go to the judges to see what's going on, but we got Steve and Sharon and then Jose Leon coming up here after this as we creep ever so closely to our co-main and main event of the evening for night number two of Cage Aggression. Trifecta, baby. We're getting it how we live it right here, making history. Nobody does it like Cage Aggression, I tell you that. See some incredible fights tonight, man. Incredible fight. Some left to go too. <laughs> and plenty left to go, without a doubt. Yeah, it's hard to believe we still have four fights left on this card. It's been packed top to bottom. Here comes the belt. Mike Goodwin in there making the handshakes. And we're about to get the official decision from one Jason Barr. I think Jason's about ready to or Jake's about ready to double up with his drip. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to our judges' scorecard for our decision. Our judges scored this contest 50-45, 50-45, and 50-44, declaring your winner by unanimous decision and new Caged Aggression Amateur Middleweight Champion, Jake Mellon! Come on over, Jake. Hey, first of all, man, congratulations on the win. None of that looked easy tonight. I'll tell you, you, I, you know, we all know you come in here every single time looking for that finish. What was going through your mind as we started hitting those championship rounds? Man, hats off to Dakota. That's one tough guy. We fought really hard through the whole fight. He hit me with a couple shots. I got him with a couple, but he kept coming at me. I kept going back at him, so hats off to him. That's one tough guy. Number one in Iowa versus number one in Iowa, man. Two belts now. Tell us what this means to you, Jake. It means the world, man. A lot of hard work went into this one. I want to thank all my training partners at MMAG, Summit, Marty's Martial Arts. I want to thank all my friends and family for coming out and supporting me every time. I love you guys so much. And I want to thank my parents because they've been with me this whole journey, supporting me throughout. I love you guys. Thank you. Hey, it's a, it's a, it's not a common thing to see a dual weight class champ. What's around the corner? What's next? Two belts to defend now, Jake. Think about that. I think I'm gonna take some time, take some time off. But uh, this won't be the last time you see me, guys. So. We're looking forward to the next. I want to see if there's anything you want to add to this before you get to the celebration. After party at the office. Let's go. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. One more time for your current Cage Aggression Amateur Light Heavyweight Champ and your new Cage Aggression Amateur Middleweight Champion, Jake Mellick. And we are back. Steven Sheridan versus Jose Leon coming up next. Steven Sheridan about to make his way down the aisle. I'm gonna throw it to my man, Jeffrey Wilson. He's going up against Jose Leon, my friend. And Steven Sheridan, we saw him not too long ago, as uh, Tyler DeHaven made his professional debut against Steven Sheridan. Unfortunately, Steven did not pick up the W there. But here he is, trying to get back into the win column right here. Fighting out of Priscilla's Training Center in Des Moines, Iowa. That was channel surfing, he says. Stopped on the tough finale for it. Griffin, Stephen Bonner. Fell in love right there. If you're going to fall in love with the sport, that's one to fall in love with. Very excited about his opponent. And he knows his opponent will bring it. 
two of his strengths are going to be his kicks and his grappling. He's always looked up to Iowa fighters, Pat Miller, Josh Deere, Jeremy Stevens. Some interesting things about his career, he took a long time off due to his personal battle with alcoholism and drug abuse. Turned my life around and got back into the gym at the age of 30. Good for him, man. Absolutely, I love hearing stuff like that, man. Mixed martial arts probably saved my life as well. And we hear that, we talked about it last night. With Not Dan, necessarily from drug and alcohol abuse, no, but, but man, I was, I was making very poor decisions. I grew up wrestling. Uh, Ultimate Fighter was what got me too, man. The very first one. Um, and I was like, they pay people to do this? And I was instantly hooked. And then uh, it didn't come around in my area until I was almost, I was like 23 or something like that. So I wasn't able to start till then. But man, as, uh, I have not stopped since then. Obviously, I mean, yeah. still going hard. Yeah, 30, I'm 36 years old, and I mean, well, I just love it. It's been beautiful, man, how it's been something that can refocus people's energy into something more positive. It's beautiful. I love it. And I made so many friends. I mean, I met you guys because, you know That's what I'm saying? Like, literally. I have family because of mixed martial arts. I, uh, you know, I value myself and my body and what I put into it. And, like, you know, I teach that to my children and stuff. It's just, this is the greatest sport ever. And it's uh, such a fun, tight knit community. It is. And it's. You hear those stories, too. It's about not only making those human relationships, but improving on so many aspects of your life. Right. And, that, and it all comes down in here. Can you have that mental focus? How much physicality are you going to put in? Where are you after 15 minutes and two more rounds to go? Right. Well, and as we've often talked about, the MMA game, and I've never jumped in there, I've done a little training, but never competed. It's never, it's, the training and everything culminates inside the cage externally, but it's always an internal battle. Absolutely. You're disciplined. It's You're you versus you. Yes, without a doubt, man. Can, we, can you be disciplined? Can you make the way? Can you eat? Can you train the way you need to? And be coachable, like, like we talked about last night with the champ, Jens Bovers. Jose Leon stepping into the cage at a one-touch fight team. Lifelong dream ever since he was three years old. Joined Kung Fu, started doing Kung Fu at eight years old. Pro debut on Bellator at 23. Feel this is a great matchup, great promotion, and he will make a statement. He knows he has a big heart and exciting fight style. Looks up to Emmanuel Matador Sanchez. Looking forward to this one, man. Again, a Bellator veteran. We're going to see an LFA veteran later. This is what we bring here to Cage Aggression, man. No slouches, no chumps, no punk in anybody's DNA here, man. We bring the best here. Iron sharpens iron here. Iron here, right here in Cage Aggression. Ever so much closer to our co-main and main event. We got a few left, but here we are. Steven Sheridan, Jose Leon. About ready to get on the good foot and do the bad thing and put on an incredible show. And Leon is hyping it up, dancing it up, and dancing right into that cage He's got right the pork now. chop. He's got the pork <laughs> chop in him. You can't go wrong with that, bro. Oh, there's little style points that are in the cage right there. <laughs> a lot of shoulder movement. Loving it. Ladies and gentlemen, our next bout of the evening is scheduled for three five-minute rounds in the Cage Aggression Professional Flyweight Division, powered by Iowa Auto Club West. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He stands 5 feet 11 inches tall and weighed in at 130 pounds. He trains with Porcelli's Training Center and is sponsored by Central States Construction and Painting United Trades Group superior windows and siding, and destination tattoo and piercing. Joining us from Des Moines, Iowa, Stephen the Sniper Sheridan! And his opponent, fighting out of the blue corner. He stands five feet, five inches tall, and weighed in at 130 pounds. He trains with One Touch Fight Team and Academy, and is sponsored by Duck A Diet Meal Prep. Lad Flex Posture Correction, Cool Auto Tints, Addie's Crafts, Condemned Lab and Supplements, and Roll 77 MMA. Joining us from Huntley, Illinois, Jose Leon. Both these fighters with their game face on. Jose Leon over there, ready to get after it. Feeling himself. See how it plays out here as we get ready. Steven Sheridan, the sniper, Jose Leon. Here we go. 
Yeah, you guys might not want to blink on this one. Nah. Sheridan's got some serious link advantage on him. We'll see if he can take advantage of that, but Jose is definitely ready to scrap. Yeah, he looks like he's balled up ready to go. Coiled up like a spring. Both guys with a lot of movement on the feet right now. Neither of them too eager to, to engage right here in this first round. Like other fights we've seen, people have just come out swinging. Sheridan's a little bit more flat foot. They still got some movement there, getting in and out of the pocket. I like to see him tuck that chin a little bit. It is kind of out there, isn't he's, it? Yeah, he's just got his head up. You know what? Talk Hands about down. that importance. A lot of people don't understand that. If you're not tucking that chin and you just have it slightly up, right at that 45 degree angle, you don't want to hit that Ooh. 90. No, no, you're just you're exposing more target area. I mean, get your chin down behind your shoulders. Nice. Protection from hooks and roll and nice stuff. Nice leg and kick. Oh my God, Jose had him up against the cage, dropping some yeah. nice shots on him. So we got knees and, and uh, elbows to the head and body in these fights. We're professionals here, so <laughs> you got to be careful with those. The variety of and strikes, that chin man. is up there, man. Wow, there he goes. It is like there. there. And you know what? The hands aren't super high either. No, I mean, that's what I'm saying. They're not super low either, but they're not up right around his head. And like you said, you can see the difference right now. Look at the own. He's got that chin tucked. Yep. Shoulders up. He ducked down behind the shield. Hands behind are right around shield. that yeah. chin and nose as they're moving. Yep. He moves good too. He's light on his feet. Nice leg kicks from Leon. You definitely want to implement Switching some stances. of those. Slow him down. Slow down the taller, bigger guy. Uh oh. He's going to start being vocal here. I think he's feeling it. And Leon is coming in on the, as the uh, slight favorite at 52 and change. And Sheridan just looks real herky jerky, real uneasy. Leon's definitely coming out swinging, man. He's deep into the first round right now. A lot of time left. Locked. A lot of time. I don't know, Leon, just by the look of him, reminds me of Jose Aldo. Yeah. Size and everything. Jose Aldo. Oh, that's it. That is. I'm telling you right now. Clock is ticking, baby. Clock is ticking. Big leg kick for Leon. Drop Sheridan. Yeah, he, and Leon is on him like stank on. Yeesh, yeesh. I don't know that Sheridan's going to be able to get up. I think that last kick really, really hurt that leg. Well, you he, see the bruise forming. He took another one earlier in the first, I mean, earlier in this round, too. Same spot, same area. And those are small bones, small muscles. Damage uh, accumulates quickly with those low leg kicks like that. Yeah. And he's a longer fighter. You know, not as much muscle mass right there. Um, I'm going to be... I'm going to be surprised to see Look, what you happens see the bruise backs all, up. You see the bruising already on it, too. Oh, yeah. That thing's going to be purple tomorrow. Well, and depending on where that landed, man, you got that, I think it's called the perineal coronal nerve right there, where you just can't stand on it. When you get it drilled like that, it just you just can't stand on it anymore. And that was just one shot. Well, that, and, and then the blood formulates in those small muscles, and it has nowhere to go. You know, your thigh is a bigger area, yes. so it's able to absorb that, that shock, that impact, uh, a lot more extensively than those lower little muscles down by the ankle. It's bad. I mean, I've hurt myself low leg kicking people by it being checked, like in training oh, yeah. and stuff. Yeah, I mean, with shin guards on. Ooh, big oh, really? shot from the top. Possible heel hook if he can get a, some sort of reap. Yeah, I don't know if he's gonna. Yeah, that was an option, but Leon is just all over him here. All right. Minute and 15 seconds left. Sheridan trying to make his way back to his feet. He could possibly get him down here. I don't know if. Jose has uh, amazing wrestling skills or not, but he's not doing anything to defend this takedown other than kind of sprawling. He needs to kind of stuff the head, cross face, try to get that leg free, attack the elbow, get it slide up his back, do something other than let him hang out on, on his hips. That seems to be what's happening right now. Yeah, because now of his knees are on the mat. See, I'm telling you. Sheridan. Getting, getting pushed to yeah, gets him pushed to the cage or something. He's got nowhere to go. Now he's on the bottom. Forty seconds left. Sheridan needs to try to throw some strikes to the head here. Come up with him, do some damage to the body or the head on the way up. Maybe try to get him back to the mat. But yeah, he's another elbow, third elbow. He snuck in this exchange right here. Fourth elbow. He's gonna get do cut something up. to switch it up here and steal this round. I don't know if it's a ten eight, but he's definitely not winning this round. I wouldn't say it's a ten eight, but very convincing Jose Leon round. Without a doubt. But you know what? Big victory for him to get back to his feet. Both fighters and, absolutely back and, to the and, and take that. And this might be where he wins the fight. Right. In the second round, if he can implement some sort of grappling game, game plan against Jose Leon, he might have a chance to steal the second and third round and finish this fight. Even. He's showing some holes right now. Yeah. 
I'm telling you, just the, just the awkwardness of Jose Leo when Sheridan was in on his legs makes me believe that his grappling may not be a very superior attribute that he has in this game. Yeah, yeah, that might be the hole in his game that he needs to uh, that Jose needs to exploit. our way into the next round. Serena K letting us know, the lovely Serena K letting us know what round we are rolling into. And that would be round two. Wham, so there it is. Leg kick. Chopped him up one. right from underneath him right there, dropped him. Watching a lot of the work. Oh, oh, there. On top. Here's another leg kick. That was, that was the one that dropped him. Go round two. Round two. Round two. Fight. Check those kicks, Steve. Hands up. Hands up. You work your double Let's go. Down right here. Let's start this second round. Fight is still all the way out there. And right look, you look at that high kick right there. Not a fighter with a blink disadvantage going to like this like that. Good for him. Jordan did that earlier. It's like, damn, bro. Uh, you know, Sheridan. Sheridan trying to set up for that Closing Superman. some distance. Going for that leg again. Just missed it, too. Yeah, it seems like Sheridan's recovered from that time that it dropped him. I know it hurts, going to hurt tomorrow, but oh, yeah. it's not slowing him down here, at least right now. Yeah, he's got a, there's that head straight up like we were talking about right there. Ooh, good, good body, body kick right there. Up. Man. Inside leg kick. Those are bringing some levels to his offense here. There it was. Fight is right here in the center of the cage, aggressive cage. And Sheridan did a really good job of listening to his coaches. They literally yep. called it out. They said one, two leg kick, and he gave it to him. Yep. You know, setting stuff up. Whoa. Ooh. Man, that low kick. Oh, yeah. He is He's really finding a home with that bad boy. Sheridan don't like those, and he can't take too many more of those. I mean, three more of them is almost. Oh, he caught him on the head on that one. Ooh, There's another there one. Is. Just oh, lighting yeah. him up, dude. Oh, lighting him up with that lower leg kick. And he's still leading with that leg. I, that's what, yeah. He hasn't switched his stance. There he is. A little bit. There's the switch. <laughs> Maybe you're so good at that, dude. Oh, well, well dude, I can't believe he's standing up for that, that last one. He's taking those shots. He's got to get another one. to get a lottery ticket to just mess around with JB over here. He's <laughs> calling stuff before it happens. Well, you know, I've never been kicked in the leg like that, but I'd imagine after one or two times, I'm putting it as my uh, not so lead is, leg. But it, he's still doing it. He has, he's got he, that leg right man, out there. Man, you can see the welts on that thing. Look at it. Whoa, look at the hematomas on the front of his shin. About halfway through this second round right now. Jose on the move, man. Doing a great job of being an elusive, yeah, hard target, man. Sheridan's shin is gnarly. Look at that bad boy. That is gangly. Oh, that is really Yeah, that's not going to be fun tomorrow. <laughs> no, it is not. Forget about that bruise I was talking about. Yeah, yeah. What Things a, are going to look a lot different. He's what got a, a warrior, smurf, He's got a smurf village growing on the front of his leg there. Definitely. The fungus is among us. <laughs> He's still game, though. He did definitely switch his stance and isn't quite lead with that leg right now, but he's still in the mix, man, walking down Jose. Yeah, I mean, forget about Yabba Dabba's house of glass. He's got the magic mushrooms on his shin. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Ooh, another front kick there by Leon. Leon doing a great job of just switching up his offense, man. Again, being predictably unpredictable. You know, you never know where he's coming from. You know, I'd like to see him slide that uppercut in a little more. I realize he has to close the distance, but again, that chin is so far out there. Ooh, that man. connects. That could be the end of the fight. Wow, dude. That's large. 
I'm just surprised Sheridan hasn't tried to like work into the cage and, and maybe implement some sort of takedown or I'm tie surprised him up. Leon's not lighting that leg up, dude. Seeing that hematoma on his left leg, if, like you said, JB, two more three shots of that, and it is a wrap, son. I, I agree, but again, just like he said, you know, Sheridan had some success at the end of the first round on the ground. I haven't seen one shot, and even with that one setup, the one-two kick, there was no setup into a takedown. No, and like uh, Jose. Keeps, he keeps coming forward hard in. If Sheridan would just step forward and just get some sort of clinch to tie him up, he could we'll change the this. game. And Ooh. right now, Kyle. with less than a minute to go, it looks like another Leon round, yeah. and that's going to put him in an awkward spot in the third round. It makes you, you got to get the finish. Definitely. Yeah, definitely puts him in a precarious position where he's, he's got to come out strong here in this third and final round. Leon catches him with the left. Good body kick by Sheridan. Good body kick by Sheridan for sure. Probably about the best strike he's landed. I would love to see him do more of that from the outside, man. Look yeah, he's just, he just seems gun shy. He's not, he's letting Leon come in on him. He's not throwing anything in his face to, to make him think about coming in. He's well, he's doing that go. straight left coming in right there. He's doing a good, good job of, like I said, still Ooh, big right over the top. And then that's Leon over. inside. Oh, wow, that's Leon a is a monster. You know, at the end of the round, then he finally gets a clinch and Sheridan's doing a great job of playing off that that leg is not on fire right but now. But again, going for that clinch with 30 seconds, 20 seconds, 10 seconds to go when you had so much success, you're really, your only success in the first round with that grappling, you want to make that the main part of your game. Yeah, you should try to get after it a little bit earlier in the round. Try to do some damage, try to catch a submission, man, finish. That's, and he's going to need the finish, that's, period. That's all he can do at this point. And, you know, I, I assume Leon's calling her saying, hey, more of the same. Go for that lower leg. It's really messed up. We want to see that kick. Don't get too wild. Don't let him get the shot on you. And stay elusive. Right there, he sneaks that right in. There's that leg kick again. See, and that's because Sheridan, Sheridan's not reacting properly to Leon's strikes. He's, he's freezing. He kind of did a double stutter back step and then just got blasted with a leg kick if you would throw a punch out in Leon's face he's not going to come in that hard he did catch him with that one corner court uh I'm sorry counter uh shot but again it was about one minute to go didn't have a lot of follow-up yeah the clinch but didn't do much with it do that more and you, <laughs> you might be on to something here we are third and final hey. round Leg kick gets through. Leon closes the distance. Sheridan with the clinch. Gets him against over the, the cage. cage. That's nice. Corner wants him to stay on him, which is probably something he should do. Keep backing him up. Try to get his back against the cage. Sheridan trying to take the center of the cage, but not much offense there. And now Leon's coming forward. Oh, Leon coming forward with a left right that miss. As we are in the third and final round here, Sheridan's back up against oh, the wall. Big nice head big kick leg kick. Throw. Caught a little wow. bit of a glove, but man, yeah, he ate some of that. Crowd's calling for that leg. I think they see it way out there, too. Still yeah. leading with it, right? And, yeah. Which Still is a, te a testament to this dude, dude's toughness, man. I mean, he's got bumps on bones. He's got bumps over on the side of his knee. Yikes. Still be leading, man. That's crazy. Jeffrey, I'll tell you, like a couple of guys in the gym, uh, toughness should not be your number one attribute. <laughs> That's not always a good guy. No, you no. You don't want to be the <laughs> toughest guy in the gym. Yeah, huh? yeah. <laughs> If that's all you're bringing to the table, no, no, you know no, what I mean? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. But Sheridan finally gets a takedown here in the third round. He needs to do something with it. He doesn't have a whole lot of time left. But a submission wins him the fight, so. There he is. Sheridan with Jose up against the cage here. He's got his hands locked. He needs to lift and pop his hips. A little under three minutes here. I mean, he's in there deep on them hips. Suck his legs out. Yeah, one explosive motion, yes. pull forward, right? Yeah. That's, what you, that's what he should be 
trying for. He's just got to be careful. With... This is an amateur, and he just dropped a little elbow on his head. No, though. these are pros. These are pros? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh... Oh, that's right. It was five rounds because it's going to be five rounds. Yeah, he was just lifting with his arms when he was in there on the hips. He wasn't popping his hips in there with it. He wasn't getting no power going. He was just trying to use his arms instead of his whole body. And, and right now, it kind of looks like he's going for that single. It's not quite under the knee enough. He doesn't have the leverage. Leon doing a good good job. Here he's going. his head, striking with elbows. I mean, this is really a stalemate, stalemate for him right now. Yeah, yeah. Is this, is this something the referee could come in and separate him, or...? I mean, they're still working. I think he's working and strikes are happening. Yeah, I mean, that's true. That's true. If this were to go on for like two minutes straight, maybe. I've taken a close look at it, but honestly, I'm seeing Leon get off more of the offense right now up against the cage. Yeah, because Sheridan is standing there with his uh, hands clasped around the legs, not getting the takedown, not doing any damage. I mean, foot stomping, do something, smash his ankle, uh, hit, <laughs> hit something. The foot stomp. Oh. Gotta love the old foot stomp, dude. And it at least breaks up the monotony and gets him thinking, like, nobody likes their toes to be smashed no. on. And the last thing you think is something like that's coming, so be predictably unpredictable. The guy in the crowd just yelled, stand him up. Yep. And I, I think they're standing. They are standing. You mean separate, son. <laughs> One minute left here in this third and final round. Yeah, at this point, I don't think I'd argue with him. Nope, well, then, then Leon sneaks in the shot, and the ref backs off. Get that, gets that elbow in. Third and trying to negate that right now. Yeah, but this Referee's is... Referee's letting him know you guys yep. got to do something. But. Yep. Tell him to mix it up. Finally gets it to the ground. Man, how tough is Jose to get to the ground there, man? That's The hard work paid off, but he don't have a whole lot of time not, to not do anything time. with it. Not only that, but it almost looks like he's got the knee underneath. He's getting an elbow in. Is he going to get any offense on it, or is Leone either going to get back up, or is he just going to keep striking him right there? That's Something what he should here. do is just keep landing those short elbows to the ear. I mean... The ear and head area. Bro. 20 seconds. Sheridan, do something, bro. 15. You know, it's kind of the story of the fight. You know, this is where he needed to be, but there was just nowhere to go with it. If he'd have done this, this what he did right here, the, Earlier. Pre, the, two, the first two rounds, yeah. he'd have won the fight. Day, day, day late dollar struck. Ooh, wow. Jose dropping some, attempted to drop some bombs there. Good fight, though. Good yeah. scrap, man. Styles make fights once again, man. Just two different styles that... Made for a fairly interesting fight, but it looks like Jose pulled it out on this one. What do you say, JB? What yeah. the polls saying? The polls had it at uh, almost 58% for uh, Leon, and I, I really think that Jose ran away with it all three rounds, obviously. Um, you know, could have been more of an exciting fight, but Steven Sheridan really had to utilize that ground game, and he just was never able to get to that next level. He was able to get him against the cage, maybe get a little uncomfortable, but even then, Leon was landing elbows, striking occasionally, and there was just really no offense from Steven Sheridan. No, there's more offense from the bottom of, uh, you know, Jose Leon than there was from the top game of, game of Steven yeah, Sheridan. Yeah, without a doubt. Without and, that's, a doubt. and that's just why it goes to show you it's important to train all aspects of mixed martial arts. Man, if something's not working, you got to be able to do something else. And, uh, you know, he was able to get him to the ground, but it took him forever and wasn't able to do really anything with it. So, I mean, yeah, the days of, like, the single-dimensional fighters, your, remember your early MMA, or early UFCs, it was Al Jimmins coming in with the boxing glove on one hand. Like, yeah. like you said, you've got to train all aspects of the game. Yeah, yeah. If you want to kickbox, go to kickboxing. You know, if you want to grapple, stick to jiu-jitsu. But, yeah. You know, you got to be able to stand on your feet and trade blows and then also get to the ground and get nitty-gritty down there if you need to. Oh. Hogan. Once again, the Hulk Hogan. Bro. What you gonna do, brother? <laughs> That's the second night in a row. The dude came to the ring last, came to the cage last night with, uh... Well, no, I'm a real American. I and we got the Jets Pulver Hulk yes. Hogan yes. impersonation. Yes, yes we yes. did. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the judges' scorecard for our decision. All three judges scored this contest 30, 27, declaring your winner by unanimous decision, Jose Leon!
All right, Jose. Hey, first of all, man, very big win over a tough opponent in Steve Sheridan. You came in giving up a little bit of hype. What game plan or what kind of adjustments did you have to make during the fight? Hey, I'm gonna start this off in Spanish and I'm gonna translate it to, to English, all right? Le quiero dar saludos a toda mi gente allá de Álvaro, allá de Durango, de Michoacán, de Veracruz. Le quiero dar uh, en paz descanse a mi tía Lupe, de León Cárdenas, en paz descanse a uh, mi tía Aurora, de Cuparátaro, en paz descanse el Manuelito ahí de Zapata. Uh, los quiero mucho. Uh, I just, uh, I said I want to give a quick shout out to, you know, to my family. Uh, I want to give a special shout out to Paul David Jonas. Rest in peace. He was my first boxing coach. He passed away this year at the young age of 50 years old. I know he's here with me today. He took me all over Chicago, all over the uh, boxing and stuff. He, he, he really believed in me. Uh, rest in peace to my family members in Mexico who passed away also this year. Um, special shout out to my coach, Brett Brendel, Vince DeSico, who if you guys know me, uh, I took a bad loss in Bellator and I didn't fight for almost three years. I lost my confidence. I fell into depression. And I swear, ever since I, I, I joined up with this team, they told me really how it was. I have to change my whole game in order to really give this dream a try, you know? Uh, if it wasn't for Brett Brandell, One Touch Fight Team, my boy John Murphy here, all my teammates at One Touch Fight Team, I would not have been able to pull off this win. I know it's all because of the training I've done with them. Uh, I really believe in them, I really believe in myself. Uh, I'm sorry, what was your question, brother? My bad. You answered every single bit of it. That's all we needed. Hey, anything else you want to add? I know you thank the coaches. Go ahead. Yes. So I want to give a shout out to my sponsors. First and foremost, uh, Brave Flex, uh, Ducka Diet, Halo Exteriors, my boy Richard. Uh, I also want to say that Cage Aggression is the best show in the Midwest right now. I would hands down come down here anytime. Uh, if you guys want to give me another opportunity, where my man? If you want to give me another opportunity right here in May, I'm here. Uh, fight Card Entertainment, they offered me a fight. The only way I'll give them a shot is if they give me that bum ass, that bum ass punk, Christian uh, Reynoso, I don't know what his name is. He ain't no champ, he's a chump. He shouldn't be able to call himself a champ. You know what I'm saying? You, you guys want to give me a shot at him? I, I swear I'll just, I'll be the next commentator. Hands down, I'm a good commentator, give me an opportunity. Well, look, I think you made a lot of people here in the building happy. We're definitely looking forward to your next trip back to the Camera Cage. But until then, Jose, enjoy the win. Soak it up. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, sir. Let's hear it one more time, ladies and gentlemen, for your winner, Jose Leon. Yes, impressive, impressive victory, even though it sounds like he's trying to come for our job. Some, Big shout out as he's promoting Mucho Valencia. Violencia, Jose. Please Good don't, job. Please Good don't job, take Papa. my job. Good job, Papa. <laughs> yes. I hope nobody takes my job. Yeah. I have a I good didn't... time here at Cage Degression. I did nothing. I did nothing, Wayne. JT Schulte, Keegan Agnew, about ready to get on the good foot and do the bad thing right here. JT coming in from Chosen Few out of Madison, Wisconsin, wrestled through college. And Looks like to it. keep testing himself. Haven't had time to think about, about this matchup. His strengths, and he keeps evolving. Something so, so crucial to the sport, right? Yeah, absolutely. And we inch even closer to our co-main and main event. Before we do, it is JT Schulte and Keegan Agnew. Man, this has been an absolute, once again, banger of an evening of fights. The man's got the full-on back tap. Got a full on back. Right. Let's see. You got the wings. You got the Bruce Lee lats, right? Jeez. And the latissimus on his doorside. He can fly wings. Look at those pretty guys. <laughs> Rather handsome. <laughs> Rather handsome. So good, man. This is night number two. We still got another night left. Can you believe it? I mean, I see promoters, you know, do one night and it takes a lot out of them. Even two nights takes a lot of them. But this glutton for punishment, Mike Goodwin. I was wondering about you. With his Herculean effort 
Hey, bro. I'm an Energizer Bunny around here, dude. I see that. I say this all the time, man. I I get I, I work for people to pay me to essentially to do what I would already be doing at home, <laughs> raging at the cage. But I would usually have a beer in my hand. But I would still be yelling my head off, you know. But I, I'm believe me, bro. I pinch myself every time I step into this building to do this. I love it. Keegan Agnew making his way to the cage. Wild side MMA out of Clarksville. Caldwell County, Kentucky. He wrestled his whole life and he uh -oh. was good at it. So we have two wrestlers about ready to get in here and scrap. You know what he that knows means, though. Three round fight. They might, no. They might do get oh, something. They might, might get knocked out. Yeah. Isn't that weird how it kind of canceled itself yeah, out? They're like, yeah, let's not even go there. <laughs> he realizes his opponent is a game opponent and it will be fun. He's good on the ground, obviously, but. I've turned into a striker over time. Look at you. He feels his fr uh, friend Nate the Train Landwer and his brother Gavin Avenue are people he looks up to. He started straight out of high school. He wrestled his whole life, but I've turned into a striker over time. So, wow, you might have some prescient comments you just said there, Jordan, that the wrestlers might get in here and try to bang it out. Or, you know, there could be some wrestling attempted and it just gets negated, and we'll see how the striking yeah, goes. Very I'm true. I'm excited to see how this plays out. Whoa. The fans, however, they think Keegan Agnew is the big favorite at 64% plus Man. against JT Schulte. Maybe they didn't see the uh, shoulders yeah. on Schulte. Well, we got we got a, a balled up tank versus a, a long wing beast <laughs> guy that wants to strike. I mean, this might be a fight of the night, knockout of the night sort of situation. Absolutely. Well, and as we know, body types don't end fights. Styles often do. But, I mean, it, like you said, it'll be very interesting because it looks like this gentleman stepping into the cage right now has got a little bit of length on him. He also seems very, very focused. No dancing. Eyes straight forward. Entering the cage right now. Now, see, this is what I'm wondering. He's got the ankle braces on. Yeah, you can Ladies wear those. Ladies and gentlemen, we saw our next night. bout of the evening okay. is scheduled for three five-minute rounds in the Caged Aggression Professional Super Lightweight Division, powered by McCarl Family Racing. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He stands five feet, eight inches tall and weighed in at 158 pounds. He trains at the Chosen Few Gym. Joining us from Madison, Wisconsin, J.T. Schulte. And his opponent, fighting out of the blue corner. He stands six feet, one inch tall, and weighed in at 159 pounds. He trains at Wildside Combat Sports Center. Joining us from Huntley, Illinois, Keegan, the violent hippie, Agnew. I know game phases don't win fights, but Keegan definitely has his on right now. Oh, that's a mean they, mug. They called that man the violent hippie. Really? Yeah. I, well, oh, I mean, he has, look at those shorts. I mean. <laughs> those are very hippie shorts. I'll knock you out, and then I'll burn a, burn a bowl I mean, yeah. over your corpse. You got Tell a, you I'm sorry. You got a pink cyan design, and I'm not quite sure. Um, but that material right there, very, hip, very, very hippie ass. Starting out here, right in the middle of the cage. This will be very interesting. Yeah, Ooh. Wow. Left. That one hurt him. It backed him up. Yeah, oh, wow. I like that. There it goes. Big, whoa, oh, big slam. Gotta let go of that head. Big slam from JT. Let's see if he can take advantage of it. Dropped him kind of awkward on his arm there. I don't know if that did anything to damage. Uh, oh, so he's bleeding oh, already. Oh, he's bleeding all over. Yeah, he's leaking out of his yeah, nose. Yeah, he's definitely. He needs some milk. Oh, no. Get him some milk. Oh, yeah, he is. Oh, no, he's gushing. Oh, wow. He's going to make it hard to grapple. Yes, he is. If this fight goes on, that is exactly true if they hit that ground game. Looking man, to get that... under that neck right now. Yeah, he's out. I remember this This guy's wrestled his whole life, too. I mean, just because the body true types that. are different. Yeah. We discussed short and longer wrestlers before, so. He knows how to defend. Yeah, he's only he's only got to negate it. You don't have to wrestle with him. You don't have to wrestle true with that. him. He knows how to defend it. He's just got to get back to his feet because uh, he was doing well there. 
tell you what, you know, they're pretty dry right now. There's only a, a minute and 30, but that blood, that, blood. Yeah, that changes the game. It does. You know, a little extra lubricant goes a long way when you're trying to go under that neck. Yep. Well, when you try and when you try to implement any kind of ground game or jujitsu, I mean, it's great stand up. Yeah, back to his feet. And he's gonna lock up a couple more here, possibly. Another Ooh. slam. Yeah, but he's still got the. Ooh. Oh, oh big that'll help. Shot. But he's got that arm isolated. Yes, he does. He's I'm working on that Kimura. Can't tell if he's got that angle. He is certainly working on it. Well, he's going to have to get out of half guard for one. And he's got the knee across the shin, or the shin and knee across the hip area. He's shrimping for it. Sure is. Shrimping ain't easy. <laughs> <laughs> he's still trying to pull it, man. That, that was an explosive gun. right there. He's yeah. still pulling. He's if not he can, giving up on it. There he, he goes off that Kimura. And he can turn it into a sweep, if anything. He can pop his hips. He's avoiding damage Ooh. for one. To be able to pop a Kimura on the guy with an arm like that, dude, but, that'll be impressive. He's going yeah, for it. Yeah, but Slowly that's but the surely, thing. he's getting it out right now. Is He might be able to keep his arm tucked in him, but it might be he's enough to, to, defend, to, to tip him. Looks like he's out of the trouble right there. Not able uh, to get that arm. Transitioned a little bit. Shot from back. Ooh, Ooh, those nice back elbow. From the bottom. Nice. Back elbow. Those get smart. Those get smart a little this bit. Guy's sh this guy's sharp. This Keegan Agnew kid is sharp. Wow. JT scrambling, got it. So he's high. Not if, him if, any distance, if Agnew though. gets his butt up in the air, if he postures up, gets that butt up into an air, like an A-frame style, like, uh. They too be too high. Yeah, Schulte looks to be way too high. Schulte really not giving him much room, if any, right now. He's got one leg locked in underneath. Right in the back. He's still looking for that neck. I'm not sure if it's there or if it's going to be there. There we Ooh, go. Some big elbow. elbow. Top. Those, those help. And another. Those can't feel good, man. Big man like that on your back, dropping some bees on you, that cannot feel good. Back to his feet. Needs to turn around now. Oh, Agnew looking for that elbow. Don't you gotta watch it, because he's got both of those arms locked and that head is exposed. Yeah, well, he's going for another takedown, though, another slam. Yeah, he's turning into him. It's Agnew under gets one on, you know, and look, there's blood everywhere. Like it slowed down a little bit, but he's trying to switch on him. I don't know if it's gonna work. It's gonna scoop. Wow, it's going for the scoop. Dude, that's incredible defense from Keegan, man. He's trying to switch. I know he's back down, but man, JT was trying to go for a big slam there. Such a tough one for me to score. He's got to sit hard through this. One minute, under one minute left here he's in this first sit round. Sit hard, sit hard, sit hard, sit hard. Keegan playing it cool. It'll be interesting Definitely. how they both go to the corner right now. How much energy has Schulte really put out there to really give him no distance, right? You know, he gets he gets rocked really early on, Woo. and he's been on him like blue since. Oh, yeah, but I, he's probably going to take a toll in the second round. I mean, oh, that's man, it. Hurts. Hurts. That Those elbows are rough. Yeah. Man. He is going to do a great job of defending takedown, even he's though he just got down there. But a dog fight. Go, go, I'm telling you. Back to his feet. Tegan is tough, man. He's going to look to nice hip bump here. Try to get some separation. There's that leverage working for him. JT struggling hard. More elbows. Take down those elbows. Another elbow. More elbow. I mean, man. JT don't like those. Into the first round here. Sprayed with a little bit of plasma. These guys are fighting, fighting. Yeah, that's absolutely. What we, do. That's what we do here at Cage Aggression, baby. Ain't no punks in any of these guys' DNA, I tell you that. Keegan Agnew looks incredibly relaxed over there. He, he's got almost the same face as he entered the cage with. Breathing pretty calmly. Absolutely. Conditioning obviously is not an issue, at least right now. As we've talked about, many people talk about, man, the more muscle you have, the more blood and oxygen is required to go to those muscles. Let's see if uh, JT has the conditioning to uh, withstand a couple more rounds of that kind of frenetic behavior they've been doing. And the thing is, you seen in the first round when they started off fresh, you know, the fight starts on the feet at the end <laughs> of each round. So, Incredible cleanup or at the, here. At the beginning of each round, I should say. And so that amount of damage that Agnew was able to give to Schulte in that short of time. And now uh, Schulte is a little more tired, might be moving a little more slower, you know. Agnew might be able to really pick him apart here if he can keep it on his feet. As JV just said, Agnew looked the exact same. Very calm. As far as demeanor. Same mean mug, right? Very mean mug. He's, he's not even breathing that hard. He's Very obviously poised. breathing after that first round, but he seems quite poised. First time I've seen him open his mouth is right there. Here we 
go. Round two. Good. Oh. Wow. There it is. DT going He's back. Switching. Hey, if it ain't broke, don't break it, man. You're a wrestler. Get in there. Ooh, was he trying to go? Uh, look he like looked for that arm for a second, grabbed it, went off. No, he's just yep. using it to reverse, oh, man. That's wow. a wow, reverse position right there. Yeah. And Keegan's right in his face. And now Keegan in the offensive position right On here. On top. Go against Cage, exactly. Now let's see if this big guy can get up from his back. Yeah, he got a lot of time here in the second round. Ooh, get looking for that there. arm. Yep, that's it. It's underneath. I'll be surprised if he doesn't put him to bed. Oh, yeah, my God. Picks him up and dumps him. Wow. Monster power slam, bro. Raw power right there. Took him from under his hips. Well, as you said, Jay, before he dropped him on, he was that deep looked, under his chin. Looks way under, you know, and it, I wonder. If, if he had jumped, if he did pull guard, if he had jumped and wrapped his legs around him, yeah, that was a no-arm no guillotine. Yeah, that was a no-arm guillotine. Yeah. Well, if takedowns are winning fights, it JT's all deep. day, but that's not what it is. Looking at that arm again from the bottom, Keegan is. Shelby really just trying to figure out some offense. You know, he, his biggest successes have been those moves where he's just picking them up and dumping them. It looks cool, but he's yeah. got to be able to capitalize on it. Yeah, there's there's not a whole lot going on from the top after he gets into the ground. I mean, Agnew does a good job of getting back to his feet or, you know, locking up a Kimura like he is right now and just kind of negating the game of JT Schulte. Well, and I, yeah, I think uh, Keegan needs to do his best in the game. Ooh. Oh, it's big elbow. Oh, spinning elbow. Almost connected. Very calm looking, maybe for an arm Dars. and choke right he's there. He's got a Dars here. Yep. Is that it? He's oh, yeah, he's got it. He's, he's got, locked he's got in. it locked that might in. Be bad. He's locked in really well. The arm's there. And I'm he's not got sure. his legs locked. He might need a little bit more space. No. He's not letting no, him get out of that, He's not bro. letting him go. You're right. Oh, he's tightening it up right there. That is cinched in tight. What a powerhouse. He got it. Oh, no. JT is a monster. Big knee coming, yep. Oh, big wow, right. Big JT. right. Head kick. These boys are scrapping. JT wearing it, but he has no quit in him. He is, inside right kick. JT is definitely slowing down here in the final moments here in this second round. Final moments. We're only halfway through the second sorry, round, yeah, boss. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, these ain't amateurs, bud. These are five-minute rounds. Look at that Rolls him going for that Kamara. He's going to step Look over the back. Yep. He's trying to right there. He might get it here. Yep, he's got that leg in a nice place for it. Yep. He don't even have to use the arm anymore. He can use his leg in replace of his uh, over-the-top hook arm. And if he can get that wrist to his back, possible, it's a wrap. possible and, arm bar here, too. And the blood's still flowing from the face of JT. Yeah, he might dig this arm bar out. He's looking for the arm bar right yeah. now. He's got it hooked in, no? Might switch to a triangle. Oh, oh, oh yes, yeah. he did. Triangle. Man, a lot uh -oh. of slick That's in there. Work. That's in their elbows. He needs oh, to start. That, oh, dude, that's, he needs to start hammer. He needs to start hammering elbows. Well, yeah, you know he's gonna hammer elbows now. He's either gonna choke him or, or stop the fight due to strikes. Well, a combination of the two. Well, yeah. He's got that. He got that yep. cinched in, bro. Oh, that arm needs to. He needs to push that arm across the. Get the angle. Push the arm across the chest. I would just do some damage. That blood's making those legs slide around There's a little bit. There's some sliding elbows. There's another elbow. Keegan looking really hard. Oh, he's going for arm bar. Now he's trying to switch over to the arm. I oh, look have like space. A, looked like a tap came in oh. the middle of that. Dude, JT is leaking, baby. I missed it, but if we can get the uh, the guys in the back to take a look at that around 1:30 and see if there was anything going on there. Oh, he got he got a laceration on yeah. his head as well. He's lanced open from those elbows. And leaking, Papa. Going for that key lock again, or Kimura. I'd hammer some more of those short right elbows. They're finding a home, exposed. dude. They're finding a home, and he has split him open. Well, I think there can be no doubt that this is Keegan Agnew's round. The question is, how do the judges score the first one? I would assume most would seconds. say Keegan, but JT Schulte had a lot more success had, in that first round. Yeah, he had the big slam and everything. But mm -hmm. like I said, it looked cool, but Other you know, how much that, did he do? Yeah, there it? wasn't nothing. I mean, he landed some decent strikes from the top, but now Keegan Agnew has it mounted with 30 seconds left in the second round. He's going to look the posture up and strike here and land some short elbows. Not that he needs to steal Here this round, but that's an elbow. Yeah, that was another elbow. elbow. Whoa! Whoa! And, and Agnew doing the right thing, making it all sorts of uncomfortable. Covering the mouth, covering the oh, nose. Oh, he's dropping the one, the two. Dropping the elbows. He's on top for a mouth. One, Five two, seconds. Three. 
Just the onslaught by Keegan Ackney here at the end Down of the second round. Dominant performance here in the second round. Absolutely, bro. Yeah, ooh. He didn't like that punch JT Schulte gave him from the bottom, and he gave a couple extra meaty this elbows there. This third round is going to be this, uh, not even really the They're tail They're taking the a close look at JT Schulte You are here. correct, sir. Uh, you are correct, sir. Unless the skull's exposed, I don't see him stopping the fight. It's not blocking his vision. No, nothing severe can happen from that as far as injury-wise. I think they'll probably let it go. This will be JT's round to steal it. I'm sorry, Keegan's round to steal it. And that's what we see, see what we got going on in some of the he replays is, he here. He is seriously debilitated right now, man. Keegan is definitely feeling... Keegan has the I'm same sorry, look on his face that he walked in here with. Keegan Agnew is stone cold. And right now, JT Schulte, if he wants this, he's going to have to dig deep and get the finish, in my opinion. Let's see what uh, JT's corner has him doing there. And the great cage aggression through in there, trying to clean up and make Without it as safe as humanly possible for everybody. And we're looking at uh, just looking at a still shot right there of Keegan on top in the final seconds. Third and final round coming. They're trying to clean the blood off of uh, JT Schulte, but it's literally everywhere. Yeah, I was going to say cleaning it up from everywhere. Well, it looks like he's got some color in those tattoos now. They're not just black and white. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't ask for this. Right, last round, guys. Wow. Yeah, this is it. Five minutes. I'll tell you what, that's a violent hippie. Hey, let's move, it's a very, very, very violent yes. hippie. Ooh, nice. nice inside leg kick. Yeah, it's a. Oh, he's, front he's kick just got to try to keep it. tired, and this this could be dangerous, man. We talked about this last night with James. When fatigue slows you down, you can't defend the way you did in the first few rounds. I think he's tired, too. Yes. He is, but he's definitely implementing his Good offense. Good body, kid. Wow. No, oh, he's breathing deep. His, yeah. his, his mouth is open right now. That right could have did some damage. I don't know how you couldn't be uh, tired on the ground with JT Schulte for 10 minutes. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> you, know? you are correct, oh, sir. And Schulte again, down. man. Oh, no, nice. No. Not this time. In you know, mid-air switching position. See, that's what those long legs are good for, man. He got that foot to the ground before Schulte was able to get his back to the ground, and it was able to get him a reversal of position. Yep. Mid-slam. And, and you know what? The brute force wasn't quite there like it was. No, if, he, if yeah. he could have lifted no. him just a little no. bit higher, that would have been the difference. Me, there's one of those knees you like, JB. I do love those knees. Gave, and, and again, they're wide open right now, yep, right? He gave him a little good one. You can't hate on that. You drop some knees, like I said, those lower floating ribs, man, oh, yeah. break a couple. You ain't breathing, you ain't laughing for the next freaking six weeks. Man. You know, as a wise guy, you know, one of the things me and my buddies used to love to do in the bar is if that kidney was open, you go for that kidney yeah. shot, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's a blood, Inver baby. Inverted triangle possibility here. He's over the arm with the right leg. He's got both hooks in behind. Well, he's over the arm on one side. Oh, he so. is. See, I didn't even notice that, Jordan. Yep, he is. And, and you know what? It's pretty trapped. He might even, if he wanted, he could maybe even get a triangle in that position with that arm trapped, and then it's almost game over. But again, how much, you know, how much strength does he have left? What's left in the gas tank? And that's a, that's a difficult move to finish. And plus, his arms are extremely thick. You know, he's not fighting another tall, lanky fighter. That guy's got the pythons. Not quite the Hogan pythons, but pretty in python ass. He's got some thickens going on. You know, and still that arm is trapped in that leg. In fact, now he's got his arm pinned up against his own leg, trapped in his leg as he goes for that neck. Very awkward spot to, for Schulte to be in. Incredibly awkward. Yeah, yes. not not much offense for him to have. Meanwhile, he's under the neck with an arm in as well. That same arm that's trapped underneath. Oh, it gets it out. And now both arms are out. Two minutes, 20 seconds left here in the third and final round. Keegan landing an elbow. He can just all over him. Just all over him. No uh -oh. room to breathe. As JT has slowly slowed down here, Keegan has definitely capitalized. Like you said, Keegan's gassed out too a little bit. He's feeling it. But he's at least Ooh. taking one from the bottom. He stole one of his own moves. <laughs> yes, he did. That's, that's great adaptive mixed martial arts right there. Right. Did it to me. There's another one. Looking for it again. You know, he's not going silently into the night. No, <laughs> no, he, <laughs> no, he is not. Brave, brave. Yeah, 
Agnew needs to get that left arm ripped out of there. Yeah. Oh, another elbow. He doesn't like those. No, but he might not like what he receives at night now that Keaton yeah. Agnew's <laughs> arm is free. Seems like that's all JT kind of has right now, man. Not a we... lot on those strikes right now. Both these guys extremely fatigued with a little over a minute here. to go. Yep. One minute, 20 seconds. Here we go. A scramble. Fighters what? get to their feet here in the center of the cage. Aggression cage. Are we seeing another scoop slam here? I was hoping a big belly to back. That'd yeah, cool. I don't know if he has it in him. Looks like he's going for the fireman carry, but not going to get it. Keegan is locked underneath the leg and not going anywhere. Good. Good scramble by these guys. It really Both is, some strikes from the bottom. Oh, turns him around. Keegan on top and side control. Perfect time for one of those knees. That's, 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 that's knees all day. Oh, he steps over on the stomach. He's got the mount. What's he going to do with it? About 45, 45 seconds left to go. He's going to try to drop some bows on him. Bolte trying to make no distance whatsoever and pull him in. Smart move. But those elbows are still Ooh, short in there. Getting, oh, the short ones, too, are just so deadly. Especially those little skinny guys. Those are the ones that cut, elbows. yeah. Yes. Well, he's already cut. He opened up a little bit more. Blood's everywhere. And as this one uh, closes out with about 20 seconds to go, it looks to me like it's going to be a, a Keegan win. I don't know if he's going to get that finish, if he's going to get it all the way underneath. Yeah, I don't think he's under his chin, but definitely I think he did, will be pulling out the W. Did enough to make it happen. Flatten did more out. than enough to make it happen. Flatten him out, yes. Good Ooh. shots, good Ooh. shots. Oh, oh, those oh. Are big good shots, good shots. Oh, wow. Zach Morris screech once again, saved by the bell. What a great fight right there, man. Two bangers. Brawlers going the distance right there. Yeah, you can't complain for the price of admission on that Heck fight. No. On any of them, dude. That's why I love doing this. It's amazing. Each fight is just off the freaking chain. Oh, boy. And Schultz, he's wearing it over there, man. Still on his knees. Absolute warrior, but he took a whole bunch of punishment those last couple rounds. Yeah, that was some, that was some, uh, that was some damage, man. But again, he, you know, the never... The tenacity and the never quitting all of these guys, man. Like, nobody allows themselves to be punked out in any way, shape, or form, man. They are here to fight till the end. Out on their shield, man. Oh, wow. There's... They need a full-on uh, cage... What, what are those called? Like, Zambonis. We need a cage Zamboni here. The old street sweeper. Still got the co-main and the main coming up. It's yeah, wow. about to go down. Jimmy Padilla, Rand Cooper. But before that happens, let's not get out of ourselves. Let's see what happens with this JT Schulte and Keegan Agnew. You can kind of guess what's going down, but. I, I mean, 30-27 is probably where I'm at, but maybe a 29-28 stuck in there. We haven't seen one split decision tonight, and there was a possibility. Certainly not in this fight. Just a You're dominant, right, we didn't. dominant. I thought we were going to get a... Uh, yeah, you're right. You are absolutely yeah, right. Yeah, we, have we haven't gotten a split yet. Jam-packed crowd here at the River Center. Slicing the electricity with a knife as we head into the co-main and main event of the evening. We got to let the cleanup group do what they're uh, doing best here. As our bring announcer, Jason Vargas, stomps through blood. That towel, bro. Oh, yeah. Look at that corner towel of JT. No, that's modern art right there. You frame that, yes. you put that above the fireplace, yeah, and then you show that to your grandchildren. <laughs> yes. And then when they recover out of therapy, you tell them it's <laughs> all okay. Watching some of the work Keegan Agnew was doing at the end there, just hammer fist, hammer fist on top. Cage aggressions, bloodiest battle of the evening so far. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. They made a mess tonight. At the hands of the violent heavy. We literally got the ring card girls pointing out the blood everywhere. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the judges scorecard for our decision. Our judges scored this contest 30, 27, 29, 28, and 29-28, declaring your winner by unanimous decision, Keegan yeah! Agnew!
All right, Keegan. Hey, buddy, I won't keep you too long. I wanted to congratulate you coming in for your successful Caged Aggression debut against a tough, tough JT. Um, what's on your mind after the win? Hey, man, I just want to thank JT for coming out and putting on a show with me. That shit was fun. I haven't done nothing like that in a couple years. I've been out, but now I'm back, baby. I'm back better than ever. Woo! Well, look, you represented Clarksville to the fullest. I want to ask, is there anyone you want to thank or anything you want to mention before I let you get to the locker room? Man, just my gym, wild side. It's like a family over there. Um, and my actual family, you know? I couldn't do anything without any of those guys. So i just like to thank all of them. That's about it, man. Well, look, we hope to get you back here in the cage real soon. But until then, man, enjoy the win. Let's hear it one more time, ladies and gentlemen. Your winner, Keegan. Agnew. Yes, congratulations to Keegan Agnew. Mucho violencia, papa. As we move into our cage aggression co-main event of the evening, Jimmy Padilla coming up against Brent the Beast Cooper. This one's going to be off the chain as Jimmy makes his way to the cage. He got into MMA at 17 years old. Family and gang members that kept him off the streets and out of trouble. I had a dollar for every time I've heard that story, how MMA has changed his life, got him off the streets and out of trouble. This is another one. We'd Brent? Have, we'd have two dollars. We heard it twice tonight. That's what I'm saying, dude. It's, it's no shortage of it. For every fight we've called, there's been some somebody who said something about how MMA has changed his life, got him off the street. But Brent is a tall fighter and a big Muay Thai guy. He's not worried because he's a decent Muay Thai guy himself. He went 4-0 in amateur, amateur kickboxing. He wants to make things dirty and physical, and he loves clinch warfare. A little bit of dirty boxing going on a la Randy Couture. Moved out of Las Vegas to train at one of the best gyms in the world. Syndicate MMA trains with Cage Aggression champ Brandon Jenkins and seven other UFC guys. Iron sharpens iron, baby. Yeah. As we see, Brandon Jenkins has escorted him out to the cage. Did I see him? He should be out there. There he is right here, setting up the signage for his boy. This is going down, man. The cold main event of the evening. As we wind down night number two. We ain't done yet. We just kind of not getting started, but we are winding it down. But the weekend ain't over yet. We got this to do again tomorrow as we close it out. Exclamation point on an incredible weekend of Cage Aggression Trifecta as we await the entrance of Brent the Beast Cooper coming out of Clarksville, Tennessee. Doesn't know much about his opponent, but he feels his striking and his clinch game will be the difference maker. I've had the pleasure of calling a few of Brand's fights, and he is absolutely no joke. You know a lot about him, champ. Give us your thoughts. Man, Brent Cooper, is he'll fight anybody, anytime, anywhere. He's the real deal. He will not back down from anybody. He comes to bring the violence every single time. Uh, just always improving, man. Every time you see him fight, he's, he's gained a little bit of something. And I mean, look at him, he's stone cold, doesn't look like he's worried a, a single bit. And I think he's gonna come out here and he's gonna do do his damnedest to give Jimmy Padilla a hell of a fight, I know that. Do and exactly he, what, I'm sorry, go ahead, brother. And he just looks so much better than yesterday when he was trying to get that weight cut in. It's amazing how these fighters fill out after they hit those yeah. scales. And you know, it almost doesn't look like the same person. It's amazing that. when you get to fill out after those scales. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing what a good meal and some some liquid do for you. And I know, I mean, from what I heard, I, there was a little bit of there's some struggles, a few attempts at making weight that we believe he did make weight. But you know, it's people don't get man that struggle of making weight. You know, you walk around weight and your fight weight are so very different things. And that struggle to get down down to weight and those weight cuts can be very very taxing almost damn near dangerous on the human body yeah depending on how you do it i mean it's a job all on its own and i mean people just don't understand what goes into fighting if you haven't done it you just you can't appreciate it quite like uh just just one time just one time give it your all and, and find out how hard it really is yes and then maybe you want to you know talk from your couch or <laughs> sit, you gotta love that you know or sit on your high horse and i mean it's just it's such an incredible transformation a journey from start to finish uh, like training camp wise it's just uh it's, it's the most emotional it's one of the most emotional things ever well like you said there's such a huge disconnect a lot of people those you know couch warriors they struggle to not eat that fourth or fifth slice of pizza whereas cats like this you know the struggle to make weight 
and be in fighting condition next level. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our co-main event of the evening. Scheduled for three five-minute rounds in the Caged Aggression Professional Lightweight Division. Powered by La Quinta Inns and Suites. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He stands five feet, nine inches tall and weighed in at 154 pounds. He trains at Syndicate MMA and is sponsored by local millwright, all position welders, Tomb Thai Restaurant and Cafe, Frankenstein's Customs, Rodriguez Cabinets, LLC, and Jet Alert, America's number one caffeine pill. Joining us from Las Vegas, Nevada, Jimmy Padilla! And his opponent, fighting out of the blue corner. He stands six feet, one inch tall, and weighed in at 156 pounds. He trains at Wildside Combat Sports Center and is sponsored by Garden City Tattoos, Mac Fitness, McCarl Family Racing, Wildside MMA, Yabba Dabba's House of Glass, Bloom Hemp CBD, Vital Performance, and Whiteout Promotions. Joining us from Clarksville, Tennessee, Brent the Beast Cooper! These boys are locked and ro loaded and ready to go. The immovable force meeting the immovable object. I'm sorry, the irresistible force meeting the immovable object as they're about ready to touch it up here in the cage. For our co-main event, Brent Cooper, Jimmy Padilla. Here we go. Tell you what, uh... Hold up poles, JB, I'm sorry. Right now, um, I gotta look because it looks like we're in a little bit of difficulty right there. But, we got the fight starting off, and ooh! Oh, Padilla, Padilla unloading. unloading. While they was announcing Brant Cooper, Jimmy Padilla did not take his eyes off him. He just stared at they, him the They whole both time. were locked on him. Well, it was, I, I sat here and watched it the whole time when Brant finally made eye contact when he seen that he was staring him down. And he, <laughs> he was over there saying a couple things. So uh, these guys are not going to be friendly to each other. No, absolutely not. Doesn't look like that from the get-go. No right now Padilla has him pinned up against the cage. And he's getting turned around right now by Brant Cooper. Oh, Padilla turns it right back around. No exchanging of pleasantries here as these boys are here to scrap. Nice. Uh, Cole main event of the evening. Jimmy Padilla and uh -oh. Grant Cooper. Oh, looking for the clinch right now. Grant Ooh, Cooper elbow on Jason. the inside from nice Padilla to get out of that clinch. Overhand right. Ooh, big knee by Cooper. Standing knees. Cooper got him in a little bit of a plum here. Cooper gives him another knee to the that body. Muay Thai plum serving him good right now. Ooh, that looked a little low. And he's and he's oh. not he's not like really doing a whole lot of uh like hard knees here. He's just stabbing him, he's just poking him, he's just making stabbing him. Yeah, you know. He's not wasting a lot of energy trying to really find he's a making finish. him uncomfortable, yep. yeah. Making him uncomfortable, opening up. He can scoop that leg with his right and turn him back down to the right side and get him to the mat. Got to be up against the cage here, trying to advance his position. Dropping more knees, nice big high knee. That one didn't quite connect. Too much, I didn't see if they caught him. It, you know what? It snuck up there just like that. That one totally missed. The other one grazed him a little bit. Has to be a little, little bit higher. Definitely look for it again. That one gets in on the body. Body shot by Cooper. Now he's got him up against the cage. Padilla doing a good, a good job of maintaining a no space. Headlock. Brent needs to pop his head underneath that arm and he'd have the back of Jimmy Padilla. Yeah, clear that head. He needs to start using his forehead into the chin area of Jimmy Padilla, kind of keep him stretched out, keep him up, grind on his face, make it uncomfortable. Closes the head for shots. Got a body lock here too. He would utilize an outside trip. He can just scoop his right leg and circle into the mat. I feel like Jimmy's gonna keep. He's gonna try to throw a headlock here, which he should not do, but. Padilla with the Vinny Vidi Vissi. Can we, shall we conquer? 
Jose, Jose Leon had that tattooed on his chest earlier. Yeah? Yeah. It's also on the booty. It's a Marlboro cigarette. Yeah. <laughs> Really? Yeah. Real. Don't even get me on that conspiracy yeah. theory. Uh, we don't do conspiracy. <laughs> no, I don't know anything about that. We got Brent Cooper pushing Padilla up against the cage here. There's one minute and 20 seconds left to go here in this first round of our co-main event of the evening. Jimmy Padilla, Brent the Beast Cooper, closing out the night here, night number two, with one fight left, with our main event left. But this is our co-main. These two are getting after it. About a minute left in the first round. Very close. Can you oh, take it by here? Very, very close. But oh, Grant just... Cooper probably edging it out right now. Grant Cooper with a nice body kick right there. Yeah, Cooper's been controlling the whole fight. That was a little off balance. Yeah, that wasn't a strike. That now, was definitely off balance. If he comes to his feet. But the B is definitely trying to take advantage of it. Cooper with a scoop. Big slam here at the end of that first round. Padilla on his back here. Brett the Beast nice. Cooper trying to take advantage of taking him down here. Brand's doing a good job of pressuring him with his hands, pushing on his face. He's going to look to create some space and land some more punches. <laughs> Crowd screaming, punish him. Like we were talking earlier, punch him. Yeah. Win the fight. Punch him. Win. Fight him. Grant Cooper in the mount here. The final seconds. It's over. The first round's over. Both these guys bringing their A game in. Well, you said there wasn't going to be any love loss, but Grant Cooper helping his opponent up to his feet after the first round. That's Warriors respect Warriors, dude. Yeah, yeah that Bushido, baby. We want you at your best, not at your worst. Get up, pup. It's time to fight. And right now, Brant Cooper at 56% and change with Jimmy Padilla following at 43% on the verge of 44. Over at cagedaggression.tv, where we do pay-per-view right. I don't know. Watching some of the action right now. There's some of the knees right nice there by Cooper. Cooper. Overhand right that kind of catches the back of the ear, not much behind it. And here's that last takedown scoop. We are about to get into here the second round of our co-main. These boys are here, ready to scrap, bringing that A game. Brand the Beast Cooper, Jimmy Padilla. Sorry, for, I'm pronouncing that wrong. Padilla or Padilla? Uh, I believe Padilla. Right. If you're mad at me, Padilla, go ahead and tell me how to say it. I did. <laughs> Beat him up. Here we go, Brant Cooper starting out the second round, how we ended the first up against the cage. Cooper with a body lock to be a reversing position here up against the cage. Getting that underhook. Talk about styles make fights, man. These guys, you know, fairly evenly matched size-wise, skill-wise, and we're kind of seeing it play out. Padilla's done a good job of not letting uh, Brant get a lot of distance, but he hasn't been able to get a lot of offense off. No. There you go. Cleared that head. Roll for oh. a he's looking for it. I don't know if he has. He's got one arm under. Now he's getting some. Ooh! Big elbow. Yeah. That elbow almost seemed accidental after taking those two shots. He was coming up, and it just. It almost like he was trying to turn around yep. facing, but. And he just got him. Yeah. Yep. Interesting to see here. These guys are, you know, having a little bit of difficulty implementing the offense on one another. Oh, there goes that elbow. Ooh, trying to turn up. Yeah, Want to get out of there? Attempt to turn. You know, he is trying to explode here and there. Just not a lot of success. Grant Cooper dragging him to the ground there right now. Go. Shift his hips, he needs to stay up on top of Padilla. He doesn't want to end up on bottom. Yeah, Brant with a takedown, but it looks like Padilla's trying to turn into him. 
Let's see. Oh, looks like Brandon or Brent has his back. Ah, Padilla, right he on top. I right in that arm. Yes, he did right there. He stepped over the arm. This could be big for him right now. He can stay. Yeah, oh, he can keep can't. that arm isolated. Nope. Nope. Brent got oh, if Brent would have kept shifting his hips, he could have reversed him on that one. Looking for the arm in choke. I don't know if it's there. I can't see if it's there, but he's got his legs around his midsection or attempting to put his legs around his midsection to try to keep that leverage. And this is one of those things. Are you going to blow out your arm? Don't nah, he's already let it go. go. That was just a desperate attempt of a uh, way to try to win the fight. Yes. I think he's hurting a little bit uh, on the inside, you know, as far as conditioning-wise. I mean, they've been hugging, not hugging each other, but they've been wrestling and grappling each other. Which takes for, a lot. Of absolutely, for about eight minutes. So, but he's got an arm bar he's looking at here. it. Does he have the distance for it? Can he pull it out? And up against the cage. He tapped oh, him. He tapped, he tapped him. He tapped him. Wow, what a comeback for Jimmy Padilla. Gets that arm bar in short order. Yeah, that's very disappointing to see for Brent Cooper, but uh, excellent work by Jimmy Padilla by staying diligent, working, 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 found a way to win, and he took it. Looked at that knee bar, couldn't get yeah, that knee yeah. bar. Looked at that neck, couldn't get that neck. Saw that arm, and he took that arm. And he didn't have a lot of space when he did it. It was awkward. It was tough for us to see. And I'd it, love to see the replay. Was, and it wasn't, I, I a, definitely want to see it the wasn't a conventional arm bar either. It was, uh, it was a very awkward position. Yeah. But anytime you can lock that out, if you just understand the human body and the way things bend and don't bend, you can always hit an arm bar from almost any position. And that's what Jimmy Padilla did. Big win in the co-main event for Jimmy Padilla with that arm bar. Great very fight. upset and dejected Brent Cooper on that loss there. I need to see that. I couldn't see how he pulled it off, quite frankly. It was, it was tough to see from the angle that we were at. We were looking at their back. We saw him lock it up. He didn't have a lot of space. They were right up against the cage, and it happened like that. Yeah, it was tough to see how it happened, how About, he pulled it off. I think he had it less than five seconds locked in, and, and that tap was there. Hopefully, we're going to see that on the replay shortly, folks. Jason Vargas with the final particulars. And one more to go after this, Lazola versus West. Ladies and gentlemen, your referee, Josh Stewart, has called a stop to this contest at 2 minutes, 58 seconds into round two, declaring your winner by submission due to armbar, Jimmy Padilla. Hey, Jimmy, come on over, bud. Hey, man, big win. Definitely want to congratulate you on that one. Uh, but tell us about how it feels coming in and getting that Cage Degression debut win. You know that feeling we were about to kill a man? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just playing with you, bro. It was good, man. It was really great. A lot of people came out here to see me, man. I appreciate you. John Wood, I just want to say thank you so much. Brendan Jenkins, I love you. Mama Wood, that was your birthday present. Thank you. I, I slipped a little bit, but I came back with it. Not very proud of my performance, but hey, man, I got that W, you know? You guys shared a couple words there, uh, you know, right after the bout. What was it that you guys said back and forth? He did really good. I'm proud of him. You know, I'm sorry I got the submission, basically. Hopefully next time we keep to get a little more handsy. Well, look, I know you guys are doing big things out there at Syndicate. What's around the corner for Jimmy Padilla? Man, you know what? Just cut, get a couple of wins in, hopefully come back, try to get a belt for Cage Aggression, and make it to the UFC. That's been the goal since day one. Well, look, the team you're with, I got no doubt that you can achieve all that. Anything you want to say before I let you get to it? Nah, I love y'all, bro. Y'all do y'all best every day. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, your winner, Jimmy Padilla. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, the reason for the season for night number two, Mike Plazilla Plazola, coming up against the exception, Sean West, as Mike Plazola makes his way into the cage aggression cage for our main event of the evening, fighting out of Team Rock out of Waterloo, Iowa. He, his brother and his best friend got him into the game. Thoughts on this matchup? He says, this sounds fun. Feels that he is well-rounded, and his coaches and his training partners are his biggest heroes and influences in the sport. You know a little bit about this gentleman, Hanman. What do we got? What are we looking forward to, man? Uh, we're talking about a, a explosive, fast, uh, well-rounded uh, mixed martial artist here. And, um, you know, you can't take nothing away from the guy. He's got a, a, a 
hell of a heart for stepping in against a guy like Sean West. Um, obviously the hometown favorite in Sean West. This guy's coming into his backyard trying to take uh, something away from him. Both with hands of dynamite. JB, what are our... Can't got the pull right now, a little technical difficulties, but that's all right. This is going to be some bangers, man. If you go online and check out some of their highlights, they have Sean West and Mike Lazola respectively have some of the most ridiculous knockout highlights that I've seen in a very long time, and that's that's kind of lore in the MMA community. So I'm so very anxious to see this. And you know, we talked about this a little earlier, since they both have respect for each other's hands, are they gonna just switch it up and then no. go to the ground? No, I mean, I've seen I've seen Sean, Sean's a very underrated, uh, uh, underrated grappler as well. He's got some slick submissions uh, up his sleeve and he has a couple submission victories on his resume. So, um, but I don't believe that's in either one of these guys to wrestle. Although, I fought Mike and he did take me down and that's how I beat him. I beat him with an arm bar and I don't know, of the first round or whatever, but I, he was a stand-up guy. I was wanting to do stand-up, you know, I was wanting to try to he knock him to out ground. and he Switched I mean he you. picked me up off my I mean I went from feet to back with a quickness and uh so who knows I mean obviously he's ready to take it wherever it needs to go without a shadow of a doubt and here he comes the exception Sean West out of fighting out of Delft's pro gym family and friends invited him to the gym fought two days later excited for this one he says it should be fun feel that his stand-up and striking style is the difference maker looks up to dominic cruz as well as izzy israel adesanya man feels he, he's been at this for a while man fought every combat sport there is and here he is stepping into the cage tonight as we put an exclamation point on night number two of Cage Aggression, the trifecta, Mike Lazola and Sean West are about ready to make it happen, Captain. They are. <laughs> I'm not the captain, but I'm trying to be. No, it, it, it's going down, man. It is going down. I'm psyched for this one. I'm really anxious to see. If, I mean, it's kind of been billed as this striking matchup, and I'm just, I'm anxious to see if they, if they stick to the striking as it's been billed or somebody switches it up and just throws a little question mark into the game and starts doing some wrestling, grappling, whatever. But again, these guys are going to do whatever it takes to win, right? But Sean West coming out with a massive, massive entourage as he is the hometown favorite. Sean the Exception West called a couple of his fights. Really, really cool cat. Got a love, got a lot of love here going on in the River Center. But again, you can't take him into the cage with you, man. Well, I'll tell and, you what, the legend Pat, Pat, Pat yeah, Millicent is walking see, down. That's Pat's a big deal. There. That's a big deal for these guys. So Pat Militich walking out with Delph. Delph's a great guy. I've met him several times. Really cool guy. Yeah. Really, really great guy. Owns oh, an excellent cigar store they just opened up here in the Quad City. Yeah, for sure. We were talking about that a little earlier when we had a bite to eat here in Davenport. If you are around the uh, Biagi's kind of Davenport border, he has, I forget the exact name, I'm sorry, Ryan, but it is a cigar bar right up in the Biagi's 53rd, uh, I believe, Utica Ridge area. Yep, it's so, right over there by, like, or across from Biagi's yep, or whatever. Yep, check it out, man. Big space, man. Big space. Go in there and chill. Have yourself a stogie, maybe a brandy, and enjoy yourself. Play, play some pool or something, man. They got a pool table in yeah, there. Absolutely. Nice table. Ryan Delph and his wife Haley. Go in there and check that out as he is taking Sean West into the cage. It's about to go down, folks. This is what we're here for. And like you said, JB, he's got the champ, the Croatian Station Hall of Famer, trainer of champions. You sit under that learning tree, man. You can't help but learn. Good for him. Looks like Militich is gonna corner him too. Wow, good stuff. Here you go. You don't get you don't get things like that everywhere, yeah, you, folks. You, you get an occasion aggression. And he's gonna bad. be on the mic tomorrow night with Jeffrey Wilson and myself. I just cool. want to say I feel so privileged to be talking to MMA legends like Pat Militich. Grinders, grunts, and badasses like Jordan Hinman, Ow. and mouthpieces like Jens Pulver. And by the way, Jeff, <laughs> even though you're a bigot, you're not so bad yourself. Hey, hey. stop it. Wash your mouth out. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, fight fans, live in attendance at the River Center, and everyone else joining live around the world on pay-per-view, this is our main event of the evening, scheduled for three five minute rounds in the caged aggression professional lightweight division powered by 7g distributing bud light 
Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He stands five feet, nine inches tall and weighed in at 156 pounds. He trains at Rock Gym. Joining us from Waterloo, Iowa, Mike Pazilla. Pazola! And his opponent, fighting out of the blue corner. He stands five feet, 11 inches tall and weighed in at 154 pounds. He trains at Delft's Pro Gym and is sponsored by the Cigar Social, McCarl Family Racing and Auto, Optimal Nutrition and Supplements, Alderog Tire and Performance, Downrange Supplements, Yabba Dabba's House of Glass, Squirrel's Tree Service, Traditional Floors, and Frick's Tap. Joining us from Davenport, Iowa, the exception, Sean Wood! Here it goes, ladies and gentlemen, our main event of the evening, Mike Lazola, Sean West. All right, gentlemen, we went over the rules in the back. Fight clean, fight fair, fight hard. When I say break, you guys break. Mike, do you have any questions? Sean, do you have any questions? Touch them up now if you wish. Let's do this. Let's do this, boys and girls. If I can say that. Crowd might get hostile in here. Yeah, it's all right, it's all right. We're about to see a banger here, ladies and gentlemen. Folks with hands of stone getting ready to touch it up. It's gonna be fun. And make it happen. Let's see who shoots first. Mike Pozzola, Sean West, both guys with dynamite in their hands, man. You don't All see a lot of fighters come out with the, uh, the tiger print or the leopard print. But Pozzola in there, I also dig that, those tattoos on his leg, man. From the jaws to the uh, fighting Native American. Ooh, big nice leg kick. Big one, yes, absolutely. Keep those coming, man. Slow down. Slow, slow them down so we can't move as well. Oh, oh there it is. Our first is. shot within 30 seconds. Not a bad decision, but not a bad decision. Especially someone with hands like Sean. I mean, come on. If you really want to play into their game, you know what I mean? You got to negate that stuff. You got Ryan Dell from Pat Milicic over in the corner of Sean West giving instruction. Yeah, he's gonna try to recapture the pass, Mike! What Sean need to do here, buddy? That's what he did. That's what he did. He's able to recapture, get his full guard back. At least he can be threatening here with his legs. He's, he's, he's throwing it up, he's looking at it right there. He's looking for it, he's got it. And he pulled he's it out. He's gotta extend. Exactly how I won the fight. Really? Yes. It was, uh, he picked me up, slammed me on my back. I was able to fish, get back into uh, guard, and then hit a, a, a sweet little arm bar. Well, Sean needs almost to extend here, exact, right? Almost in the exact same spot. It was right over on that side of the cage. Oh, let's go with that arm bar, but gets loose. Yeah. Oh, he tapped him. 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 Same, same spot in the cage and everything. And you've got to think that Pat Militich and Delp are extremely happy with that performance. They guided their fighter to that victory in short order. He's in a bad spot. Recovered, got to guard, quickly got that arm bar, and I, tapped I told him in the main you, I event. I told you his, his ground game is underrated. Everybody thinks they can He's the one who shot. Uh, no, I'm telling. I'm talking about Sean West. Oh, Everybody I'm sorry. thinks his ground game that it's due to is trash and they can just wrestle him up. He's slick, I'm telling you. I need to see the replay. I could, like the other one, I couldn't. I was in a bad angle, but I couldn't see. I was waiting for him to be able to extend. I thought he was going to get out. I thought Pozzola was getting out of it. Wow. Sean West making incredible. Sean, the exception, West, making very short work of his opponent, Mike Pozzola. Pozzola. And our main event of the evening of night number two. Wow. That was quick. I was not anticipating that. I thought it was going to be a knockout. I was not anticipating so a submission. Wow. Here we go. We're looking at it right now. And he's underneath. And there it is right there. I see the tap right there. Literally what is, what right around the shoulder. He just extended a little and watch. Up. As I'm sitting here watching the replay, I'm also watching the replay of Jordan Hinman fighting Mozilla in literally the same finish. Wow. 
same referee? Ladies and gentlemen, your referee, Bruce Allen, has called a stop to this contest at 1 minute, 45 seconds into round one, declaring your winner by submission due to armbar, the exception, Sean Wang. your main event winner, first time in the camera cage for a long time, picking up that win. Hey, talk to us about that smile on your face, Sean West. Ah, it's been a while. QC, what up, baby? Uh, you know, it, it's been a long time, man. I've had a lot of, a lot of battles in my life right now, so excuse me if I get emotional, you know what I mean? But, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, absolutely, man, I, I'm, uh, I'm blessed to be able to compete in this case like I have, man. I, and I hope that I have fucking made you guys happy. And, 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 and I hope you guys enjoyed the show every time I'm in here. So look, we know it's been a while since you've competed in MMA, but still one of the busiest men in combat sports. Picking up this win here tonight, Sean, I gotta ask, what's around the corner? Oh uh, man, I fight in the parking lot, you got enough money. Uh, but, uh, but um, you know, I, I, I don't know, man. I got, um, I got, I got school and um, I, I got a lot of things in life. You know, I, I'm, I'm battling some obstacles right now. So I just, I don't know what's next, man. I, like I said, I don't want to use the word retire, uh, but uh, I don't know how many I got left. Uh, so, you know, like I said, I'll fight in the parking lot. So I don't know what's next, but uh, I'm just blessed to be where I'm at right now. And I, and I thank my good one for making this fucking, this mecca that you have, you know, and uh, there's so many people that I can thank. And, Delph and, and, and I'm happy for Delph and Haley and, and Teddy's coming, you know, and I'm just, I'm happy and I'm blessed to be surrounded by my, my best friends and, uh, and, I, and I appreciate you guys tonight, man. Thank you very much. I needed this. Well, look, I, I asked that question probably too soon to ask it, but you enjoy tonight. You've got a lot to be thankful for. Soak up that win, Sean. And, and let me ask you, is there anything you want to add before I let you get to it? I meet y'all at Frick's. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it again for your main event winner, the exception, Sean West. All right, folks, the lights are gonna go down here, but don't forget, one more night. We'll be back here again tomorrow night. Bring tonight's ticket, get $5 off tomorrow night's ticket, and if you can't wait till then, Join us down at the damn view in for the Cage Aggression 33, the trifecta after party, and awards presentation. That's all going down as soon as we shut the lights off here. And what a night of fights. We wow. wrap it up with a finish in the main event. Jeffrey Wilson, Jordan Hinman, Night two of the trifecta in the books. Yeah. In the books, ladies and gentlemen. Where do we start? I don't know. Uh, it, it didn't end in a knockout like I was sitting there saying it was going to end it. Well, and that's what we were wondering, man. You got two incredible strikers. You know, I thought someone was going to probably take the road less traveled and, you know, go for a shot. And, you know, Plazola was the first one to take the shot. And, you know, Sean, Sean West made very, very short work of that attempt. But the whole night, man, you got Jameis Wilson starting the night out with an incredible uh, second round submission. You know, Bryn Heathcock with a first round knockout. knockout. Uh, Jordan Trower's doing his work with a, a nice unanimous decision. Uh, I mean, come on, man. This and, is what cage aggression does. Yeah, absolutely. You know, just uh, a whole night of fights that uh, we're kind of going back and forth in the, and a lot of them that, you know, turned out to be uh, an exciting night overall with a nice main event finish, the fight before a finish, the fight before that, a bloodbath, a war. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just come on. They just were nonstop from front to back. A, a bloodbath indeed was that JT Solti, Keegan Agnew, Keegan Agnew pulling out the W. Jimmy Padilla with a very impressive win over a very, very tough Brant, uh, the Beast Cooper. And, you know, again, this is just night number two. Right. Night number one set the precedent and set the tone, and here we are following up again. Night number two, it's late. We are about ready to hit the after party, but we are not even close to done yet because he, we're going to do this one more again Saturday night, fight night here at the River Center, cageaggression.tv. I want to thank everybody who has taken the time with so many choices in the online streaming world that you took the time to come and check us out. JB, I love calling the fights with you, my man. Love you are, it. You got mad, mad game. 
you know, Jordan, always great to see you, man, and call fights it. with you. Love to see you back in the cage, too, man. I'll and, get there. And tomorrow, we got the Croatian sensation, Pat Milicic, calling our final night and another lineup of just stellar, stellar matchups. This is what Cage Aggression does. Big shout outs again to the entire Cage Aggression team that has spent so many hours making this weekend possible or any of the fight nights possible, dude. Thank you to all of you guys because they don't get enough recognition. And I want to thank you guys straight up, man. The whole team, you guys included. Thank you guys so much. Tune in next time, baby. We're going to do it again tomorrow as we get into night number three of Cage Aggression, the trifecta. Peace and all that love.